Yes, I'm serious. Today, we'll be doing another 100 integrals, and of course, we'll be doing this in one take. I have the PDF in the description for your convenience already, so go ahead and download it and try the questions along the way. I want to give a special shout out to Hayden Jones because he's the one who gave me the idea to do this. And I also want to thank everybody for the 1 million subscribers. For this one, I gave you guys 20 special integrals and also 20 double integrals and of course, the rest will be just whatever integrals I want. For the special integrals, make sure that you look at the cover page for the information. Alright, without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started with number 1. By the way, today is indeed Christmas Eve, so Merry Christmas. Anyway, integral of x to the 2023 plus x raised to the 2021 power. How do we do this? Should we expand it? No, don't do that. Otherwise, we'll regret. Um, use up? Uh, at least not yet. Let's try this. Notice that both terms have an x, so let's go ahead and factor that out. So we will be getting the integral of x times x to the 2022 plus 1 and then raised to the 2021. And what we can do is we can distribute the power. So this right here is the same as the integral of x to the 2021 times x to the 2022 plus 1 raised to the 2021. And you should notice that this is much better because we can set u to be x to the 2022 plus 1 and then differentiate both sides. du will just be 2022 times x to the 2021 and of course we have the dx. And for this right here, I will just you know, skip some steps. We can do some of the calculations in our head. Notice that we have this right here and we need the 2022. So we will have to divide it by 2022. So let me just put down 1 over 2022 right here. And then we will have u to the 2021 and then in the u world, right, the du. So when we integrate that, we add 1 to the power, which is 2022 divided by the new power, so we will get this to the second power. And then we have u to the 2022, and u is that, so we just have this times x to the 2022 plus 1 raised to the 2022, and then we are done. Of course, don't forget the plus c. This is it, the year of 2022. I know it's toward the end, but yeah. Okay, so. That's the first question, and we have a couple more to go. So let me know how you guys are doing and what you guys are doing for your holidays and all the stuff and any New Year revolutions and all the stuff. Not revolution, I mean the resolution. <laughs> anyway, number two, integral of sine of sine x over sine x. In the past, we have done sine of 2x. Mm, that was pretty easy. So for this one, let's do sine of 3x over sine x. Uh, now the question is, what's the triple angle identity for sine? Well, let's prove it real quick. For this one, it's not so bad. So have a look. Sine of 3x is the same as x plus 2x. And then the double, sorry, the angle sum formula for sine is sine of the first, so sine x times cosine of the second plus cosine of the first times sine of the second. And now we can use the double angle identity for this and that. So this right here becomes sine of x. For this right here, I want to write everything in terms of sine because I'm hoping to cancel with that sine x on the bottom. So let's go ahead and put this down as 1 minus 2 sine square x. And then for this one, of course, we will just say plus cosine x and the double angle identity for sine x, sine of 2x is 2 sine x, cosine x. Pretty good. And now let's distribute it. This right here gives us sine x minus 3 sine to the third power x. And notice right here we have cosine x times cosine x. These two together is cosine square x. But we want to write everything in terms of sine. So I'm just going to say this right here is plus. This right here stays 2 sine x. But this and that I will write it as 1 minus sine square x. And right here let's just distribute this part. We have 
2 sine x and then minus 2 sine to the third power x. So all in all, this and that gives us 3 sine x. And then this and that gives us No, this is 2. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> minus 2 right here is just minus 2. So this and that minus 4 sine of 3x. Yeah. So this right here is the sine of 3x identity. And now we can go back to here and use this. And we can see that this is the integral. And then we have 3 sine x minus 4 sine to the third power x and then of course all divided by sine x and we have the dx right here and now we can cancel things out and then focus on integration so right here we will get this over that is just 3 and this over that is minus 4 and then we will just get sine square x good integrating this is not so bad but how do we integrate sine of sine to the second power we will have to use the power reduction formula for that so before we do the integration, let me just replace that. So I will still keep the 3. So we have the integral of 3 minus 4. But for the sign of square x right here, I will write this as 1 half times 1 minus cosine of 2x. Yeah, I know. It's a lot of crazy things right going on. So parentheses here, parentheses here, and then dx. Yeah. Uh, 1 parentheses. Yeah, one more parentheses. Okay. So now this right here is just 2 and then we distribute it. So you see this right here is 3 minus altogether we have 2. Okay, so it becomes 1. Integral 1. Okay, so this is minus 2. And then this and that is 2 times that is plus 2 cosine of 2x. So we have 1 plus 2 cosine of 2x. For parentheses because people want me to do that. All right, now we can integrate. For the first one is of course just x because when the x world and then to integrate this you can do a u sub in your head let u equal to 2x and then you can see everything becomes positive sine of 2x you can also differentiate this real quick take the derivative of x we get one take the derivative of this don't forget the chain rule we have to multiply by the two right sine gives a cosine of that so with that we are done and that's the second one of course, if you remember the sine of 3x formula, this question will be much quicker, but it's not so common, um, at least for the questions I have done before. So that's why I want to just give you guys a quick proof for that. Okay, so two questions done, and then uh, just a couple more to go. Okay, number three, this right here is a formula that we didn't prove last time in the previous 100 integral video. So we are going to do that right now. The integral of one over some number a squared minus x squared and we are in the x world. Okay, so for this right here, it has something to do with inverse sign. And as I said, I want to show you guys the proof of that. So here it is. We are going to take x equal to a sine theta this is a trick substitution when we put this down and again the reason we use sine is because we have the minus and we'll just go ahead and do the usual business so differentiate both sides dx equals a the derivative of that is cosine theta and then we have the d theta here so ladies and gentlemen this right here becomes the integral of one over square root of a square minus a sine theta square right this right here is dx and then we have the dx which is a cosine theta d theta now check this out on the bottom here we have a square and a square so we can factor that out and then we have one minus sine square theta and of course they are still in the parentheses and this right here is just cosine square so this right here is square root of a square cosine square theta 
Here's the deal. We're just going to cancel the square and also the square root a times cosine theta. I know when we have square root of x squared, if we want to cancel the square and also the square root, technically it's not just x. We will have to put an absolute for you to make it more correct. But right here, the detail that I usually don't go over is because the, the, the detail that I usually don't go over is that we will just have to set the x for the theta to be in a certain interval so that cosine theta turns out to be positive anyway. So that's the reason. We don't need to worry about the absolute value. And if you want to be super careful with the absolute value, the reason that you have to do that is when you have a definite integral, you should be super careful. But yeah. Anyway, though, this and that cancel, this and that cancel. So why are we integrating? It's just the integral of 1 in the theta world. Important, right? This is important in the theta world. So when we integrate 1, it's not x, but rather we get theta. We're not done yet, though, because we have to go back to the x world. So if you look at this right here, because we know x equals a times sine theta, we can divide the a on both sides, and of course, assuming a is not positive, assuming a is not zero, let's say a is positive, then yeah, just divide a on both sides, so we know sine theta equals x over a, and then take the inverse sign on both sides, theta equals inverse sine of x over a. That's the answer. This right here is equal to inverse sine of x over a. And of course, we put plus c. And of course, I will still be using the minus one notation for the inverse function. And if you prefer, you can definitely write this as the r sine of x over a plus c. So it's kind of like your preference. Okay, number three done and let's see how many times i have to erase the both of this video i will try to squeeze in more questions on one board because i want to finish this <sighs> hopefully six hours and 30 minutes but maybe seven hours i am not sure right okay stay here number four this right here is a very good one one of my favorite ones we have ln x on the top over parentheses, and we have 1 plus ln x. Pay attention to this right here. If we don't have the parentheses, if it's just x, if it's just ln x over ln, if this right here is just ln x over 1 plus ln x, it's a special integral. We'll do that later. For now, we have this, and I want to raise that to the second power. So how do we deal with this, though? If you try u sub, you'll see that hmm, it's not going to work out so easily. Because if we have u equal the inside, 1 plus ln x, du will be 1 over x dx. So the issue is that we don't have an x right here. Otherwise, it might be much easier, right? Uh, so what do we do? Well. If we do not have the x on the bottom, why don't we look at this and just multiply the bottom by x. And of course, this will change the whole thing. So make sure that we also multiply x on the top. With that being said, you can look at this as the integral. And then right here, let me just put this down. I want to keep the top like this, x times ln x times. You see, if we have the u right here and then we get the x on the bottom over there. That part we can integrate. So the second part we want to look at is 1 over x times 1 plus ln x squared. If it's just this part we can integrate, what do we do with that though? Let's just differentiate. So this goes for what? Yes, integration by parts. So keep this in mind. Let's go ahead and do integration by parts. d and i plus minus differentiating x ln x and integrating that 1 over x 1 plus ln x squared. So this is how we do the... And technically, we are not using your substitution right now, right? This is going to help us for this part. 
Differentiating this, we have x times the derivative of the second, which is 1 of x, and then plus the second function, which is ln x. And we multiply by the first one. The derivative of the first one is just 1. So that's that. And to integrate this, this is where we use the u sub that we did right here. Let u equal the inside, and then we have the 1 over x right here, so that's perfect. We just have to integrate 1 over u squared in the u world. And the integral of 1 over u squared in the u world is negative 1 over u to the first power, and u is that. So we have 1 plus ln x. Now, the integration by power says we multiply this and that. So the first part is, let's put it on the top. So we have negative x ln x over 1 plus ln x. And then don't forget that we multiply this row and we still have to put the result in the integral. Negative times negative gives us the positive, so we have to add this integral. But guess what? x times 1 of x is nicely equal to 1. And then we have that plus ln x. This times that, they can solve very nicely. So we just have to add the integral of 1 in the x world, meaning that we just have to add an x. So this right here, we have negative, L, negative x ln x over 1 plus ln x, and then we add the x to it. Very nice, huh? But in fact, we can clean this up a little bit, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's multiply the top and bottom by 1 plus ln x, 1 plus ln x. So this right here gives us x plus x ln x. Combine them, this and that will cancel. So ladies and gentlemen, we can just write this as x on the top only, over 1 plus ln x, and then we are all done, plus c. Very nice result, in my opinion. All right, let's squeeze in number five here. We have the integral of x to the third power e to the x squared dx. For this one, you will see why I organize these questions in a certain way. This right here, we can actually do it by taking u sub first, or you can try to rearrange them in the way that you can integrate one part and then you can differentiate the other part. Of course, if you just look at e to the x squared, we don't have a nice antiderivative for that. But let's see, if I want to just put on d and then i right here, plus or minus, I'm going to have this part right here for sure, but this right here is a special integral. Don't worry though, we have what? x to a third power, so let's put an x here. Because this right here could be done with u sub. And now, we took an x right here, so right here we have x squared left. Check this out. Differentiating x squared, we get 2x. Integrating this, do a u sub, let u equal x squared. The derivative for that is 2x. Well, multiply by 2 divided by 2, right? So we just have 1 half and then e to the x squared. Now, this times this is the first part of the answer. So, ladies and gentlemen, we will get 1 half x squared e to the x squared. And then, for the second part, don't forget that we have to multiply by the second row and then put that inside of an integral. This times that will give us negative, and then 2 and 1 half cancel, so we just have x e to the x squared dx. Well, we did that earlier already, so we know the answer. This right here is just equal to 1 half from here, right? x squared e to the x squared, and then we have the minus, and then we have the 1 half e to the x squared, and we are done. Plus c. So, that will do it. Yeah. Just want to be picky a little bit. I should have put on the d and i on the side and put on the answer right here, but hopefully you guys don't mind. Anyway. Number five, and then we have a couple more to go. Oh, I should not use this, I should use this. Okay, for the next one, we are looking at the integral of 1 plus 1 over x. Alright, so what do we do? Uh, 
Usually we don't like to have like two fractions, so why don't we just combine the fractions, right? So multiply the top and bottom by x, and then we still combine the square roots. So this right here is the integral of square root of x plus 1 over x. All right? Mm. What do we do next? Earlier I said combine the fractions. Then I meant combine the fractions. But if you have just one square root, that's kind of not like what we like, huh? Okay, why don't we break the square root as two parts? Right, square root of the fraction is the square is the fraction of the square root, like this and like that, under one condition. They have to be on the common domain. So right here, assuming they have the common domain, all right? So we are allowed to do that. And again, if you want to worry about the domain and all that, that's the case when you have definite integrals. But this is indefinite integral, so we're assuming everything works out nicely. Okay, so that's what we have. So what do we do? At least what should we try? Let's just try u sub and see what happens. So I will put u to be square root of x plus 1. With that said, I can solve for square root of x. Let's see. Square both sides and then, yeah, square both sides and minus 1. x equals u square minus 1 and then, yeah, square both sides minus 1. That's what we have. And then the square root of x is square root of u squared minus 1 and um, we also need to get the dx so look at this and then differentiate dx equals 2u du uh, let's see how this helps if it does so we have the integral on the top is our u over square root of x is that so that's square root of u squared minus 1 and then the dx is 2u du Okay, uh, so it looks like we have no square root on the top, but I would really wonder if this helps or not. Hmm. Let's see. This right here, if we put a 2 out, and we have u squared over square root of u squared minus 1 du. It looks like we can do some trick software, but I want to try something before we continue. Right here, I pick u to be square root of x plus 1, and then we still have the square root on the bottom. Maybe this is not what we preferred. Let's try. What if we did it with u equal square root of x instead? In that case, we can see that x is equal to u squared, and then dx is equal to 2u du. And that will give us the integral. We need a square root of x plus 1. So this means x plus 1 equals u squared plus 1 after we add 1 on both sides. And then we just have to take the square root on both sides. So it looks like the top gives us square root of u squared plus 1. And then the bottom is u. Yeah, it's u. And then dx is that. So we have the 2u du. And take a look. This right here, the u and u cancel. And we will get 2 times the integral of square root of u squared plus 1. Right here, I want to tell you guys that, in fact, both approaches work. It's just depending on which one that you like better. So. Let's just do this one <laughs> because for this one, th th for this one, this is way too common than that. I will say, and for that, yeah, okay, all right. So you can try with that, but I think I just want to stick with that, with the blue one. Nothing wrong with this though. It's just it might be harder than the other. Alright, so for this, 
I am going to combine the fractions inside and then break the square root, right? So square root of x plus 1 over square root of x dx. And just like what we said earlier, I'm going to let u equal square root of x. And then this right here gives us x equals u squared and dx will be 2u du. And for this right here, x plus 1 will be u squared plus 1. And then we just take the square roots on both sides. So now we have all these ingredients. All right, integral. The top is that square root of u squared plus 1. The bottom square root of x is our u. And then dx is that which is 2u du. This and that cancel. Pretty nice. And we are looking at 2 times the integral of square root of u squared plus 1 in the u world. Now, I will say for the trick stuff for this right here, it's slightly easier. I'm going to see that because we have the sum of two squares, we'll be using tangent. Yes. So I'm going to let u equal tangent theta. du will be the derivative of that, which is secant squared theta d theta. And now, for this video, I'm going to do a lot of things in your head, all right? Because if you need like more practice, you can watch the first 100 integral. So for this right here, let's see. We will have 2 times the integral. When we put tangent theta in here, tangent squared plus 1 secant squared, instead of the square root will give us secant. And again, we don't need to worry about the absolute value. We are just purely doing this for the definite integral. So for this part, will give us secant theta. And then du is secant square theta d theta. Ah, very nice. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to tell you, right here we have 2, that's good. And then the integral of secant theta times secant theta is of course secant to the third power. And guess what? We did that in the previous 100 integral already. <laughs> so, I will tell you guess what the answer is. That's 1 half secant theta tangent theta plus 1 half ln absolute value secant theta plus tangent theta, like so. Not done yet. First off, 2 and the 1 half, they cancel. So we have the secant theta, tangent theta, and all that. And we will have to go back to the u world, and then we have to go back to the x world. So it depends on how you want to do it. You can go back to the x world right away. I'll show you guys how to do that. If you want to take two steps, that's fine too. OK, look at this. We know that tangent theta is equal to u, so we can say tangent theta equals u over 1. Better yet, u is square root of x. So right here, I'm just going to change the u to square root of x. And then based on this, we can draw a right triangle, put the right angle here, and then the angle theta here. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. And for the hypotenuse, we will have square root of this thing square, which is 1, plus this thing square, right? So we have square root of x, and then square. So technically, let's just do 1 square. So this right here is, in fact, just square root of 1 plus x. Now we are ready to go back to the x world. Ladies and gentlemen, we will have secant theta, which is hypotenuse over adjacent. So that's just square root of 1 plus x. Next, tangent theta is this over that, so just square root of x. And then we add. Again, 1 half and 2 cancel, and the rest is pretty much the same thing. So ln absolute value. But you know what? This and that will have square root, so we don't need the absolute value. Parentheses is OK. So we have square root of 1 plus x plus square root of x. And with that, we are done. So put a plus c. Yay. Yeah. And of course, if you would like to multiply this inside, but I think I will just leave it to like this. Yeah, why not? I will just leave it like that. OK, cool. Six questions done. Yeah, somebody can help me to see how many times I have to erase the board. <laughs>
All right, so I have a couple trick equi uh, integrals for you guys. Number seven, we have a integral of two secant x over sine x plus cosine x dx. And I'm going to put the number eight on the side as well because these two integrals, they look similar, but of course, the way to do them is maybe quite different. Yes, I'm fixing my hair. <laughs> anyway, for number eight, we have the integral of two sine x. See here, we have secant. Here we have sine, and the denominator is the same. So here we have sine x plus cosine x dx. Yeah, so this is the mini version of the integral battle inside of the 100 integrals. Let's do this one first. This is not so bad, but you just have to first notice that we have secant x. And a lot of people might try to divide the top and bottom by secant x. Well, actually, they look at this as 1 over cosine x. Now let me, again, let me just give you guys some scratch work. A lot of people might say this is 1 over cosine x and then this is sine x plus cosine x. So let me fix it by multiply the top and bottom by cosine x. That's not really going to help. I am not going to do that. No, don't do that. You can try it, but let me tell you, don't do that. Instead, what we are going to do is, I'm going to look at this and divide everybody by cosine x. And you'll be, you might be wondering why. Let me tell you. When we have an integral, you have to keep in mind that sine and cosine they are best friends in self integral. But here, we have sine x, cosine x, and also secant. No good. When we have secant in the integral, in fact, you want to see tangent to help you out. That's why I'm going to multiply cosine x to everything. Because when we do that, you can see that sine x divided by cosine x will produce the tangent. And secant x divided by cosine x is, guess what? Secant squared. So this right here, it's very nice. We will have the integral. Again, secant x divided by cosine x is another secant right here. So it's secant squared x. And we will have, this is tangent x. And we just need to add one. Much better. Because if we take u sub, let u equal to the denominator, which is tangent x plus 1, then we can see du is just nicely equal to secant squared x dx. And we have our du. So 2 du and on the bottom is u. So when we integrate that, we just get 2 ln absolute value of the denominator, which is the u, which is the tangent x plus 1. Yeah, plus c, done. Yeah, so keep in mind, secant and tangent, they are best friends when we are dealing with integrals and also sine cosine, right? If they are mixed like this, then try to uh, pair them up. So now if you look at number eight, it's like, hmm, we have sine and cosine, so what do we do, right? So we divide it by sine x, what should we divide it by cosine x? Let me tell you, none. You can try it, but that's not how we are going to do it. This is one of my favorite integrals as well. I'm going to show you guys a very powerful technique called the Wooden Be Nice Integration Technique. Here, you can try use up, but let me just tell you it's not going to work. The reason it's not going to work is because the numerator is not so nice. So we will just have to think about what are the nice version of the similar integral that we can come up with. All right, so let's see. If we have the integral and the denominator is sine x plus cosine x, what do we wish to have on the top so that this right here will be super easy? Don't say zero. I know zero will be super easy, right? But let's not use zero. So what do we use? Well, I'm going to tell you, what if we have sine x plus cosine x on the top? Wouldn't this be super easy? Yes, 
because the whole thing right here is just one, integrating one in the x is just x. That's super easy. It's almost redundant, but just trust me, it's going to help. All right, integrating one, we just get x. Don't worry about the plus c because the main take was this one. Good, but what else can we do? Well, let's try another one. Okay, integral of something over sine x plus cosine x. What do we wish to have on the top so that this right here would be super easy? The answer to that is, if we have the derivative of the bottom, then this integral will be super easy as well, because we can just do use up like that. So, look at the bottom and differentiate. Derivative of sine x is cosine x, and derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. When we do that, do u sub, we'll just get ln of this, which is the u, and we put that in the absolute value, so ln of sine x plus cosine x. That's super easy. So, these are the ones that we like. So what's the connection between these blue ones and the one that we have right here? Guess what? If we if we add them, then sine x and sine x will cancel. Um, we get two cosine x. That's not what we want. What we can do is we are going to subtract. This integral minus that. This integral minus that. Ladies and gentlemen, have a look. Cosine minus cosine is zero. Sine x minus negative co sine x minus negative sine, we get two sine x. And of course, the denominator stays the same. So we have sine x plus cosine x. So this right here is possible. It's because integral is a linear operation, meaning that you can just, when you have the difference of two integrals is the integral of the difference of the inside. You can just subtract inside like that. And we can just subtract this and that together and we are done. So ladies and gentlemen, this right here, which is the integral that we are trying to do, is equal to x minus ln absolute value of sine x plus cosine x, and then of course plus c, and then we are done. So nice, isn't it? Okay. Mm. I'm going to erase the board and I'm going to put on number 9 next. By the way, the clock on the wall, and then you guys might notice I have the energy drink, like the sports drink, technically, and then the client bottle from Cliff Stowe. Yeah. And of course, a bunch of markers. Number nine, integral one over, here we have sine x plus cosine x and we square that this integral has multiple ways of doing it and on the answer key that I prepared for my channel members and my patrons you guys can see that I gave you guys three different answers but of course in terms of integrals mm, the answers might be just off by a constant and all that stuff so I'm going to tell you guys the perhaps the most natural way to do this and then I'm going to put down the other answers and then you guys can try to come up with the other solutions on your own. I think the most natural way to do this is that because we have a binomial square, right? let's just multiply it. So we get 1 over this thing square which is sine square x and then plus 2 times this and that. So 2 sine x, cosine x and lastly cosine Square that and then dx. Uh, that's all you have. And let's put a one more toward the middle. Looks better. This is so nice because sine square plus cosine square is just equal to one. So we are looking at the integral of one over one. And guess what? Two sine x cosine x is just nice equal to sine of two x. Like that. And now this right here becomes a slightly more standard or like a more common integral that um, you might have seen already. And the way that I'm going to continue is I'm just going to multiply the top and bottom by its conjugate. And the reason I want to do the conjugate is because later on, if we change this number to like say two or three, then you will see that the conjugate wouldn't work. In that case, you will have to use the so-called 
where drops substitution. So that will be later. But now I'm just going to multiply the top and bottom by one minus sine of two x, and then one minus sine of two x. So what we're going to get is the top is one minus sine of two x. And let's go ahead and do this in your head. This times that is one minus sine square of two x, which is the same as cosine square of two x. And I'm going to split the fraction. No, actually it's okay. I'm just going to put it as a fraction. So this is cosine square of two x. So I'm going to put it down right now like this, and then I'll split the fraction. Have a look. What we are going to do is integral one over that, which is secant square of two x minus. This means cosine times cosine, and the first cosine we can look at that as one over cosine, which is secant of two x, and then the other one we have the sine on the top over the other cosine, so we get tangent of two x. Now. For this right here, look at the input, we have 2x. So we have to make sure that we divide it by 2 later. We can also use use up to kind of verify the result on your own. But I'll tell you guys that the integral of sine, sorry, the secant square will give us tangent, and the input stays the same. The derivative of 2x is 2, so divide it by that, so make sure you have the 1 half. And we can do that, this is pretty easy, because the derivative of the input is just a number 2. Likewise, if you do use up the two x, right, and then we are looking at sine, I mean secant times tangent, the integral for that is secant, and that will be minus. We get secant of two x, and again divided by two, so that's that. And then finally, we just put down a plus c. Yay! So that's the answer that I have for you guys. And if you prefer, you can also try the other one. I'll say, um, I will just make a note right here on the side. So for this integral, you can also get, um, I'll just say, or you can also have one half tangent of x minus pi over four. And you might be wondering, well, maybe you have noticed already that how we get this. This is actually a hint. I will tell you guys how though. Somehow combine the sine x and cosine x into just one term by using some kind of um, theta rule. So this right here is another possible answer. And the best one among all three, I will tell you. That is equal to sine x on the top over sine x plus cosine x and then plus c. Notice though, I'm not saying the function parts are equal. I'm saying that these three answers, they are all okay for being the integral for that. They may be off by a constant. You will just have to verify that by either grabbing them or use some trick identities. This right here is the best one in my opinion, because I'll tell you, if we differentiate this right here, sine x over sine x plus cosine x, of course, we will have to use the quotient rule for that. And after all the simplification, we will actually end up with 1 over sine x plus cosine x. Yeah. Do we put a plus C here? No. This is just the derivative. And because we differentiate this, we get that, meaning that if we integrate this, we'll get this plus C. The hard question is that, how can we go from this integral to this answer. In another word, how can we somehow undo the quotient rule so we can go back from there to here? And I'm going to leave this to you guys. All right? But I'll present this right here for the answer for number nine. Cool. So the last three questions, they were all like sine, cosine, secant, and all that, some trick integrals. And now for number 10, let's move on to some other types of integrals. You will see that the first 
40, 50 questions, they are still like the standard integrals, but uh, for like Cal 1, Cal 2, but then later on, you will see the very different ones that you probably have not seen before. Number 10. No, number 10, not number 1. We are looking at the integral of 1 over 7 minus 6x minus x squared dx. And you might guess that I'm going to put a number 11 on the side. 11. Because they look so similar. Number 11, integral of 1 over still 7 minus 6x minus x squared. But for this one, I'm going to give you guys a square root right here. Wow. But it's okay. Let's work on this one first. Notice 7 minus 6x minus x squared can be factored. So let's go ahead and factor it. And when we do that, we will end up with 7 and 1. And we need to have a minus x times x. And the correct combination is minus x here plus x here. Yes. Okay, so this right here will be the integral, and then we will have some number over 7 plus x. And then add it with another fraction. We are doing the partial fraction. The other one is 1 minus x on the bottom. And we just have to figure out the numbers on the top. Use the cover up method. To figure this out, we will just have to go back to the original and cover the same denominator. To make 7 plus x equals 0, x has to be negative 7. Put negative 7 in here. 1 minus negative 7 is 1 plus 7, which is 8. That's on the bottom though. So we get 1 over 8. Let's try another one. To figure this out, we go back to the original. We cover the same denominator. And to make 1 minus x equals 0, x has to be 1. We put 1 in here. 1 over 7 plus 1, we get 1 over 8. All right, so both of them have 1 over 8, but I'm just going to write down the answer. 1 over 8, ln, absolute value, 7 plus x. The other one, be really careful. 1 minus x, do a u-sub. The derivative of 1 minus x is negative 1. So because of this minus, we will have to have a minus here. Be really careful. Earlier it was just 1, right? The derivative of 7 plus x is just 1, so we didn't need to do that. All right. And then we have the 1 over 8, ln, absolute value 1 minus x. And with all that, we are done plus c. Yay. Oh, I made a small mistake. <laughs> For number 10, if you can see my handout, I have 7 plus 6x. I wrote down 7 minus 6x. Um, I'm going to stick with this one here, and then let's see how it goes. It shouldn't matter that much, all right? <laughs> anyway, now we have the square root. What do we do with this, though? Shall we still factor it and break it apart? No. Partial fraction like this, it's only meant for be... It's only meant for rational functions. No square roots, no nothing, right? Just polynomials over polynomial. But when we have a square root, uh, this kind of partial fraction is not going to work unless you have like some other special partial fraction in that case. I don't know. For this right here, we will have to recall what we did for question number three. So I will remind you guys. Recall from question number three. We know that when we have the integral of one over square root of some number Right, a square minus x square. This right here gives us inverse sine of x over a plus c. Why this? Notice that we have a quadratic on the bottom, and then in fact later on, after we complete the square, we'll be able to utilize this formula. So the key is we complete the square first. Look at the bottom here, the inside. We have seven minus, let's put it down like this, 7, and then, 
All right, I'm going to factor out a negative here. So we have minus parentheses and we get 6x. Let's, let's put it on like this, sorry. 7 minus parentheses 6x and then plus x squared. And now why did I bother to factor out negative? Because I like to have the x squared being positive. That's all. When we have this, by the way, this is equivalent to that. When we have this, we just have to add some number here, then we can compute the square for that. And don't forget to undo that little part. To figure out this number, we look at the coefficient of x, which we have 6. We take half of that, which is 3, and then we square that, which we get 9. So we will have to add the 9 right here. But no care, this is inside of this parentheses, which is actually a negative 9. I will have to what? I will have to go out here and then I will have to add 9 to it. Because this is minus 9, I will actually have to add 9 to this right here. Yeah. All right. So minus 9 plus 9 is 0. So be really careful with this completing the square. And I'm just going to put this down first. 7 plus 9, which is 16, minus the parentheses. This part in red is parentheses. Let's just keep the 3 first, right? 3 plus x like this, square. Yes. So ladies and gentlemen, this integral is the same as integral of 1 over square root. We have 16, which is the same as 4 squared, because we need to look at this as a squared, so 4 squared, and then minus parentheses 3 plus x, and then squared. Yeah. Now, take a quick use up, let u equal 3 plus x, and the derivative of that is just dx is equal to du. So we don't have to divide anything or multiply by anything. The a here is 4. So use this formula, we will end up with inverse sign of 3 plus x. Right? This right here is our function, which is this input. So we have 3 plus x. Of course, you can also write it as x plus 3 if you would like. And then divide it by 4. Yeah, like that. Plus c. Done. So once we have that square root, of course, the whole thing is very different. And let me take a look and see. Yes, the phone is still recording. That's very nice. It's been 52 minutes and maybe I should have to, maybe I should talk faster or maybe talk less because I don't want to spend 10 hours on doing this. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Uh, some easier one coming up. Number 12 is a um, standard one, I would say. We are looking at the integral of sine to the fourth power x. So for this right here, we just have to use the power reduction formula. And to use the power reduction formula, we should be looking at sine square. So this right here, it's the same as saying sine square square, which is sine square inside, right? But we are going to replace the sine square with one half of one minus cosine of 2x. We used this earlier. So this is the power reduction for sine squared. And then we still have another square like that. Okay, for this right here, the news is we will have to expand it. One half square is one over four. Let's just put that all the way outside of the integral. And then one square is 1, and then we have to minus 2 times this and that, which is 2 cosine square of 2x. And then lastly, we have to add this thing square. So just 2 times this and that, so just minus 2 cosine 2x. And lastly, add this thing square, which is plus cosine square of 2x. Yeah, so we have all this dx. This is ready, this is ready, this is not ready yet. I will have to remind you guys, cosine square of... Yeah, the power reduction formula, cosine square of theta. This right here equals one half. It's very similar, uh, one half 
but instead of the minus, we have plus. So 1 plus cosine of 2 theta. Here, the input is 2 theta, though, so we have to make sure we do 2 times 2 theta, so it's 4 theta. So I'm just going to write this as 1 over 4 times the integral, still 1 minus 2 times cosine of 2x. Use this identity, I will distribute it so we get plus 1 half, so put on in blue, plus 1 half, and then plus 1 half cosine of 2 times 2, right? Um, let me just make it more clear. So this is 2 times that, which is 4x. Right? Hopefully that's clear. And then, yeah. Okay, so this and that cannot be combined, but of course, 1 plus 1 half can be combined, and let's just go ahead and do that in your head. So ladies and gentlemen, we still have all the way in the front that 1 over 4, and integrating 3 over 2, we get 3 over 2x. Next, integrating this, thankfully we have just cosine of 2x. The derivative 2x is 2, and that will cancel with this, right? So we'll just get that with plus, sorry, the integral of cosine is past this sign, so we still have the minus, and this right here will give us sine of 2x. You can write this down and differentiate this real quick, and you'll get this back, and that's the answer for that. Next, integrate cosine, we get positive sine, and this right here stays the same, but divided by the derivative of 4x, which is 4, so we will end up with 1 over 8. So that's that. I'm not going to put on plus e yet because that's distributed 1 over 4. So ladies and gentlemen, 3 over 8x minus 1 over 4 sine of 2x and then plus 1 over 32 sine of 4x. And we are done plus c. Let me just check the answer. Just want to make sure that I give you guys the correct answers. That's why I have the answer key right in front of me. Yeah, not the work, but just the answer key. Cool. Yay. All right. Let, let's do the next two on the same board. So I'm going to erase this. Number 13, we have the integral of 1 plus e to the x squared over e to the x. On the other hand, number 14, we have the reciprocal of that integral of e to the x over 1 plus e to the x squared. All right, take a look. If you can choose which one of this to be done on your test? Which one would you choose? I'll choose this one because I can just finish this with u sub. Let u equal the inside 1 plus e to the x. And we see that du is equal to e to the x dx, which is that. So we just have to integrate 1 over u squared. And the answer for that is negative 1 over u. And u is that. So 1 plus e to the x. And then we are done. So this is number 14. For number 13, well, u sub is not going to work right away. We have to expand this and just simplify it. It's not so bad either. Check this out. Multiply out the top, we get this thing squared, which is 1 plus 2 times this and that, so e to the x. And then lastly, square this, e to the x squared, we get e to the 2x. And then divide everybody by e to the x dx. Now, I'm going to simplify this. 1 over e to the x, I will write it as e to the negative x. This and that cancel, so we have plus 2. Lastly, this divided by that, we have e to the x. Oh, pretty cool, huh? Alright, so that's what we have, and we can just then integrate all this. It's not so bad either. Integrating e to the negative x, we get e to the negative x, but 
the derivative of negative x is negative 1. So it's just numbers so divided by negative 1. So we have the negative right there. The integral of 2 is 2x, and lastly, the integral of e to the x is just e to the x, and then we are done, plus d. Yay! So, number 13 and number 14. Okay, I'm not going to fit in number 15 for this one. I'm going to erase it, and yeah. Number 15, we are looking at the integral 1 over x times the square root, and we have x to the 15th power minus 1 dx. Yeah, I chose 15 to honor number 15. Okay, so what do we do? Here's the thing. Usually when we have an like, uh, integral with a square root part, um, if you are kind of stuck, then just do a new sub and let u be the square root part and hope for the best. So let's try. I'm going to let, let's try if we can finish right here. Number 16 is okay, so yeah, I'll try to and I'll fit number 16 on the side. Put u to be square root of x to the 15 minus 1. The whole thing. And hope for the best. And this is how I play basketball too. I shoot the basketball and hope for the best. Before I integrate, no, before I differentiate, should we? Let's see. Should we differentiate now or should we isolate x? Differentiate now. So du equals the derivative of that is something over 2 over uh, times the square root of the inside, x to the 15 minus 1, and use the chain rule, so we get 15x to the 14th. And then we have the dx. And then multiply the reciprocal on both sides. dx equals, we have 2 square root of x to the 15 minus 1 over 15x to the 14th. And then we have the du here. Notice though, this part is what? It's also our u. That's uh, pretty nice. So now take this integral to the u world. We are going to get the integral 1 over x. This part is just our u, so that's good. And then dx is all that. I'll write it as 2u over 15x to the 14th power in the u world. Pretty good so far. Notice the u and u cancel. Good x times x to the 14 is x to the 15, that's good. And let's put on the constant all the way to the front. So 2 over 15, integral 1 over x to the 15 in the u world. Can we use the reverse power rule? Write this as x to the negative 1 over 15 and then just add 1 to the power and divide it by the new power. No. The reason is this is x. This is u. We cannot do the reverse power rule. In fact, we cannot, no, we cannot x, integrate x in the u world. There's a connection between x and u. We will have to rewrite the x to a 15 in terms of u. And to do so, we look back here. To isolate x to a 15th power, we can square both sides. So we get x to the 15 minus 1 is equal to u squared, yeah? But put the minus 1 to the other side, we just get u squared plus 1. So, we will have to write this as 2 over 15, integral 1 over x to the, one, x to the 15th power, we have the u squared plus 1. du. Integrate this, not that. Right? Not the reverse power rule. And the integral for this in the u world is inverse tangent of u. So ladies and gentlemen, we get 2 over 15 inverse tangent of u. And the u is that, square root of x to the 15th power minus 1. And with all that, we are done after we put down the plus c. Yay. Alright, yay. 
because I can put on another integral right here. Number 16, we have the integral of sine of, sine of x times sine of 2x over 1 plus sine to the third power x. Wow. Hmm. It's a crazy rational expression in terms of sine, but this is x, this is 2x, and this has power 3, huh? Let's just try to fix the angles first. Here we have sine of 2x, so let's use the double angle identity for that. So we're looking at an integral of sine x times 2 sine x times cosine x over 1 plus sine to the third power x. Of course, multiply out the top, so we are going to get 2 sine square x cosine x over 1 plus sine to the third power x. This is actually pretty good because we can just do u sub, let u equal the bottom 1 plus sine to the third power x. And have a look, du is equal to, bring the 3 to the front, minus 1 to the power, so sine square x, and don't forget the chain rule, the derivative of sine is cosine. Here, this and that. Well, we need a 3, this is a 2, so what do we do? It's okay, let's multiply a 3 here, and let's divide it by the 3 here. <laughs> so, we're integrating, here is the du, and this is the u, 2 thirds at the front. So, let's write that down, 2 thirds, and then we get ln absolute value, because the input can be negative, so 1 plus sine to the third power of x plus c, done. Yeah. Alright, next one, we really have to do some serious trick substitution. Ah, can I avoid that? Integral, square root, x squared, minus 3. On the bottom, we have x. Okay. Here we go, trick sub. But this is a subtraction between x squared and something. 3 is the same as square root of 3 squared. So, the first step we take is let x being equal to square root of 3 and we use secant, so secant theta. When we have a subtraction, if the x is going first, then yeah, we put secant. And we see dx will be square root of 3 secant theta times tangent theta d theta. Take this integral to the theta world and see what happens. Here we have the integral square root x is square root of 3 secant theta and then we have to square that minus 3 over x is that so square root of 3 secant theta and then dx is that square root of 3 secant theta tangent theta d theta some good news for you guys this and that can cancel this and that can cancel Pretty good, I would say. Uh, what do we do next though? Check this out, let's do this in our head. This is 3, minus 3, right? So we can factor out the 3, but it's inside of the square root, so it's a constant multiple, so we can factor that out all the way at the front. Guess what, this right here will give us tangent, because c can square theta minus 1 is tangent, square in the square root, so it's just tangent, times another tangent is tangent square. Yeah tangent square theta, like that. So, uh, not so bad, I would say. But how do we integrate tangent square theta, though? Just trick identity. This right here, secant square theta minus 1. So, this right here becomes, let me write, yeah, let me just write this out. This is square root of 3 integral 
This right here, change that to secant squared theta minus one in the theta world, and we're ready. Ladies and gentlemen, this right here is square root of three, and put on parentheses for the resolved integration. Integrating this, we get tangent theta. Integrating minus one in the theta world is minus theta. Okay, now we will have to go back to the x world. Look at this, we know secant theta equals x over square root of three. Okay, draw the triangle, a triangle here, and then the theta here. Secant is x over square root of three, hypotenuse over adjacent. The opposite is the square root of this thing, so x squared, minus this thing squared, so square root of three, squared. Now, to get tangent, let's see. We get, uh, let me put, yeah, let me put this down here. We get square root of three, and then tangent is this over that. So we get square root of x squared minus three over square root of three. Minus, hmm, we have theta. Well, theta is just going to be the inverse, right? The inverse secant of x over square root of three. The answer looks pretty crazy, but this is the answer. Yeah, and of course we can clean this up a little bit, distribute the square root of three. So we get square root of x squared minus three, and then minus square root of three. Do not cancel this entire. So we have this on the, at the front right here, and then inverse secant of x over square root of three, and then we are done plus c. And number 18, uh, again, cannot fit in here, so I will just have to erase this. Are we going to get any improper integrals? Is that what I heard? Yes, we are. Are we going to do any change of variables? Yes, yes. I mean, change of water too? Yes, of course, yeah, 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 yeah. Number 18. We are looking at the integral of COT, cotangent x, and then over sine x plus cosecant x dx. Hmm, wow, so Again, we have sine, cosecant, and cotangent. That is not what we like, huh? So what do we do? Can we try to write everything in terms of uh, sine, cosine? That, let's try. If that's the approach, then cotangent x will look at that as cosine x over sine x. This sine x stays. Cosecant x will write it as one over sine x. Okay, let's multiply the top and bottom by sine x and see what happens. So sine x here, and also let's multiply sine x here. We are looking at cosine x on the top over sine square x. And then this and that is just one. Huh, much better. Because now we can just take a u sub, let u equal sine x. Just sine x, not the square though, because when we take the derivative of this, we get precisely du equal cosine x dx, which is that. So therefore, we are integrating one over u squared plus one in the u world. So we get inverse tangent of u, and the u is sine x. Yeah, so that's it. We're done. Good. And good news for everybody, including myself. This is the first page. Yay. Whew. And number 19. Look, look at this. We have inverse tangent of sine x. Look at this. Right, look at this. Look at that. Number 19. I prefer something very special for you guys. Number 19. Let's look at the integral of 1 over. Parentheses x squared plus 1 
and the power is 3 over 2. Wow. Dx. The over 2 power right here is like the radical, right? The square root. And inside we have x squared plus 1. So that's to use, that's to tricks up. And because this is sum of two squares, so I will take tangent for that. And it's just one. So I will put x to be tangent theta. Dx will be secant squared theta d theta. So we are going to get the integral of 1 over tangent theta. And then we square that. And then plus 1. And then we take this to the 3 half power dx is that secant squared theta d theta. Check this out. Tangent squared plus 1 is secant squared, and that will cancel with this. So on the bottom, we actually just get secant to the third power theta. And of course, we can cancel the two of them out. So we're just going to get 1 over secant theta. 1 over secant theta is just very nicely equal to cosine theta. So Integrating cosine theta in the theta world, guess what? This is just going to be positive sine theta. But we are not done yet because we have to go back to the we have to go back to the x world. We have sine theta. Theta is what though? Look at this. We know x equals tangent theta. It means that x it means that theta equals inverse tangent of x. So I can write this as sine of inverse tangent of x. How pretty is this? This and that. Yep, I did this on purpose. But of course, usually I wouldn't leave the answer like this because this is super intimidating when we have sine of an inverse trig function inside. So usually we don't want that. So the way to take care of this is that we will just, again, draw a right triangle. Tangent theta is equal to x, which is the same as x over 1. So draw a right triangle, x over 1, and the hypotenuse is right here, which is square root of 1 square plus x square. And we do the sign for that. So this right here is equal to opposite over hypotenuse x over square root of 1 plus x squared plus c. This is the answer that we usually provide. But earlier we had inverse tangent of sine x. So of course right here, I put down sine of inverse tangent of x. And you might be wondering, can we do the same thing um, for this? Like draw a right triangle or that? Uh, not really. We can only do this when we have a regular trig function on the outside and the inside is an inverse trig function and you can draw a right triangle and you can figure out the ratio of the sides. But this right here, just leave it like that. Cool, number 19, pretty cool. Now, moving on to question number 20. One fifth of the, the video. I really doubt how many hours that this will take because later on the questions are getting crazier and crazier so I don't know crazier not necessarily in the sense of like a long or hard but I will say new and will make a newer concept for many of you guys so I will try to explain a couple more things or point out the tricky part but anyway number 20 still rather Standard integral, integral square root of 1 plus another square root of x. Well, I didn't do this integral in the previous video. So let's see. Why don't we just do u sub and hope for the best? I like that approach. So u equal 1 plus square root of x. To get dx, that's iso. Uh, that's just differentiate du equals 1 over 2 square root of x dx and then dx equals reciprocal right so it's 2 square root of x du uh, okay so far yeah and um, we see that this is the integral square root and the 1 plus square root of x is the u dx is that 
2 square root of x du. Uh, we still have the x in the u world, right? But don't worry, because we can figure out what square root of x is by going back here. Square root of x is equal to u minus 1. So we just have to replace this by u minus 1. And now, check this out. We can put a 2 at the front, and then integral square root of u times u minus 1. I will write this as u to the 1 half power. And then distribute. So this times that gives us u to the 3 half power. This times that is minus u to the 1 half power. And now we are ready to integrate. Add 1 to the power and divide it by the new power. Add 1 to this, we get 5 over 2. So divided by that, we have 2 over 5. So ladies and gentlemen, let's just distribute already. 2 times this, we get 4 over 5. U is that, so parentheses, 1 plus square root of x, and then raised to the 5 over 2 power. Next one, right here, add 1 to the power, which is 3 over 2, and divide it by the new power, which is 2 over 3, distribute the 2, we have minus 4 over 3, u, which is 1 plus square root of x, raised to the 3 over 2 power, and then we're done, plus t. Done. Yep, just like that. If you want, you can write the one the, the half power as a square root so it matches with the original. And let me just take some time to No, I think I will, oh no, I was also write this down. Or if you want, four over five. Again the over two is the big square root, yeah. And then we have this one plus square root of x raised to the fifth power minus four over three. That is another square root like this, and then 1 plus square root of x, and then raised to the third power plus c. Mm, up to you. Yeah, on the answer key, have this version, uh, but they are the same thing. Okay, done. That's number 20. Let me take a look at. Yes, we're still recording. Um, okay, number 21. Integral x to the nth power and then e to the x. So for this right here, notice that the goal is to prove this integral formula. And this is what I didn't do in the previous video, so I want to provide that right here. So let's take a look. First off, n has some restriction. It cannot be fraction, it cannot be negative number. So right here, I will tell you, I'm going to show you guys how we can do the power reduction or the recursive formula for this integral when we have x to the n times e to the x when n is greater than or equal to 0 and n is meant to be a whole number. So in this case, it's a non-negative whole number. How do we do this though? Usually, when we have x to the third power times e to the x, for example, then we do integration by parts, right? x to the third or x to the fifteen. This is just an n, but we can still use integration by parts. Of course, we do the di method, plus or minus, that's enough, because we just want to do a recursive formula. We will differentiate x to the n, we will integrate e to the x. Differentiating this, we get n x to the n minus 1, everybody's favorite derivative power rule. And then integrating e to the x, we get e to the x. This is like everybody's love. All right, this times this is the first part of the answer. So we get x to the n times e to the x. And then don't forget, we multiply these two together and put that inside of an integral. n is just a number, so we can say that's at the front. And then it's a minus n. And then we have the integral. And then we just multiply this and that together inside of the integral. So I'll put the integral in red. Yeah. And then e to the x. dx. You can continue, but the recursive formula it's meant to be like this. Going from here to here, and then we are done. Can you do this with like n equals one half? 
technically you could, but this right here will just be a non-elementary integral. So it's kind of like, yeah. So that's that. If n is like a positive whole number, then you can actually finish this. But if n is like fraction, it's not that fun, I would say. All right, enough talking on that. Okay, next one. Let's look at number 22. This is the first time fitting another one. Let's see. Integral ln x to the nth power dx. I'm not going to put on a restriction. You guys can think about the restriction on your own. But if you want to end up with nice formula, then I mean, an, an actual integral that you can do without the special functions, then for this one, you need a positive whole number, non negative whole number. But anyway, how do we do this? Same thing, integration by parts with the dm and also d and all the i. I'm going to differentiate ln x raised to the nth power and I will integrate 1. Integrating 1 is just x, good. Differentiating this, put n to the front, inside, n minus 1, and don't forget the chain rule. The derivative of ln x is 1 over x, so I'll have this. So first, we do this times that, so we have x times ln x raised to the nth power. Next, look, we multiply this and that and put that inside of an integral. x and x cancel. We have a minus n right here, put that at the front, and then integral, and then you see the power is just n minus 1 now. So that's what we mean by a recursive or like a reduction formula. Technically, that's just a recursive huh? Re reduction, right? Because the power goes down. Mm, but that's it. That's it. Yeah. Okay. You might be wondering, uh, what's my, well, what's the most useful, or the, what's the most common integration technique? I will tell you, either use up or I think use up is the most common one. It's the one that will really save your life. But of course, sometimes before we can do use up, we will have to do a lot of different things such as factoring or use trig identity or all that. And the next one is integration by parts. And the integration by parts is like the things that we were doing earlier. If you want to see a video on the detailed explanation for the DI method, I will leave the link in the description for your convenience as well. Next one is slightly more difficult. We are going to come with a formula for the integral of sine raised to the nth power x. And again, you can think about the restriction on your own. I will actually tell you for this one. I will say, if you want to make this more legitimate, that like n is greater than we could do 2. Okay? So, how do we do this? Let's think about it a little bit. If I want to just do the d and the i, Earlier, we differentiated ln x to the nth power, right? This time, if we have, um, if we have sine x to the nth power like so, right? This notation, that notation means the same in integral one. Let's see what happens. Right here, we get n times sine x, n minus one, and then the derivative of sine x is cosine x. Okay, that's 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 correct. Integrating one, we get x, and if we do this times that, it looks pretty legit, right? X times that, and um, oh, it it looks pretty legit, but hmm. I, I see. It looks pretty legit if you continue, you get x times sine. This is not the answer, just to let you know, like sometimes we just have to try things out, right? Swap this, and then minus the integral, right? So it's the end of the front integral. But check this out. We will have this, this, that together. So we have x at the front, and then sine x raised to the n minus one, cosine x, and then another x. No, and the x is right already. If you say this integral right here 
gives you like will be reduced to this it, it's not that helpful why it stands power and um, it stands power but this is slightly more comp this is way more complicated than the original no this is not the approach that's the point so what do we do remember what i told you guys many many times when we have an integral sine x and cosine x are the best friend um i cannot really produce a cosine x though so let's try to do the following i don't want to just integrate one but let's have a look i'm going to look at this as the integral and then we have sine i'm going to take out one of the sine x factor so sine to the n minus one power times sine x dx now why did i do that check this out once we have this we can do the integration by parts the dm method on the side as follows i will be differentiating this instead so we're looking at sine to the n minus one power of x and then i'm going to integrate sine x that's how we can produce the cosine when we integrate sine x we get negative cosine when we differentiate this put the n minus one to the front and make sure we put parentheses and then subtract one to the power so sine n minus two and then the chain rule we multiply by cosine x now if we do this times that we get just that right so i'm just going to put it together it's negative and then we have sine n minus one and then we have cosine so that's good that's good and then we see that we are going to multiply these two things together and we will just have minus and then we have that's let's put on mine actually minus minus is plus and then we have the m minus one and then we have the integral and now we have sine n minus two and uh, cosine cosine which is cosine square x ah, it works out so nice it works out so nicely why because we can see that cosine square x is actually just one minus sine square x and we can distribute this again and now take a look though the moment we distribute this we will end up with the integral of sine to the nth power again that's a duplication from the original one so this is what i'm going to do based on what we have done so far i will tell you the left hand side we have the integral of sine to the nth power x dx this right here gives us the first part of the answer which is negative sine to the n minus one x cosine x and then i'm going to just put this times that right so we will add n minus one times the integral of sine to the n minus two x dx i closed this already and this is good because it is a power reduction you see and we still have, we don't have anything else in this integral but don't forget we still have the other part we'll take this right earlier we did this times that and now we have to take this times that sine to the n minus 2 power times sine square is just sine to the n's power and as i said that's a repeat from the earlier that's why i write this down again we still have this factor but this is a negative so it's a minus and then we have n minus 1 and then we have the integral sine to the n's power x dx now why did i do write this down again because we'll have to add this to the other side combine it so we add n minus one times the integral sine to the nth power x dx this and that will cancel and of course let's come here we add n minus one integral sine to the nth power x dx okay ladies and gentlemen this is one integral plus n minus one times this ignore this for now one plus n minus one one cancels so we have n n times the integral sine to the nth 
x dx. Right, this is how we usually deal with the repeating integral when we see a. This is how we usually deal with the integration by part when we see a repeating situation. A famous example is the integral of sine to the third power, I mean, secant to the third power x. But anyway, I'll just write this down again. So this right here is negative sine to the n minus 1. I forgot the x. I saw that. Don't worry. x and n. Cosine x and then plus n minus 1. Integral sine n minus 2. I forgot the x again. x dx. Not done yet. I will have to divide everybody by n. So, integral. That doesn't look like integral. That looks like a stretched 5. Integral sine to the nth power x dx equals negative 1 over n times sine to the n minus 1 power of x times cosine of x and then we add again divided by n so n minus 1 over n times the integral sine to the n minus 2 power x dx this is the reduction formula that we like to use for sine to the nth power. The reason that I say n should be greater than or equal to 2 is because of this, in order to make sense. Can you do this with n equal to 1? No. Doesn't work. Yeah. Can we? If n is equal to 1. n equal 1, surprisingly, also works. I, I don't like this kind of uh, reduction formula. <laughs> because when n is equal to 1, this is 1, this is negative, and then we get cosine. We are saying the integral of sine x is equal to cosine because n minus 1. When n, if n is equal to 1, then this is just equal to 0. I, I really don't like to write this down, so you can figure that out. Maybe if you say n is equal to 1 half, you can come with some new kind of math. So. That's that. But th 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 this is it. Take a screenshot if you would like. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so two more reduction formula. The next one is tangent number 24. We have the integral of tangent to the nth power x dx. So now, how do we deal with this? You might be thinking maybe we should just do integration by parts again, huh? Mm. We want to end up with the formula that is in the handout. So let's think about it a little bit. Let's, let's try it. Why not? Let's just go ahead and do the integration by parts right away and see what happens. Plus, minus. I'm just going to differentiate tangent to the nth power x and then integrate 1 and see what happens. Maybe not, because in that case, I will integrate 1 and I'll end up with x. And then this right here is like crazy stuff. And then that's not what we are going to go. This is not going to match with the formula that we have here, right? So no, 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 no. So let's try to do another way to do it. Let's try another way to do it. Let's try this instead. Non-integration by parts. Let's try this instead. 
let's think about the fundamental. The integral, when we have an integral, tangent and secant is best friend. And I don't want to just take a one tangent, though. that doesn't really help because we don't really have a trick identity for, for that. Let's try this integral, and um, you know what's better? A new marker. Let's try a new marker. This. All right, number 24. Here, we look at the integral, and then let me break it down as tangent to the n. I will take out two of them. So tangent to the n minus 2, x times tangent square x. And of course, together we still have the same as the original, so they are equivalent. And what's tangent square though? Tangent square is the same as secant square x minus 1. Now let's just multiply this in, and you see that this is so nice. Because the first part will just end up with the integral of tangent to the m minus 2x times secant square x. And I would like to close this right here. Next, the uh, next one, I think, oh, do, do I have enough space? I, I'm just going to write it up. Minus this times that, so we have tangent to the m minus 2 x dx. And you see, this is actually great because this right here has less power than the original, so it's the power reduction, right? That's, that's very good. But what's this? We can also integrate this pretty easily. We can just take a u sub, let u be tangent x, and you see du is nicely equal to secant square x dx. So just have to integrate u to the n minus 2. u to the n minus 2, we just add 1 to the power, becomes n minus 1, and divide it by the new power. So this becomes 1 over n minus 1, and then u to the n minus 1, and u is tangent, so tangent n minus 1. That's first part. Then we subtract integral tangent n minus 2 x dx. All right, this right here, it's a very nice reduction formula. So for the reduction formula is that the integral right here for the second part, right, it should be similar to the original and the power is just less. That's the point for that. Constant multiples are okay, but nothing else. That's why I didn't want to do integration by parts or whatnot. All right, number 25, it also looks pretty intimidating. Let's try if we can fit in number 25 in here. Don't know. No, no let's, let, let's not do that. Let's, let's just erase the board. Number 25. Integral secant to the nth power x dx. We want to come up with the thing that we have on the handout. Uh, so how can we do it? So, couple of things to try. The first thing is, if we try to write it as sine to the n minus one times, I mean, secant, just take out one of them and then like secant extra. Maybe we can do integration by parts. Differentiate this, but integrate that. Integrate this, we get ln secant x plus tangent x. It's a pretty crazy stuff. And this times that, not so much. Uh, so maybe not integration by parts, so no. I know previously you have done a lot with integration by parts. Now it's tangent though. So we take out two of them. If we have secant n minus 2x and then secant square x, what can we do with this? Guess what? We cannot rewrite this in terms of tangent nicely because it's n minus 2. Uh, you don't know what n is, right? But if we have this and that, integration by parts is much better. We can integrate this part easily and the result is better, and then we can differentiate this part. So for this right here, let's first write it as the integral of secant n minus 2 power and x, and then multiply by secant square x. 
Yeah. So for this kind of question, you just kind of think about a little bit and then integration question by parts on the side. Alright, I will integrate secant square x and then differentiate secant n minus 2 power x. Differentiating this, put the power to the front so we have n minus 2. And then minus 1 to the power so it's secant n minus 3x. And then multiply by the derivative of secant because it's the chain rule. So we have to multiply by secant x tangent x. Alright, so that's that. And earlier we will have to integrate secant square x and that will give us tangent x. So this times that it's the first part of the answer. And uh, we will get just just that. So this is secant n minus 2x tangent x. Good, and then multiply this and that together. It's the it's it will put in the in the integration minus, and then we have n minus two. It's just a constant multiple put at the front, and then we have the integral. This times that is secant n minus two, right? N minus two. So secant n minus two x tangent x tangent x tangent square x. So here we have tangent square x dx. Now this is complicated, huh? But we did end up with from here. We have the first part of the answer. And it looks like this part has less power than the original. But the problem is that we have tangent square x. And that's so nice. But don't worry. Tangent square x is the same as secant square x minus 1, isn't it? Yeah, so we are going to multiply this in and then it's going to be a repeated situation again. So let me write this down one more time. This is similar to the sine version. Integral secant to the nth power x dx equals the first part of the answer is secant to the n minus 2x times tangent x minus I'll take this, this, and multiply by that. So we have minus n minus 2, and then integral. This times that is just secant to the nth power, x. And then close that, done for that. And then negative, negative becomes passed here. And then integral, oh, n Sorry, it's positive, and then we have the n minus 2 integral, and then this times 1, right? So it's just secant n minus 2 power x in the, in the x world. So that's that. This is what we would like, right? Power gas model, but the thing is that this part, we will have to add it to the other side. So we add n minus 2 integral secant to the nth power of x. And then we do the same thing here, plus n minus 2 secant to the nth power x dx. This and that gone. Good. Okay. We have one integral here. 1 plus n minus 2 is n minus 1. So this right here is n minus 1 times this integral secant to the n x right n to the x sorry secant to the nth power of x it's equal to this and that i'm just going to divide the n minus one so ladies and gentlemen look at this we get the integral secant to the nth power x what can i i don't i cannot write n power for some reason ladies and gentlemen integral secant to the nth power one more time <laughs> integral i forgot to say ladies and gentlemen ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen the integral of secant to the nth power much better nth power x dx equals we have this but we have to divide it by n minus one so this right here is one over 
and minus one, and then we have all that secant to the n minus two times x tangent x, and then we have a plus. This is n minus two over n minus one, and then ha ah, that reduction part secant n minus two power x dx. Yeah, and that is why I have on the answer key as well. And for this one, of course, n cannot be equal to 1. n cannot be equal to 1, right? Definitely for sure, n cannot be equal to 1. Earlier, of course, I should also have, should also have mentioned that n cannot be 1 or n cannot be uh, forever, right? You just have to just pay attention. Technically, I would say n should be greater than or equal to 2. Otherwise, the first step wouldn't work. Right? What if n is equal to 2? I mean, greater than or equal to 2, yeah, so n should be greater than or equal to 2, like that. But I'm just going to box this. Just hopefully, sometimes that you see that if you have integral of uh, secant to the fifth power, then you can use this formula to, to reduce. Yeah. The so called reduction formula. Can we put in one half? The answer is not going to be as nice, but maybe the first part makes sense. I don't know. So, yeah, I'm just going to erase this now. Right. So, don't quote me on the conditions on um, Yeah, just I will leave that to you guys. But that's the the work for the reduction formula, at least for the formula part, when the n is legitimate. Okay. Wow, 25 questions. Let me see. So, wow, almost two hours and I had to do this four more times so it will take me eight hours. That's insane. Number 26, integral. Still like a fairly easy one. x squared plus x plus one squared. Aha, we have to multiply this out. This is a trinomial square. How do we do it? The box method, let me show you. Of course, you also have the trinomial formula, but that's not be too crazy. How do we do it? Because it's square, means this times itself, right? I will just put this down, draw a tic-tac-toe box like so. x squared plus x plus 1. x squared plus x plus 1. Go. This right here is this times that, which is x to the fourth, and this is x cubed, and then this is x squared, and then do it again, we get x cubed, x squared, and then plus x. And then x squared, x and then one. Yeah, no, I don't need a plus sign. They're all positive. So we're looking at the integral. Multiply this out, we get first x to the fourth power, and then two of the x to the third power. So two x to the third power, and then three of the x square, and then last the, oh no, I mean next, two x, yeah, two x and then 1, and then we have the dx. So yeah, multiply the out. Don't do u sub. Don't factor out x. Just multiply the out. And we will get 1 over 4, 1 over 5, sorry. We will get 1 over 5, x to the fifth power plus add 1, which is 4 divided by that, which is 1 half, x to the 4, add 1 divided by that, which is going to be just x to the third, add 1, which is going to be just x squared. Next, we have plus x, and then, of course, the plus c. That's what we have. And my answer key is also correct. Very good. Okay, number 27. So these questions are mostly on algebra, the simplification, to get to the place that we can actually integrate. We have 1 over square root of x minus 1. 
divided by x minus 1. Let me write it down better. So integral 1 over square root of x minus 1 over x minus 1. Yeah. And for the next one, I will have the square root somewhere. You will see. So this dx. Let's do the usual business. Multiply the top and bottom by square root of x because usually we don't like to have complex fractions. So we will be looking at that's one. So we have one minus square root of x. I'm not going to multiply at the bottom. I will just keep it as square root of x times x minus one. Why? Because x minus one can actually be factored in as square root of x minus one times square root of x plus one for that. And now you see, this is one minus square root of x. I can reverse this order but put a negative in the front though. And we can then just my, I mean, cancel this and that together. So we are actually just looking at the integral and we have a negative. So let's put a negative right here. On the top is just one. On the bottom, we have square root of x and times the square root of x plus one. Yeah. So how do we deal with this? U sub, let u equal, which one do we do? You can try both, but I'll tell you the easier way is going to be square root of x plus 1. Because you will see du will be the derivative of this, which is 1 over 2 square root of x dx. And we do have the square root of x on the bottom, so they cancel. If you put square root of x earlier without the plus 1, you will still get this for the integral, but this and that will not cancel out right away. So this is the way to go. All right, so we can put a 2 here, so we get the du, but of course we also multiply the 2 on the top. With that being said, we just have to integrate negative. We have the 2, and then this is the u part, and this and that to get is the du, so we just have ln u, and because that is always positive, so I don't need the absolute value, just parentheses, and then square root of x plus 1, and then we are done, plus c. Yeah, just like that. Okay. All right, number 28. Number 28. It's very similar. Integral 1 over x minus 1 over, and uh, I have the square root on the bottom instead. So here we have square root of x minus 1. Yeah, you should try these questions before you look at the solutions, all right? So how would you deal with this? Yeah, number 28. Well, for this right here, again, let's clean things up. So I will multiply the top and bottom by just that little denominator. And then we will see this is going to be the integral. This and that is just 1 minus this and that is x. And again, we are not going to cancel things out. We are not going to multiply things out. I will just have x at the front, square root of x minus 1, and then dx. What do we do? Very similar, right? 1 minus x, I will factor it. I will get... Um, I will I'll just write this. Okay, let's change the order. It's negative and then x minus 1. And then factor it as square root of x minus 1, square root of x plus 1. And uh, cancellation this and that. Okay. We have a negative. Let's put that at the front. And actually, it's okay. Now, this time, we have negative that over x. We will split the fraction. Still have the integral. I will just keep the negative square root of x over x, right? 
<laughs> well, let me write it down everything. So this is negative square root of x over x, yeah? And then negative one over x. Okay, this right here we can integrate real quick, but let's, let's put the fractions. Power, this is the integral negative x to a negative one half power and then minus one over x yeah okay add one to the power we get positive one half and divided by the new power so it's like this so negative two x to one half which is square root of x and the next one is ln so minus ln that's the value of x yeah Cool. Here's a small thing though. Sometimes I don't really pay attention to this, but yeah. When you go from here to here, we put down ln absolute value of x. That's usually the case. However, originally we have this integral. This right here is already square root of x. That tells us in order to make sense of that, x should be greater than zero, all right? So you don't really need the absolute value for this one because you already know from the original x has to be greater than zero so we can actually just put parentheses right here just more detail of that another thing is that if you want to be super picky you should also just find, find out the domain x cannot be equal to one either but just like what i told you we'll focus on the integration techniques and also the approaches rather than the domain thing but once in a while i think it's worth mentioning all the small thing okay that's pretty good and now, for number 29, still very similar to the other questions. Integral of 1 over x minus 1. Yeah, it's the same numerator, but for this one, I'm going to make the square root longer. So we have over square root of x minus 1. Oh my god. But don't worry, let's try. Um, what do we do with this though? Should we still try to do that? Multiply the top and bottom, we get 1 minus x, right? Multiply the top and bottom by x, so we have this over x square root of x minus 1. Unfortunately, we cannot cancel this and that nicely anymore. Uh, yeah. So what did I tell you guys earlier, not long ago? I think the best integration technique and the most fundamental one, when we don't know what to do, what should we do? U sub, very nice. And we have this with the square root. So let's, let's try. Let u be square root of x minus 1 see what happens i will isolate the x first so this means square both sides and then add one on both sides so x equals u square plus one differentiate so dx equals 2u du now put everything to the u world here we have the integral one over x which is u square plus one and then minus one over this thing is just a u this thing is 2u du this thing and that thing cancel distribute the two so let's do everything in your head two times the result of that is inverse tangent so two inverse tangent of u u is that so square root of x minus one next 2 times that, so it's minus 2. Integral of 2 in the u world is 2u. u is that, so 2 square root of x minus 1. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we are done. Told you, u sub. It's one of its the best, I would say. It's not one of the best, it's the best. Especially when you don't know what to do. When do we use integration by parts? When you see one part you can integrate and the other part just differentiate and that's integration by parts right ladies and gentlemen question number 30 to question number 
35 introduce you the so-called fire drop substitution let's take a look at question number 30 we are looking at the integral of cosecant of 2x why not cosecant x huh i want to approach it this way check this out this is the same as 1 over sine of 2x and then I can break it apart as the double integral identity so integral of something over 2 sine x cosine x that's great on top we don't have 1 it's not enough things for us to work with I know we have an integral with sine cosine but still u sub not really, no. Now, let me tell you. Everybody knows sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. But we should also know 1 is the same as sine squared x plus cosine squared x. Now we have more things to work with. This is so good because first we have 1 half. Yeah, 1 half. And then split the fraction. So we have this over that. One of the signs cancel out, so we have sine x over cosine x. So one half, and then we have the integral sine x over cosine x. Next, we add cosine x squared over that cosine cosine cancel. The two, the one half, is already at the front. So we have cosine x over sine x. So good, isn't it? I really don't like to put parentheses in the integration because it looks it looks just so wrong like when you have a skinny integration sign and also a parentheses it doesn't really look nice in opinion. But anyway though, this right here gives us one half. This is the integral of tangent. I will write the S. So this part, right? Is ln absolute value of secant x. Next, this part is cotangent, and the integral for that is ln, absolute value of sine x. And if I can just do u sub, let u equal to secant x, I mean, let u equal to cosine x here, the root of your cosine is negative sine, and just be careful of the negative. That's why you end up with the secant, because cosine x to a negative one power. And this right here, you let u equal sine x and you end up with that but anyway that's that secant x times sine x instead of the logarithm secant x is 1 over cosine times sine x so sine x over cosine x tangent so on all this is 1 half ln absolute value of tangent x like so and then plus c and then we are done yeah Okay, what's the significance for, for, for doing this integral? To see all the details, you can check out my video on the fire drop substitution. But this right here kind of shows you how we can come up with the so-called the tangent half angle substitution, which is fundamentally the fire drop substitution. So this right here, I would like to tell you, Sometimes when you have a rational function in terms of sine cosine, then you can do the following. This is the fire drop substitution. Fire drops substitution. I think I spelled this wrong. It should be W E I. I think one word yeah, I'm sorry. Substitution. This right here tells you first you can do x to be tangent of Traditionally, we use t for the variable when we do fire straps. Fire straps substitution. No, this is so wrong. Fire. I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't write it down, so I, I don't know. Fire drops, something, something like that. Sorry. Anyway, when we have an integral with rational functions in terms of sine cosine, first thing we can take, we can take x to be 
tangent of, again, we use t for the variable, t over 2. And why t over 2? You can see that right here. Mm, we end up with the tangent, and then this is x. Imagine this, that this is 2x, this is x. Imagine if this is just x, then here we will get tangent over 2. A tangent of x over 2, like that. Uh, somewhat like that. So we have this, and the next one is, we have sine x, we can say sine x as 2t over 1 plus t squared. And then we can say cosine x equals 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. And then lastly, dx equals 2t Two t over one plus t square dt. Sorry, I think it's like this. No, no. Wait, x equals t over two. Okay, I'm trying to remember this. All right, so not looking at any handouts or for not. No, 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 what am I talking about? Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, timestamp here. Ladies and gentlemen, fire drop substitution. This is so bad for me, sorry. T equals tangent, T equals tangent of X over two. And uh, let me just double check because I remember this is correct. So if we have this, then yeah, it should be like this, sorry. Let me, I think it's a good idea for me to drink some thing right now. It's been a while, so let me just, yeah. <sighs> All right. So how exactly do we come with this? So let me just try everything again, right? Ladies and gentlemen, this right here kind of gives you an idea of like the following substitution called the fire drop substitution, aka the half angle substitution for tangent. When we have the following, I would just say this is a fire drop substitution. Fire. I spelled this three times and every time is different. I have no idea what is wrong with me. I will just write this down as the half angle ident half half angle substitution. There we go. So how do we make this work? Have a look. First off, we call t to be tangent of x over two. Based on this, we can draw a. Oh, I just don't know why is this x here or t, t, t here. Okay, I'm just going to prove everything because I... Okay. X. Okay, if I have this, then it's x over 2. Then everything will be in terms of t. No. It should be this. x equals tangent of t over 2. Let's try. Based on this, let's just draw, draw a right triangle. 
this is our angle which is t over 2 and then this is the same x over 1 so we can say the opposite is x and then the adjacent is 1 and of course this right here is square root of I want cosine x. X should be okay. 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 I got. I got. I got. Really got. Half angle substitution for tangent. What we do is we let t equal tangent of x over two, and based on this, we can do the following. Ladies and gentlemen, have a look. We can have a right triangle here, and this is our angle, which is x over two, and then the t is the same as t over one, which is the opposite over adjacent and of course we can look at this right here as our hypotenuse which is the square root of this thing square which is one square plus this thing square which is t square based on this can we figure out sine x yeah yeah this is the crazy part because once we have this we can use this triangle to figure out sine x sine x ah no good because this is sine of this is angle is x over 2. So what do we do? Don't worry. We purposely look at this as sine of 2 times x over 2. Then we use the double angle identity. This right here, we can look at this as 2 and then sine of x over 2 times cosine of x over 2. And sine of x over 2 is this angle right here which is this over that, we have the 2 at the front. This thing is this over that, which is t over square root of 1 plus t squared. Cosine is this over that, which is 1 over square root of 1 plus t squared. So based on this, we know sine x will be 2t over this and that is just 1 plus t squared. And you see the confusing part. You start off by saying t is equal to tangent of x over 2. And then what you are going to be using is sine x in terms of t. So that's the confusing part. Anyway, cosine of x. We can also figure this out by doing the same trick. Cosine of 2 times x over 2. And we can use the double angle identity. Let me use this version. Let's use the cosine version. 2 cosine square of x over 2 minus 1 this right here it's the same as saying 2 times cosine cosine x over 2 is this over that so it's 1 over square root of 1 plus t square and then we square that and then minus 1 okay so this right here becomes you can see it's just 2 over that 1 plus t squared and then minus 1 is the same as minus 1 plus t squared over 1 plus t squared. So finally, we can see that 2 ah, two minus 1 is 1. So sine of x, I mean, cosine of x equals 1 minus t square over 1 plus t square all right so that's what we have and of course when we're doing integrals we also need the dx and for the dx i'm just going to go back here and then we do the following then we can figure out what dx should be t equals tangent of x over 2 apply the inverse tangent on both sides and then multiply 2 on both sides x equals 2 times the inverse tangent of t to differentiate both sides dx will be the derivative of that which is yeah what am i talking about just 2 over 1 plus t squared dt that's it let me just double check All right, so yes, here is the detail, at least the formula-wise. 
and how we are going to use these things to help us out with the other integrals. So 2 over 1 plus t squared dt. Okay? You want to try this with that? Yeah, you can. And you end up with the tangent. Let me just do it real quick. So number 30. All right? Check this out. I will pick that from this. All right? So I'll pick that from here. If we have 1 over 2 sine x, cosine x, and then we have the dx, yeah? Okay. All right, so apply all this. Integral 1 over 2 is 2. Sine x is this, which is 2t over 1 plus t squared. Cosine is that, which is 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. Dx is that, which is 2 over 1 plus t squared dt. Cancellations. This and that cancel. And one of these cancel with one of that. Yeah, so we can do a substitution, but I'm here already, so ah, see the struggle again. Okay, better one, a better one. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Two x no good. This no good. This better. Integral. Cosecant two x dx, which is the same as integral of one over sine of two x dx. Take a good sub. Let u equal two x. Du equal two dx. So we need a one half. This right here is equal to one half integral one over sine x, sorry, sine u, and then du. This way, we don't need to use the double angle identity. So much better. All right, then right here, just look at u as the x. So we are going to get 1 half integral 1 over sine u. Sine u, it's the t right here, right? So it's 2t over 1 plus t squared. du is the dx, which is that, which is 2 over 1 plus t squared dt. Much, much better. First, cancel this and that. Then, cancel this and that. Why are we integrating? 1 half at the front. We are just integrating 1 over t in the t world. ln absolute value of t. And what's t? Oh, sorry, let me just do everything. I will end absolute value t is that, right? Well, that doesn't do everything. Ln absolute value of t, yeah? And then t is this thing, but we are talking about u, right? So this right here is 1 half ln. We go back to the u world first. So it's absolute value of tangent of u over 2. Because right? earlier we used the u, right? just be really careful this u right here. But what's u? In our situation, u is a 2x. So we put a 2x here, 2 and 2 cancel, 1 half ln absolute value of tangent x plus c. Same thing. This works. And hopefully that gives you an idea of why tangent. right? How did the person come with this? Yeah, purely genius, I guess. Yeah. So that's that. And because it's question number 30, let's take a look. Okay. Ah, I need to use the formula, but I'm going to write it down again. So that's what's in question number 30. So question number 31 to question number 35, we'll be using the virus drop substitution or also called it as the half angle I half angle substitution. Tangent half angle substitution. Okay. Number 31. 
Let's integrate secant x. And you might be wondering, this is so standard. We integrated this before already. Yes, I will tell you the standard result for this right here is ln absolute value of secant x plus tangent x plus c. Done. But here we'll be using the first drop substitution. Look at this. It's the integral 1 over on the bottom here, let's write it as cosine x. Then, what we are going to do is, cosine x is what we did earlier, right? We have, what? 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. This is the cosine x from what we did earlier. dx is 2 over 1 plus t squared dt. Now, we see that this and that cancel pretty nicely, and then we can do partial fraction to integrate this. 1 minus t squared is just 1 minus t times 1 plus t. So we look at something over 1 minus t plus something else, 1 plus t. Cover this, t has to be 1. 2 over 1 plus 1 is just 1. Cover this, t has to be negative 1. Put it here, 2 over 1 minus negative 1 is again 1. Now integrate this, integrate that. We get, again here we have the negative, so be careful. Negative ln absolute value of 1 minus t, but t is what? t is tangent of x over 2. All right, and then plus the other one is ln absolute value 1 plus tangent x over 2. Then we are done. It's a very good exercise to show this and that, at least they are off by a constant. I'm going to leave that to you guys. You just have to use the double angle, sorry, the half angle identity for tangent or the double angle identity, depending on how, um, which way you approach it. So I will leave that to you. But this is the result that we can get by using the virus drop substitution. And if you want to see the correct spelling for virus drop substitution, it will be in the description somewhere. Number 32. Integral 1 over 2 plus cosine x. Check this out. Earlier we did an integral 1 over 1 plus sine of 2x. We can just multiply the top and bottom by its conjugate because we have the identity. 1 minus sine squared is equal to cosine squared. But here, when we have a 2, it's not going to work. We cannot just multiply the top and bottom by 2 minus cosine squared x. It's not going to work. First drop substitution. Integral 1 over 2 plus cosine is 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. dx is 2 over 1 plus t squared dt. Right? So it has the parentheses. Right? Distribute, we get. I'll keep the two at the, on the top. Uh, yeah. No, at the front. Put the two to the front. Integral one over this times that we get. Let's distribute so we get. Let let put it on this two times one plus t square. This and that cancel, so we have plus one minus t square dt. Uh, this right here. 2 integral 1 over combined terms 2 plus 1 we get 3 2 t to the second power minus t to the second power is plus t to the second power dt now we will use a very nice identity for the integral the well, formula for integral that is the integral of 1 over a square plus let's use x x squared dx. This right here gives us 1 over a times the inverse tangent of x over a plus c. So the a here is square root of 3. So I can finish everything right now. 2 is 2 over square root of 3. Firstly, we get the inverse tangent 
and then we have t over square root of 3, right? So I will write this down. Let me just put on a 1 over square root of 3 right here, then I guess. And then technically I have the t, yeah? But t is what? t is t is, like what we did earlier, t is tangent of x over 2. <laughs> yeah, 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 this is indeed the answer. Cool, huh? It looks so, so, so different. Yeah. In fact, if you go back to question number nine if you go back to question number nine you can actually use the same thing to integrate one over parentheses sine x plus cosine x and then to the second power but i will leave that to you guys this is question number 32. okay i think i spent way too much time coming up with these questions, so these questions, yeah, they are not like something that I can be doing within like six, seven hours. I, I give up. It's not six, seven hours. Hopefully by, hopefully eight hours. I, I don't know. Let me, I will just focus. Number 33. We are looking at integral one over 2 sin x plus sin of 2x dx. Fire strap substitution is the key. Alright, so for this right here, um, because this and that, the, the angles are different, so we just really have to break this apart, unlike the cosecant 2x question. So, break this apart, we get integral 1 over 2 sin x plus 2 sine x cosine x dx so that's what we have uh, maybe we can even factor out the uh, 2 and also the sine so yeah maybe let's do that so this right here we have the 1 half at the front integral 1 over here is the sine x and then here we have 1 plus cosine x dx now here we go I'll just write down everything for you guys right here. 1 half integral 1 over sine x is what? 2t over 1 plus t squared times 1 is 1. Cosine is 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. dx is 2 over 1 plus t squared. And then we have the dt. Cancellation time. Cancel these two statue. Cancel this and that together. And now let's just do this in our head. One half right here. I'm, I'm going to multiply this on the top and on the bottom. So on the top we get 1 plus t squared over. This is pretty much 1 plus t squared. Combine with that. t squared minus t squared cancel. 1 plus 1, we get 2. So we have this. So we have dt. It's correct. Oh, sorry. There's another t, so it's, it was not correct, sorry. <laughs> but this right here gives us 2. Yeah. t. Yeah. So, altogether, we are looking at 1 over 4 and then integral and then we can look at this as 1 over t plus t in the t world and let's just integrate it 1 over 4 ln t but t is what? t is tangent x over 2 and then 1 over 4 this is t squared over 2 right so sorry sorry 1 over 4 times that. But this is going to be t squared over 2. Over 2 and then the 4. So it's 1 over 8. And then t squared, t is tangent 
of x over 2, but we have the square here. Yep, so that's it, plus c. Whew. Check my answer key. And it's correct. Number 34. Crazy one. Integral 1 over 1 plus sin x plus cos x dx. Fire strap substitution. Integral 1 over 1 plus sin is 2t over 1 plus t squared. Cosine is 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. dx is 2 over 1 plus t squared. And we have the dt. It has the parentheses here. Okay, let's see. 2 all the way at the front. Distribute. So we have this is 1 plus t squared. This and that cancel, so we have plus 2t. This and that cancel, so plus 1 minus t squared dt. This can be cancelled, yeah? This and that cancel. Yes? And then this is 2 plus 2t, and then factor of 2. So it's 1 plus t. But guess what? This 2 and that 2 cancel. So we're just integrating 1 over 1 plus t. ln of absolute value of 1 plus t. t is a regular tangent of x over 2 then. And then we're done. Just like that. <laughs> Look. Cool. that. Number 35, we are looking at the integral of sine square x over 1 plus cosine x square dx. Before we just put everything like the t and all that stuff in here and do some tricks, identities. For example, the top right here, this right here is the same as 1 minus cosine square, and we can factor that as 1 minus cosine x times 1 plus cosine x over this right here is 1 plus cosine x squared and with that said we can cancel this and that yeah uh, much better I will say so now apply the tangent half angle identity uh, substitution this is the integral 1 is 1 minus cosine is 1 minus t square over 1 plus t square over 1 plus cosine is 1 minus t square over 1 plus t square and dx is 2 over 1 plus t square dt crazy stuff don't worry though let's see Okay, so how should I simplify this right here in a nice way? Mm. Okay, I'm going to distribute this on the bottom and then I'm going to just... Let, let's see. On the top, get the common denominator so we get same thing, right? 1 plus t squared. Alright, let's show you guys all the work. I'll just make this clear for everybody. We get... 1 plus t squared over 1 plus t squared minus uh, I, I really want to if I show all the work it's going to take too long let's see 1 plus t squared 1 minus 1 is 0 t squared minus negative t squared is 2t squared 
over 1 plus t squared. That should be fair. Then we have over on the bottom here, 1 plus t squared, 1 plus 1 is 2. t squared minus t squared is 0, and then we have the 1 plus t squared. And then here we have that 2 over 1 plus t squared dt. Now cancel stuff up. This and that cancel, this and that cancel, so just have to integrate that. I think that's fair to integrate. Here we have, put a 2 to the front, integrate. t squared over 1 plus t squared. Of course, right here, notice that we have the degree on the top and the degree on the bottom are the same, so we can do long division, but better yet, let's just add 1 minus 1. So this first part is just 1, so we just have to integrate 1. Next, we just have to subtract 1 over 1 plus t squared. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I'll put on the answer here. 2 is 2, 2 times 1. Integrate 1 in the t world is t. t is tangent of x over 2. Next, this minus that is minus 2. Inverse tangent of t, but t is tangent of x over 2. But notice there's one thing pretty funny. Inverse tangent and regular tangent cancel. And then this 2 and this 2 cancel. So in fact, the answer is just 2 tangent x over 2 minus x and then plus c. Yeah. So this is what we will get if you use fire drop substitution. In fact, you didn't need to use fire drop substitution. You can do the conjugate for that, I think. But I will leave that to you. OK. No, I no. Just try it. Just try it. Okay, no more virus drop substitutions. Oh, hey, I have some more space. Number thirty-six. More square roots questions. Here we have the integral x over one plus square root of one minus x dx. Use up. That's too hard for this one. Let's just go ahead and multiply the top and bottom by conjugate. I know, I violated what I said earlier, right? But in this case, we don't know what to do. We can use the conjugate, so we might not need to use use up. I do this in our head, all right? x on the top, 1 minus square root of 1 minus x, same thing. 1 times 1 is just 1, yeah? And then, you just, when we multiply the conjugates, it's just one, the first thing squared, which is one. Minus this thing squared. So one minus one is zero. Negative, negative x is just over x. So multiply this out, we have over x dx. What happened? This x and that x cancel. Okay. Integrating x, integrating one, we get x. Good. Integrating this right here. Do a u sub, let u equal the inside. And uh, du is negative dx. But we have a negative right here already, so it's perfect. So it's going to be a plus u to the 1 half power. Integrate that, it's u to the 3 half and divided by the new power. So we have 2 thirds u, which is 1 minus x to the 3 over 2. Yeah, and then we're done. You can differentiate this real quick to we'll get that. So that is number 36. All right, so that's 36. For 37, unfortunately, I need more space for this. Integral 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared dx. Wait, you will be thinking that this is too easy. Yes, it's too easy. So the question I have for number 37 is actually we have a 1 plus at the front. Wow. 
So in this case, let's think about what we can possibly do. If you multiply the top and bottom by the count you get, let me tell you, the denominator, mm, it's not going to be worked out so nicely. And uh, the worst part is we still have the square root of 1 minus x squared. It's just not. So I will recommend us to just take a trick up and see what happens. Not even use up. You can try it and let me know how it goes. But I will do a trick up. Let u equal sine theta du. No, sorry. Take x to be sine theta dx equals cosine theta d theta. And then we can see that this right here becomes the integral 1 over 1 plus square root of 1 minus sine square theta and then we have cosine theta d theta pretty good so this right here is actually just cosine theta but unfortunately this and that does not cancel so we are looking at the integral of cosine theta over 1 plus cosine theta d theta and you might be like no do we really have to do the virus drop substitution again? No. What we can do is just do the count you get if you would like. And I think that's pretty fair. Mm, what else can we possibly do? Virus drop substitution, definitely give it a try. And yeah, I will do the count you get and see how it goes. Yeah. So. I will look at this and multiply by 1 minus cosine theta and then 1 minus cosine theta and then we have the d theta here. So on the bottom becomes 1. On the bottom it becomes 1 minus cosine square which is just sine square theta. Yeah, on the bottom sine square theta. And I'm, I'm just going to write yes, integral cosine theta on the top over sine square theta. I will close that. Next, cosine times cosine is cosine square over, again, the same denominator, which is sine square theta. So that's what I have. For this right here, we can do a u-sub, but let's do our u-sub in your head. u equal to uh, sine theta. So in this case, we get negative 1 over u, which is sine theta. And then guess what? We are done. For this right here, how do we do it? You can do a quick identity. This is 1 minus sine squared theta. 1 min 1 over... 1 over sine square is cosecant square and the integral of cosecant square is cotangent but it's negative so this right here will be a positive cotangent I mean cotangent x yeah and then this over that is just 1 negative negative is positive so we just have sorry 1 over sine square theta is cosecant square theta and the integral of cosecant square theta is negative cotangent theta so negative negative being positive cotangent theta negative negative is positive this and that is just 1 integrating 1 in the theta world is theta so that's what we have and uh, <laughs> let's see just put everything back negative 1 over sine theta is x what's cotangent theta though? Let's draw a triangle real quick. Sine theta equals x over 1, which we know a triangle. x over 1. Hypotenuse is right here, and this is adjacent. It is square root of hypotenuse square minus the other side square. So cotangent is this over that. So we have a plus square root of 1 minus x squared over x. And lastly, theta is just the inverse sine. So this right here plus inverse sine of x. And then we are done. Yes. 
Ooh. Okay, last question number 37. Number 38, we have the integral 3x minus 2 times x plus 2 over, on the bottom we have 3 times x minus 4. x plus 2. Right. Very common mistake, just the algebra mistake, and that's why I like this question so much. A lot of calculus students will just cancel the parentheses x plus 2, x plus 2, but that's not correct. Because on the time you see, we still have things going on. What your operation says we have to combine like terms first. We can only cancel factors, so without not multiplying yet, so cannot, do not cancel this and that. Alright, so let's see. Distribute, distribute, and combine like terms, yeah? So we have integral. 3x minus 2x is just x. Minus 2 times that is minus 4. So on the top, it's actually just x minus 4. Over 3 times x minus 4, x plus 2. Now we can cancel this and that. It's just about the algebra. Integral, 1 third, ln, absolute value, x plus 2. Okay, that's the integral for this. And then we are done. Number thirty-nine. Here I gave you guys, I give you guys integral sine x plus cosine x. First drop substitution again. No, don't worry. It's not possible anyway because we're divided by e to the x. Oh, what do we do it? Check this out. Bring this up and use negative exponent. So we have the integral e to the negative x times. Here we have sine x plus cosine x dx. Okay, so this is pretty good, but look at this right here and that. They are the derivative of each other, almost like the derivative of each other, right? Because if you have f is the function of, let's say sine is the original function, then this right here is indeed the derivative of that. That's good. In fact, I will tell you if the question is integral of e to the x times sine x plus cosine x. When we have f plus f prime and then this is just e to the x, then the answer is just e to the x times f, which is sine x. You can try it. Differentiate to double check. e to the x times the original plus the derivative of this times the derivative down so that. But unfortunately, this is not e to the x, but rather e to the negative x. So we have to be super careful. Still works, don't worry. Still works, don't worry. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Okay. By the way, the formula that I use is integral of e to the x times f of x plus f prime of x. This right here is just e to the x times f of x. It's not really like a formula, it's just a result of the integration by parts, or you can just see that that's like a nice observation. But when we have e to a negative x, check this out. I will call this to be our function and see what happens. And let's say this is f prime. Almost, huh? Almost. Oh, man. Is that true though? I don't know. Not really, this is not true. It's, it's, it's a minus, it's a minus, right? Because the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. So this right here is negative f prime. So does that help? Is the answer for this right here e to the negative x times the f, which is cosine x? Is this the answer? Let's check. D 
differentiate this, I'll keep the first function times the derivative of the second plus the second function, which is cosine x times the derivative of the first. And the derivative of the first is e to the negative x times the derivative of negative x, which is the negative 1. Hi. It's almost like that, but you see, if I factor out a negative, right, this negative, and also this negative, I can factor the out, and then e to the negative x. And, uh, okay, I get sine x, that's good. And then plus cosine x, that's really good. But originally, this is positive. Don't worry, all we need is just negative right here, and then we are done. So I would recommend you guys to do this whenever if you are just in a hurry of figuring out the answer for the integral of like e to the x times sine cosine x. Maybe these kind of things will work out very nicely. And of course, if you have like constant multiples, right, e to the 3x times sine of 5x and all that, then we'll just have to take our usual route of doing the integration by parts. Ladies and gentlemen, number 40, integral inverse tangent of square root of x. Let's just integrate this right away with integration by parts. I'm just going to differentiate and integrate. Differentiate this instead, right? Instead of looking at this as integration, let's see what happens. And integrate 1. Differentiating this right here, we get 1 over, and we get a 1 plus square root of x, and then we square that. And don't forget the chain rule, multiply by the derivative of that, which is 1 over 2 square root of x. And then integrate this, we get x. So, first part of the answer, we get x times inverse tangent of square root of x. Then, next. We multiply these two things together and still result the integration. Still put that in the integration. Minus, we have the one half, so let's put on minus one half. Check this out. This times that is just square root of x. So we have square root of x on the top over this and that cancel, so one plus x and then dx. So that's what we have. Now the question is how do we integrate this? Well, oh, we'll just do a u stop real quick. So perhaps I will do the u sub right here. Let u equal square root of x. And we can see x is u square, dx is 2u du. All right, so this integral wise, we get the integral on the top is u over 1 plus x is u squared, and then we get 2u du. Yeah? So the 2 can be coming to the front, and then we have u squared. So this right here, it's the same as integral u squared over 1 plus u squared in the u world. And then do the usual business, we add 1 minus 1. I think that should be enough work for us to see. Ladies and gentlemen, we get x times inverse tangent of square root of x. This 2 and that 2 cancel. Minus, all right, and then we get this over that is 1. Integrating 1 in the u world, we get u. u is square root of x. Then we have a minus, minus here. But another minus here, so it becomes a plus. 1 over u squared is going to give us inter is going to give us inverse tangent of u. And u is square root of x. So that's that. Done. Yeah, fitting three integrals in one question. That always makes me happy. <sighs> three hours. All right. For the next 20 questions, 
we will be dealing with the special integrals we will have to use the integrals that I have on the copper page right here all right so let's see how it goes Number 41, integral 1 over, yes, I am not kidding you. We are looking at the one, we are looking at the integral 1 over inverse cosine x. Alright, aka the r cosine on the bottom, right? So, yeah, so how do we deal with this? Let's do u sub first and see what happens. I'll take a u equal inverse cosine of x. Differentiate both sides. du will be the derivative inverse cosine is negative 1 over square root of 1 minus cosine negative 1 over 1 minus x squared dx but you'll see this right here is not really going to give us anywhere it's going to be more complicated huh okay let's see dx equals negative square root of 1 minus x squared du and we put it there we get integral 1 over u and then dx is negative square root of 1 minus x squared du. Wow, how, how, how do we deal with this? Can we continue or should we stop? What do you think? Let's try it. We can actually continue. Check this out. It looks crazy, but not so bad. As always, x cannot be inside of the u, and by the way, this is a multiplication, so it's more like this, right? So it's multiplying, so it's like that. But we have to get expression for this guy. u equals inverse cosine of x. This means x equals regular cosine of u. So we can put it here. So ladies and gentlemen, this right here becomes negative integral. Let's put a square root on the top, 1 minus x is cosine of u and then we have that square so it's like this and then divided by u du 1 minus cosine square is sine square in the square root they cancel so we just have sine so ladies and gentlemen this right here is negative integral of sine u over u du but what is this integral though we have never done it before right it's a special integral this is called the sine integral. So the answer is just going to be this negative, and then sine integral just s i. And then of course the input is the u. U is the inverse cosine. So we just write that down. Yeah, it's like this. And I base my answers on Wolfram alpha. And again, you guys will have to take a look at this right here. So this integral that I use is right here, the sine. So it's, a, it's like pretty much 6, right? S-I-X. So take a look. So get ready for the fun ones. Number 41, special integral. Okay, number 42. Hey, we did this like that, huh? I always wonder if we have a really cool identity, like inverse tangent. But no, this is not identity anyway. Number 42, integral. Let's have an inverse sine x on the top over inverse cosine x on the bottom. In fact, there's no identity. This is not inverse tangent identity. No, don't do that. Right, inverse sine x over that. So what do we do? 
use up. Yeah, you can try it. Uh, I will use identity though. Here, have a look. I would like to tell you guys inverse sine of x plus inverse cosine of x, they are complementary angles, meaning that they add up to be 90 degrees. And calculus, we are all adults now, so it's pi over 2. So this right here is the same as saying integral. I want this, so this is the same as pi over 2 minus inverse cosine of x. Yes. So that's the key. If you do it this way, then you can split the fraction and you will be done. Okay. Pi over 2 and then inverse cosine x on the bottom. So it's just that. So it's negative. And then we have the pi over 2. And then that. So the first part. Si and then inverse cosine of x. All right, and the other part is just the integral of minus. Why? Oh yeah, because th this negative is for that. And then minus, and then this over that is just one, integral of one, just x. So that's it, <laughs> plus c, yay. Cool, huh? All right, so that's that. Again, uh, yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Number 43 is slightly more different. So if you haven't done this before, I highly recommend you guys to pause the video and try these questions first before you look at the solutions. Because like for example, number 43, it's not possible with regular functions. Integral of one over square root of one minus x to the fourth power. If it's a uh, one minus x squared, then in the square root, it's easy. It's just inverse sign, but for this right here, not so easy anymore. So let's see what we can possibly do. 1 minus x to the fourth power, we can factor it. And this right here, we can look at this as integral of 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared times square root of 1 plus x squared, assuming they are on the common domain, right? Good. But then, what do we do next though? I want to introduce you guys to this one right here. This is called the elliptic integral of first kind or the second kind. So it's this one right here. So I will let you write that down for you guys. This right here, I will tell you we are going to use. So perhaps I should tell you guys the hint to make it slightly more fair. If we have the integral 1 over square root of 1 minus m times sine square of x dx. This right here. By the way, if you don't, if the m is equal to 1, you should be able to figure that out easily. But if m is not equal to 1, then it's bizarre. This right here, I will tell you, it's the elliptic integral of first kind. So just put an f and then it's the input x here. And then vertical bar such that I just give the parameter m here. So it's like this. So this is what we are going to be using for this integral. But how do we do it all? In order for us to use that, we must have sine, yeah? We don't have sine, yes. So what do we do? Let's put two sine. So look at this. I will take a substitution that x equal sine theta. Okay. And then dx will be cosine theta d theta and see what happens. Ladies and gentlemen, integral of 1 over square root of 1 minus sine square theta times integral of 1 plus sine square theta. dx is cosine theta d theta. In fact, we get to cancel this and that out. Because that's indeed, that's indeed what? 
cosine square in the square root, which is cosine theta. So they are the same. They cancel. So now we just have to integrate this. Integral 1 over, we have the square root that match with that. We have the 1 that match. But the, the thing is that we want to have negative m. This is plus. So what do we do? It's just minus 1, right? So it's minus negative, sorry, minus negative 1, like this. Let me write it down like this. Minus negative 1. And we have sine square theta in the theta world. So, based on what I told you guys here, this right here is the elliptic integral of first kind. And first you put on input, so we are still in the theta world. Therefore, we put on theta such that, this is not necessarily such, I don't know how to say this, but vertical bar, and then you give the parameter value m, right? Here is negative 1. Not plus e yet, because we go back to the x world, uh, theta is inverse sine x. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is f, and then we have inverse sine of x, and then negative 1, and then we have that plus c. Wow! <laughs> yeah, crazy stuff, huh? isn't it? Okay. All right, earlier it was x to a fourth power, but I'm going to replace x to a fourth power with L on x. Number 44. Integral 1 over square root of 1 minus L on x dx. Yeah, I replaced the x to a fourth power with L on x. Uh, so for this one, hmm. I'll also give you guys a hint. The hint is, so I'll just put on a little note, is the integral you are going to end up with e to the x squared dx. I told you guys uh, this is not possible with our usual function, but it's possible if we use a um, special function. And the special function for this, sorry, we are on the negative version, so e to the negative x squared, yeah. This is called the error function, e r f of x. But you can see my other video for detailed explanation, but uh, just real quick, we want to multiply by some constant so that uh, the whole area under the curve from negative infinity to positive infinity is one, or from zero to infinity is equal to one. We want to multiply by some constant, that's all I want to tell you. This area is square root of pi over 2, so I need to multiply by 2 over square root of pi, just to kind of balance it. Yeah, plus c. Alright, and uh, we can... No, I remembered it wrong. Hold on, let me see. Oh, I forgot. Oh yeah, ERF is, oh yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. We want the ERF to have like one. So technically right here, we want to multiply by square root of pi over two, and this is ERF of x plus c, right? So that's the first one I have right here. And for the second one, we have the imaginary version, e to the x squared, dx and this is square root of pi over 2 imaginary function so imagine this is called the imaginary error function so we have an i right here all right and then x plus c so yeah 
Uh, which one do we use? I technically don't know yet. So I put on both. Let's see. Let's do a U sub first and see what happens. Put U to be 1 minus LNX. And um, let's isolate the X. So this is, put this here. So we have LNX, that will be 1 minus U. And then X is equal to E to the 1 minus U. This means du will be no. Whenever we have the square root, let's try it with the square root as well. So let me try again. Let's do u to be square root of one minus l n x. Okay, to get l n x, square this and then put a one. I square both sides, so it will be 1 minus u squared, yeah? Square both sides, and then put that here, put that here, so we have that, and then x is equal to e to the 1 minus u squared. du, so dx will be this thing, e to the 1 minus u squared, times the derivative of that because of the chain rule, so two, negative 2u, two and then du. Let's see what happens. All right, so this right here, we have the integral one over, I want to fix my hair. All right, this thing is u, that's very nice, the whole thing is u. dx is all that, I will put down negative two u first, and then we have e to the one minus u squared, the u, yeah? Now we see, this u and that u cancel, that's good. We have negative 2. We can put that all the way at the front. And then e to the 1 minus u squared, we can do the following. It's just going to be e to the first times e to the negative u squared, the u. But this e can be to the front as well. So this is just negative 2 e integral e to the negative u squared. And thanks to one of these guys, which is this version, we know that this is negative 2e. This is square root of pi over 2, the error function of u. And u is that thing, which is square root of 1 minus lnx. Right? u is that thing. And of course, if you would like, you can cancel out the 2. And that's pretty good. And then. Yeah, no, that's it. We can cancel the two. So cancel, cancel. And finally, I'll just write, I'll just write this down. I do have enough space to do the next question. I'll write this down. Negative e square root of pi and then e r f of square root of one minus l n x. And then plus C. <laughs> yeah, like that. So if you use Wolfgang Alpha, this is the answer that you will get Wolfgang Alpha as well. So I think for the next ones, because you guys have the cover sheet, I'm not going to write down the integrals that you need to use. I will just kind of take the substitution or integration by parts or what, however we need to and we'll see once we end up with like a strange integral like what a special function that we can possibly use all right next one number 45 integral ln x over x plus 1. How do we do this? Substitution? Maybe. Mm, think about it. Special function for sure, huh? Yeah. If we let u equal ln x, then 
x will be e to the u plus 1 on the bottom. And then we'll have another e to the u, maybe not. Let's try and take question by parts. Because I noticed we can differentiate L and X and then integrate 1 over X plus 1. This is doable, 1 over X. This right here is also doable. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Because originally you have L and X already, so that means X should be greater than 1. I mean, X should be greater than 0. So that means this right here, we don't need the absolute value. Right? We don't need the absolute value. So sometimes I'll just supply that. Hmm. Anyway, doesn't really matter. This times that, we get the first part of the answer. L and X times L and of X plus 1. That's very good. Next, multiply these two together. This right here gives us negative integral ln 1 plus x. Let me write it down like this. You will see why. Over x like so. To do this, in fact, we use a special function. That's called the logarithmic integral polylogarithm. This is called the polylogarithms. This is called li. And uh, I will write this down for you guys. The one that we need to use I'll just put on this right here. Note. If today we have the integral of ln of 1 minus x over x dx, this right here gives us negative li2 of x plus c. And now they look very similar. Right? They look very similar. So how do we make this so that we can actually make it work? Be really careful, because you have the x here and x here, so be super careful with that. Right here, what we have to do is let u equal negative x. And you see dx will be, du will be negative x. So du will be negative dx. So if you look at just this part, we have negative integral ln parentheses 1 plus x is the same as negative u over, if you want to look at this x, put a, u, put a negative to the other side, so it's negative u. A lot, a lot of negative, so be really careful. dx is, put a negative here, so we have negative du. Look at that. Now, let's cancel this one out, this one. Yes, no problem. and. If you look at this part, that's, that, that's, that's this part. This part is negative li2 of u. But don't forget we still have this negative at the front. <laughs> okay, so negative times negative is positive. So that the final answer is positive. So ln x times ln x plus 1. And that will give us positive. And then we actually have li2. But u is negative x. So right here we have negative x plus c. And let me double check my answer key. That is correct. So be super careful. This is perhaps the most, this is perhaps the function, the special function that you have to be careful the most because it just have so many negative signs. Just like that. Yeah, negative signs once you have to do the substitution, so be really careful. Okay. Integral. Next one, sine of x squared over x squared. You might be wondering, sine x over x is just si, right? The sine integral of x. But when we have squares, what do we do? Mm, I don't know. Perhaps let's try 
to do Let's try this. Train the equation by parts. Because if we do u sub, this will be u and then no sine u, right? If u is x squared, then u and then if we say u is equal to x squared, right? That's that's like this, and then dx will be stuff just x is square root of u, man. It's it's, it's it's you have a square root that's too crazy. So let's break here apart with integration by parts. Right, D and I. So this right here again, you just have to see which part you want to integrate, which part you want to differentiate. I want to integrate one over x squared. Yeah, and I will just differentiate the top. So differentiate this. Let's see. Differentiating this, we get two x. Right, that's the. I still want to show you guys all the nice work. <sighs> this right here is the chain rule and then the derivative of sine cosine and then the input states. Integrating this, we get negative 1 over x. This is nice. Firstly, this times that is the first part of the answer. We get negative sine of x squared over x. First part of the answer multiplied by these two things together x and x cancel, we have a minus 2, so we have a minus 2. Look at the integral, we just have the cosine of x squared, and this is a first Niels integral. So I okay, can actually just write down the answer for you guys, this right here is negative sine of x squared over x, and then we have a minus 2. But this right here is not simply c of x, again because of the constants, and I'm using the the things I found on Wikipedia. This is their definition. So it's this one right here. Right, it's that one right here. It's crazy because they just want to scale the constant and all that. But I will tell you, this right here is equal to square root of pi over 2 times c. This is not constant c. This is the first Niels integral uh, when we have the c, right? Cosine version. And then the inside is square root of 2 over pi and then x, like that. And then, of course, we have the plus c after this for the constant of integration. So, yeah, it's like that. But I am not done yet because we can cancel this and that. This is like square root of 2 times square root of 2, so one of them cancel. So, finally, I'll write this down as negative sine of x squared over x together minus square root of 2 pi and then c as the the crazy function the crazy special function so we have the c and then square root of 2 over pi x and then plus the constant c uh, yeah this is the function yeah okay that's that all right, number 47. All right, this one is study nicer. Integral sine of one plus e to the x dx. Let me show you how we can do it. Break it apart by using the angle addition formula. So it's the sine of the first one in radians and then cosine of the second. And then plus cosine of the first times sine of the second. All right, I'm going to just show you guys how to deal with this and then the other one is similar. This is just a constant, right? So it doesn't matter. So. Let's see how we can integrate. Let's just make a note. This right here is it's, it's similar, so you see. Integral of 
cosine of e to the x. We do a u sub real quick. Put u equal to e to the x. And then we see du is equal to e to the x dx. dx equal du over e to the x, which is e du over, this is the same as u. So this right here becomes integral cosine of u and dx is du over u. And when you look at the integral of cosine of u over u du, this right here is the cosine integral, so it's ci of u plus c. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, this right here is just a constant multiple, keep it. So we have sine of one. This right here is going to be cosine integral of the input, the u, which is e to the x. Yeah. And then this right here, same approach, and you get the sine integral. So this right here is plus cosine of one. And then we have si of e to the x. Haha. <laughs> and then we are done, plus c. Yo, look at that. All right, number 47. Right, number 48. We have sine x times ln x. Oh man. How do we even do this right here? Let me see. Let's try integration by parts because Ah, uh, one part we can integrate and then differentiate the other, right? So let's try. So d and also the i plus minus u substitution, maybe not. Which one should we integrate though? Integrating ln, we have to use integration by parts. So let's try differentiate ln x and integrate sin x. Have a look, differentiating now next we get this and integrating this we get negative cosine x. Check this out. This times that it's the first part of the answer. Negative and then I put cosine first. Ln x. Yeah. And then multiply this and that together. And it's going to be a plus integral. And then we have cosine x over x. Ah, very nice. We know the answer is negative cosine x ln x plus, and we have cosine integral of x, and then plus c, and then we are done. Yay. Whew. Let's try number 49. Integral 1 over ln x. This right here is a special integral already, but let's do a harder one. This thing square. Yeah. So, hmm. Okay. We can try to do a use up or we can just go straight to integration by parts. Maybe, I don't know. Why did I say integration by parts? I, I don't even know it either.
Let's try U sub. Yeah, let's try U sub. Put U to be ln x. x equals e to the U. dx equals e to the U du. I actually gave you guys two answers um, in the answer key, um, but yeah, you'll see. I will, I will give you guys both answers later on, on the board. So this right here, if we do that, we can integral 1 over u square dx is e to the u du. Does it really help? Does this really help? Does this really help? Does this really help? It, it must work too, but I just don't know how to continue. <laughs> oh, I know how to continue. Sorry. All right. Now we do you uh, integration by parts. How though? I will put it down right here. D and also the I. Remember, we always want to pick one part to be differentiated and the upper part to be integrated, right? I'm going to integrate not just e to the u, but e to the u over u. And I'm going to differentiate 1 over u. Why? When I do that, I get negative 1 over u squared. When I do this, I get e i exponential integral of u. Okay, that's the first part of the answer, sure. But this time that I have no idea how to continue integrating that. <sighs> what if I just differentiate and integrate at the front, I mean in the beginning. If I differentiate... Oh, I differentiate... Okay, let's try because this, I think I'm stuck. If I multiply this and that, a special function over u squared, I think that's much harder than it has to be. So let's see. All right, so I'll just look at that as how it is. Differentiate, integrate. If I integrate one and then differentiate one over this, it's the same as ln x to the negative 2. Then that means we have negative 2 ln x to the negative 3 over x. And then integrate that, we get x. This is the first part of the answer. This times that, it's a worse integral than the original. So this is not how I want it. So let's try another one. Let's split it. How about if I integrate 1 over ln x and then I differentiate 1 over ln x, which is the same as ln x to a negative 1. So this is still the same as that. Integrating this, guess what? Is the log integral, so it's just li, with a lower le letter l. The capital L is for the polylogarithm function. So again, for all that, you can look at what we have on the cover page. So that's that. And integrating this, I, I mean, differentiating this, we get Mm, negative ln x to a negative 2 over x. I still have some trouble when I do this. <sighs> Let me try. All right, I only have the answer key, which doesn't really help. <laughs> it kind of helps, but 
How did I get there? That's the hard part, right? I didn't write down the method or the first step. Yeah, so if you enter this on Wolfram Alpha, it's going to give you the answer key, right? The answer. But then, how do we get there? That's the fun part. Earlier it was with you being LNX, right? So we get 1 over u squared, and uh, x is the same. e to the u, so yeah, differentiate I get e to the u, du. And how do I... Oh, I can just, oh, I was thinking too hard. I was thinking way, way ahead of myself. No, 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 sorry. I will still do a use up. Let u equal ln x. So x equals e to the u, and then dx is e to the u du. This right here is the integral and then we have u squared dx is e to the u du <sighs> du and then now to do integration by parts do it on the side d and i what I'm going to do is I will differentiate e to the u <laughs> and then I'll just get e to the u. What, what, what did I think of to do this earlier? And then integrate, I will integrate 1 over u squared, which is negative 1 over u. Okay, this works. Because this times that, I can handle it. We get negative e to the u over u. No integral goal, right? So this is just that. But when I multiply this and that, I put that in self integral, so it's a positive integral, and then we have e to the u over u in the u world. Let's finish this first. So this right here is still negative e to the u over u, but this right here is the exponential integral. So we will have to add exponential integrals is e i of u. Yeah, and now let's go back to the x. So, e to the u is x, so it's negative x over u is ln x, plus exponential integral of u is ln x. Yeah, it's like this, plus c. Whew. This right here can be easy or can be hard. Of course, if you see the easy way, then uh, it's just straightforward. So that's it anyway though, that's it. Alright, so it was 1 over sine squared, 1 over ln squared. Now, for the next one, number 50, we will do integral 1 over inverse sine x. Hey, we did a similar one, yeah, I know. So let's put this to the second power. Congrats, this is going to be the halfway mark. 3 hours and 40 something minutes. Oh, oh this is going to be an 8 hour video. How do we do this? Let's do a use up real quick, just like, well, what do we do? This is similar to number 41, so let's try a use up. I will, to, I will put u to be inverse sine x, x equals regular sine of u, and then dx will be cosine of u du. This is the integral 1 over u square dx is cosine u du 
I have a feeling this is the same as what we did earlier. So I will just do integration by parts. <laughs> I know what to do. I will inter I will differentiate integrate. I will differentiate cosine u. And then I will integrate one over u square. <laughs> so this right here is negative sine u and this right here is negative one over u. So first part of the answer we get u cosine u then we have three negatives right here so be extra careful <laughs> multiply them so we still end up with negative and it's the negative integral sine u over u haha <laughs> this is similar to what we did earlier so i i knew it all right so we can just write this as the siu right so this right here is u cosine u and then minus si of u and let's say it's the minus s i of u cool all right and then u is inverse sine yo okay u is inverse sine of x and then here we have cosine of u which is inverse sine of x and then minus s i of inverse sine of x <sighs> yeah all right so this right here it's the same as one over one minus x squared so i'll also fix that can i cancel this and that so i will just keep it so all together we have inverse sine of x and again this right here i'll put this down in blue perhaps this right here is square root of 1 minus x squared you can draw a triangle uh, then i'll leave that to you and then minus si of inverse sine of x hold up Thankfully, I have the answer key. Sorry, I wrote this down wrong. <laughs> Ay, my bad. This time, that you should be on the bottom. I'm sorry. So, let me do this again. Okay, cosine u times that, we get negative cosine u over u. That's the first part of the answer, so no integral, but when we multiply this together it's a negative integral right this and that is sine u over u in the u world so i will try to write down everything this is negative cosine u over u still same thing i haven't done it because right here i want to write the integral out so the answer for this is the sine integral of u so we are all done with the integration then the next step is of course write down the u which is inverse sine x over inverse sine x and then minus si of inverse sine x <laughs> and then this part is a famous one square root of 1 minus x squared because I told you guys like 2 minutes ago and then we have the inverse sine x and then minus si of plus c yay yeah okay 51 my goodness <sighs> ladies and gentlemen i'm going to have integral of sine x Too easy, I know. Let's put that in the square root. So how do we do this? Well, I'm just going to tell you that, that we will have to use. I'll just say we will just give you I'll just give you guys a, a hint. The integral of square root of one 
if it's a minus, this is similar to the one that we had earlier. It's a one over. The one that we did was one over square root. This time it's just one. This one just uh, no square root, no 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 fraction, just square root of one minus m sine square x dx. This right here. And this right here is equal to the elliptic integral of second kind. So they use e. I have no idea why. Right? Just just use e. It's x and then m plus c. So this is the one that we are going to somehow utilize. But how though? This is a pretty hard one, I will tell you. But the trick is, you just need to know your identities for, for, for the. You just need to know your trick identities. So here we go. What I'm going to write is this right here. I want to have one minus sine squared, right? The m we can figure it out later. But we have done what the following the, the following. If we have cosine of two theta, this is one half times one plus sine of two theta. Okay. Yeah? So how does it help? No, 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 sorry, I, I wrote it down wrong. I was thinking, of, okay. Cosine of 2 theta, this right here is the same as 1 minus 2 sine square theta because I want to kind of increase the power and then we want to have the sine square and we want to have the 1. So this right here, the double angle identity for cosine. In fact, we utilized it earlier too, huh? So this is the one that we can, we can use. We, we saw this for the fire drop substitution by put down two cosine square minus one. But this is the one we can use. But how can we go from sine to cosine? Well, cosine is just the sine of its complementary angle. So this right here, I can write it as square root. I can purpose write it as cosine of pi over two minus x. Okay? As long as the angles add up to be pi over two, then sine cosine will be equal. So that's that. In order for me to utilize this, I should have a double angle identity, right? I need to have a two. So I will purposely write this as the integral of cosine. I will do a two times. And here, I pretty much have to divide it by two, divide it by two. So it's pi over four minus x over two. Like that. Okay, like that. Yeah. Dx. And now I can use this identity. Theta is just this red thing. So this right here is the integral square root. And we have 1 minus 2 sine. And then I do need a square, which I have the square too. That's so very nice. Angle is this, which is pi over 4 minus x over 2. So good. And then dx. Okay, I can erase this now. Yes. And guess what? I will do a quick u sub. I will put u to be pi over 4 minus x over 2. And you'll see that du equals negative 1 half dx. So this means dx equals negative 2 du. So this right here becomes, I need a negative 2 at the front. And then we have the integral square root of 1 minus 2 sine square of u. And then du. m is 2 because it has the minus right here already. So all in all, we have negative two, and this thing is going to be the exponential, sorry, it's going to be the elliptic integral of second kind, and then we have the input is u, and the u is that thing, which is pi over four minus x over two, 
and then vertical bar and we also need the M which is the 2 so I'll put down the 2 in black and then this and then plus D yay <laughs> all right after this video you guys definitely let me know which one is your favorite yeah we have a lot a lot of this crazy crazy integrals that's why it took me so long to prepare all these questions for you guys Next one, number 52. Integral, let's do the inverse sine x. I know, we did this before and this right here is too easy. Producing a square root. Let's put this in a square root. All right? Okay, so what do we do? Mm, so far, if we have the square root and also the inverse, let's just do u sub first since u happens. Let u, I will just do the whole thing. Yeah, Square root of inverse sine x. So this means x equals square both sides and do the original sign on both sides. So sine of u square. So this means dx equals 2u. Remember, we have the chain rule and then we have the cosine of u square du now take this integral to the u world this right here is the integral this thing is the u this thing is that so we have 2u cosine of u square du okay you know what this is great because we can do integration by parts d and also the i plus minus i'm going to be differentiating u and i'll integrate to u cosine u square differentiating u we get one integrate this we get sine of u square right because we can do another substitution w equal to u square and all that stuff Okay, so the first part of the answer is this times that. So we have u times sine of u squared. Then we multiply by this and that together, which we'll have to minus the integral of sine u squared in the u world. So that's what we have. All right, what's this? Again, it's the S integral, it's the first Nels integral. So I will write that down for you guys. This right here is U sine of U square. And then we have this minus, I'll keep this in blue. But this right here is square root of pi over two, and then S, and then square root of two over pi U. On the handout, I put down um, Yeah, x, but here we are using u, so just be really careful. Okay, and then put that back and then we are done. So, by the way, u squared is what? Oh, look, 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 sine squared, sine of u squared is x. So this thing right here is x. u is square root of that, so I'll just write this first and then square root of sine inverse and then minus square root of pi over 2 s this is not integral this is an s and then square root of 2 over pi u is square root of wow inverse sine of x and then plus c wow so which one did you guys like more integral of Square root of regular sine or 
with infrasound side. Let me know. Let me know. Okay, why don't we look at the integral of a special function inside? So exponential integral. So e i and then inside. Let's look at x squared dx. Let's see how this will go. Okay, so for this right here, special function, let's just go ahead and do the derivative, then you'll see what I mean by all this. So d and also the i. Check this out. ei of x, right, is integral e to the x over x dx, yeah? So, when we differentiate Ow, sorry. EI of x squared. That's just integral one, of course. What we are going to do is we put x squared, integral and derivative cancel, right? So we just have to put x squared here and here. So we get e to the x squared over x squared. But then don't forget to use the chain rule, so multiply by 2x. Moreover, integrate 1, we get x. So this times this is the first part of the answer. x times ei of x squared, and then multiply all this together. This and that, but well, this, this is x squared cancel, so we just have to minus 2 and then integral e to the x squared dx. What's this? We we'll talked about it earlier, huh? It's the square root of pi over 2. This is the past, so it's the imaginary, it's an imaginary error function of x. Yeah, and then 2 and that we can simplify again. So all in all, we get x e i of x squared and then minus square root of 2 pi e r f i of x plus c. Hold up. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I was thinking about the wrong constants. Square root of pi over 2, so they cancel out precisely. This right here is square root of pi over 2. So this 2 and that 2 cancel precisely, so just have square root of pi. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so we have. Whew. Number 54. In my opinion, this is the hardest one among all the special integrals that I came up with. Integral x over 1 plus e to the x. Well, not really the hardest one. Uh, you will see, you will see. You will let you, let you, you guys can let me know. I'm going to just do integration by parts right away. So d and also the i. I will differentiate x and I will integrate 1 over 1 plus e to the x. I'm going to differentiate this, we get 1, integrate this. To do so, I'm just going to, let's see, I want to match with my answer key answer. So, uh, I will just do the usual way, plus e to the x and then minus e to the x. So this part is going to give us 1, integrate that, so we get x minus e to the x over 1 plus e to the x give us ln no need for absolute value because the inside is always positive so that's all we have good and then this times that is the first part of the answer so we have x times x minus ln of 1 plus e to the x and then times these things 
so minus the integral and then we have x no yeah minus and then this is x minus ln 1 plus e to the x dx okay so this right here let's work out real quick this is x squared minus x ln 1 plus e to the x I just had to minus the integral of x which is just one half x squared that's done deal right and now we have to focus on minus minus right so we just have to focus on the integral of ln of 1 plus e to the x yeah okay let's do a u stop hope for the best u will equal 1 plus e to the x and du will be e to the x dx so dx equal no i don't want to do this what i want to do is just e to the x because i noticed that the u is going to be somehow on the bottom and um, if we just have e to the x then i will be like u minus one so instead of putting u to be e to the x what i'm going to do is check this out u half <laughs> what i'm going to do is i'm going to let u equal negative e to the x okay du will be negative e to the x dx dx equal du over uh, e negative e to the x and this is u but let me put this down right here we have integral ln 1 because i said u is negative e to the x so this is minus u okay and then dx is du over that so we have du over guess what this thing is the same as u so I'll du over u so I can put a u right here what does this look like yeah li of 2 with, with positive l so this right here is li but remember when we go this way you have a negative here this is a negative here and then the input is u so li 2 and then this is u like this a plus c if you would like so this by itself can be a question already but again negative negative is this positive integral but this positive integral will give you a negative result so this is still negative and then we have li2 and then the u is u is negative e to the x is li an even function or an odd function <laughs> no so you really have to keep this inside you cannot bring to the front so that's that <sighs> yeah it actually took me a while to to see this when i was preparing these questions a while ago and yeah anyway number 55 let's flip this around in a sense i'll switch the x and also e to the x so number 55 look at the integral e to the x over 1 plus x wow how do we do this check this out i will multiply e to the first on the top and of course we do the same thing on the bottom e to the first right e to the first why because this right here gives us e and then x and one right so of course we can write yes uh, one plus x over one plus x and then this e can be to the front like so right here we can do expon we, we can do a u substitution let u equal one plus x and du dx is the same thing so one over e exponential integral of one plus x haha -ha. done just like that i love that one so 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 much number 56 let's integrate e to the x too easy you know that so let's try e to the e to the x let's try to do it with u sub right away i will put u to be just e to the x and you see that du will be e to the x dx and uh, dx will be 
du over e to the x, but this thing is our u. So this integral becomes the integral, this e stays, but this e to the x is the u, and then we have dx, which is du over u. Integral of e to the u over u is exponential integral. So this right here is e i of u, and u is e to the x plus c. Done. Whew. All right, number 57. I can fit in here. I, we did e to the e to the x. So how can we not do ln of ln of x? So number 57, integral of ln of ln of x. Let's do substitution. I will leave that to you. I will do integration by parts. So I will put it down, uh, right here should be okay. The I method, ln, ln, x, and then integral one. It works out pretty nicely because when we differentiate this, we get one over this ln x right here, and then multiply by the derivative of that, which is x right here, and integrate one, we get x. This times that is the first part of the answer. So we get <laughs> x times ln of ln of x. And then multiply this and that. X and x cancel. So we just have to get integral of 1 over ln x. Which is, in fact, they have a connection. That's an exponential integral. This is the log integral, logarithmic integral. So altogether, x times ln of ln x minus little l, little i of x plus c. Yay, just like that. Okay, page four done. And then we have a couple more special integrals, and then we're going to improper integrals. And the double integrals are at the end, so that's the hardest part, I would say. Fifty-eight. We are going to integrate six. Integral s i of x. That's a special function. All right. When we have a special function, usually let's try integration by parts and see how things go. Because we cannot integrate this, let's try to differentiate that. So d i. I will differentiate s i of x. The derivative of this is just sine x over x. Integrate 1, we get x. Because the integral of this is that, so the derivative of this is that. So we see this times this is the first part of the answer. x times si of x. Okay, multiply. x cancel, so we just have to minus integral of sine x, which is what? Cosine x, so x sine no. X times sine, no, X times S I of X. This right here is altogether plus cosine X and we're done. Yay. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Coming up next, number 59 and then just two more. So number 59, let's integrate S of X. Integration by parts, d and also the i plus or minus, all right. I want to write this down better. Oh, no, no. Okay, number 59 will integrate s of x. s is the you know that thing, yeah. So try integration by. Parts. 
So I will differentiate s of x and integral 1. This right here is just x, no problem. But we have to be super careful on what the derivative of this is. And uh, again, I'm going, I'm based off with the answer from Wolfram Alpha. All right? So, okay, I will write this down for you guys. As we discussed earlier, when we integrate sine of x squared dx on Wolfram Alpha, the answer that gives us is square root of pi over 2 times s of square root of 2 over pi x plus c okay so it's like that so if we differentiate both sides if we differentiate both sides this and that meant to cancel so we have sine of x squared yeah and um, we're trying to find out the root of this and you see this is the square root of pi over 2 and this right here is the derivative of that, which is I will denote it by s prime, and then the input stays 2 over pi in the square root of x. But the right hand side here, it needs the chain rule. So you need to multiply by square root of 2 over pi. And this and that cancel very nicely. But now, you see the derivative of this is not the same as that because the input here is just x. This input here has square root of 2 over pi. So what we have to do is plug in x equals square root of pi over 2. Uh, I should say plug in substitute square root of 2. I should say plug in change x, change x to <laughs> square root of pi over 2x. So on the left hand side, we get sine of square root of pi over 2x and then square, right? And on the right hand side, we get s prime of square root of 2 over pi times square root of pi over 2 and then we have the x. And you see this and that cancel. So the derivative of s is that, which is, let's see, we have sine and uh, this and that cancel so it's pi over 2 and x squared okay so I hope that is good all right first part of the answer ladies and gentlemen x times s that looks like an integral x times s of x and then we will have to subtract this is the integral now this multiply we have x times sine of pi over 2 x squared dx so that was just a scratch work we just have to figure this out and we'll be done it's not bad because we can just do u sub let u equal pi over 2 x squared the roof of this is pi x so we need the 1 over pi so this right here x s of x we need a 1 over pi so just minus we just need a 1 over pi and the, the, the integral of sine is negative cosine so it's negative negative and then we have cosine and the input is pi over 2 x squared and then we're done plus c yes just like that this is an s this is an s number 59 ladies and gentlemen all right all good now just a couple more questions to go and we'll be done
Number 60. This is a very nice function. The Lambert W function. And you might be thinking, why isn't it on the handout, on the cover page? Uh, the response for that is I forgot to put it. But let me just double check that, yes, it's still recording. How do we do it with this though? Uh, let me show you. Check this out. I will start off by taking you sub. And uh, next question. Mm. I will just do it here. I'll take u to be w of x. Here's the property of here's the property of uh, the Lambert w function. Notice u equals w of x, right? If we apply the inverse Lambert w function, then we get x equals u e to the u. So that's the key. So the idea is if I have this thing u e to the u equals x. We can apply the w on both sides. When you have this and that match, and we have the e here, then we pretty much just resort it to u. So that's the idea. For more videos on this, you can check out the channel. I have done lots of videos on the Lambert W function. OK, once we have this, what do we do next though? Well, still same thing, get a dx. So we will have to differentiate that. And here we will have to use the product rule dx equals keep the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first and then we have the du yeah that's all you have and we can factor out the e to the u if you would like i'll put it here though here we have the integral w is u and then dx is all these things so i will just multiply and i think i would really factor out e to the u. So we have e to the u times u plus 1 du like this. And now this is just a polynomial times e to the something, right? We can do integration by parts. But before that, let me just clean things up one more time. This times this, right? This and this, which is u squared plus u. And then we have e to the u du. Now let's go ahead and do the integration by parts d and also the i plus minus plus u squared plus u and then e to the u differentiate this we get 2u plus 1 one more time uh only one more okay zero stop e to the u is just always going to give us e to the u good all right so first part of the answer ladies and gentlemen this time that we get u squared plus u times e to the u. Next, this times that, which is minus 2u plus 1 e to the u. And then lastly, plus 2 e to the u. That's pretty much the idea, huh? But of course, we're not done yet. We'll clean things up, right? So let's see. OK. Let's try this. This part, it's a u squared times e to the u. That's the only part, right? So I will just write it down as, and I will purpose write it as u times u, that's u squared, and then e to the u, right? This and that. It's the only thing that we have to, yeah. Next, I will put this down in blue. u minus 2u pretty much. Right? This is minus 2u, so this is a uh, minus 2u minus 1. u minus 2u is minus u, and then we have uh, the e to the u too. Yeah, e to the u right here. And then next, we have minus 1 times e to the u. Minus 1 plus 2 is plus 1, and then we have e to the u. So it's just the clean up. And the reason I put it down like this is because u is w of x. u e to the u is x. u e to the u is x. So we have a minus x. And lastly, we have e to the u. Mm, 
e to the u, u is w of x, so I'll just write it as plus e to the w of x. Just like that. Crazy stuff, isn't it? I will leave the answer like that, just like what I have uh, on the answer key. So just like that. Not bad. Okay, no more special integrals. No more special functions. Now, let's get into kind of like special integrals, but here we have the improper integrals, all right? So, number 61. Here's the question. We want to find p so that the integral going from 1 to infinity, 1 over x to the p, this improper integral, because it has infinite interval. We want this, we want this so that, such that this thing right here converges, meaning that it gives us a finite value. So let's just go ahead and do this. Firstly, to integrate this thing, we have to break it down into two cases. The first case is that if p is equal to one, if p is equal to 1, then we are looking at the integral going from 1 to infinity, 1 over x to the first power. This thing gives us ln of x. No need for absolute value because it's all positive on the interval. And then we go from 1 to infinity. When we plug in infinity to here, ln infinity is infinity. Minus ln 1 is 0, so it's just infinity. So this thing right here diverges. Therefore, therefore, when p is equal to 1, this thing does not diverge, does not converge. Now, either p is not equal to 1, so we'll do the following, if when p is not equal to 1. If p is not equal to 1, then for this integral, we get the integral 1 to infinity. Look at this as x to the negative p dx. Add 1 to the power and divide it by the new power, so we get 1 over, let's write it as 1 minus p, and then let's write it as x to the 1 minus p's power, and then we go from 1 to infinity. Okay, when we put infinity to here, in order for this to be finite, we need to have 1 minus p to be negative. Because infinity to a negative power approaches zero. All right? So we need this to be negative. Therefore, we can see that. Just solve this inequality real quick. Move this around, you get p is greater than 1. And then that's the answer. That's it. And of course, when, p, when x is equal to 1, it's finite. So this is the only place that you have to worry about. And uh, that's that. Cool. So that's number 61. And I call this the p integral because this is the one that you have to know really well. In fact, if p is less than or equal to 1, this thing diverges. All right, number 62. Let's look at the integral of, from negative, from zero to infinity of sine x. Well, if you do it from the usual way, just like you integrate this, you get negative cosine x, and then you plug in numbers, right? Zero to infinity. You see that when you plug in infinity to here, Cosine of infinity does not have a limit, right? Does not approach to a number. So in fact, this thing right here diverges, and that's it. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> At number 63. Integral going from 2 to infinity. 1 over 
square root of x squared minus 1 dx. Let's just go ahead and do a trick sub real quick. Hmm, should I? Or should I do a hyperbolic substitution? Oh, trick sub is okay. <sighs> Let's do a trick sub. Let's do a trick sub. x equals secant theta, dx equals secant theta, tangent theta, d theta. And uh, when x is 2, hmm, secant of 1 is equal to 2, I don't know. So I'm just going to focus on the integral first, all right? So we see that, that let's see. We see that this is integral 1 over square root of secant square theta minus 1. Let's do this in blue so that you can see that I'm doing just the integral. Let's do this in our head. No, 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 let's just show you guys to the work. Secant square theta minus 1, and this is secant theta tangent theta d theta. This is tangent square, it's not the square root, it's just tangent theta. So this thing and that thing cancel, so integrate secant theta, so it's just ln absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta, and because secant theta is equal to x over 1, so I'm going to draw a right triangle real quick, x over 1, so this thing is square root of x square minus 1 square. Okay, so I have enough information. This thing here is ln, no need for absolute value, everything's positive. Secant theta is x over 1, so just x plus, okay, I'll put this down in red, x plus, Tangent is this over that, so square root of x squared minus 1. Okay. Cool, we integrated, and now we plug in 2 to infinity. But when we put infinity to here, in fact, we end up with infinity. Because infinity plus infinity is infinity, and infinity is still infinity. When we put 2 in here, it's finite, so Infinity minus finite is still infinity, so this thing right here diverges. Kind of similar to this right here, right? Yeah. And of course, it depends on how much work that you will have to show, um, but I think this is enough. Yeah. Number 64, I will do it right here. Integral going from 0 to infinity, x e to the negative x squared dx. Do the usual business, the u sub, right? u equal negative x squared. So we get negative 1 over 2. We need a negative 2, right? So divided by the negative 2. So we get negative 1 over 2, e to the negative x squared. So integrate that first, and then we go from 0 to infinity. Do this in your head. When we put infinity to, to, when we put infinity to here, we get e to the negative infinity. When we have a number that's greater than 1 to the infinity, we get 0. Next, when we put 0 in here, we will just have to... We will just get 1, right? e to the 0 is 1. So this thing right here is negative 1 half. So on all, we get 1 half. So the way to do... In, the way to do... In proper integrals, it's just that not only you have to know not only you have to know the integration steps, but you also have to know the limits. Right? And perhaps I will just have to say this thing right here, the limit as x approaching infinity of cosine x, you can put negative as well if you would like. Yeah, doesn't exist. Therefore it diverges. If it has if it's not finite, then it diverges. So this right here converges to one half. Sometimes the limit doesn't exist, you just say diverge. If you end up with 
infinity, right? You also say that's divergent. So that's that. Ladies and gentlemen, number 65. Wait, earlier it was the integral of from 0 to infinity x e to the negative x squared dx, and we got 1 half. Huh? Number 65, integral going from 0 to infinity x. No, we did that already. Just e to the negative x squared dx. And you might be wondering, Hey, you told me that we are not going to be using special integrals anymore. Yes, we are not. And the reason is, you are right, if we don't have the limits of integration, then this right here, you just say that's the error function, right? And then multiply by square root of pi over 2 and all the stuff. But, because we have the limits of integration going from 0 to infinity, we can actually figure out the value. It's just a very nice number. I'll tell you, this right here is square root of pi over 2. And this is how we are going to do it. You learn this in Cal 3. Here we go. I'm just going to start off by saying that this thing being an integral, right, which is i, I'll call that to be i, is going from 0 to infinity, e to the negative x squared dx. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is, this right here, I will write it down again, 0 to infinity, e to the negative y squared dy. Now, why am I allowed to do so? Imagine this thing, what you are going to do is just, you graph on the x-axis, and then you make a graph, right? And then you have a curve like this, and you find the area going from 0 to infinity. And for this right here, guess what? You are going to grab it on the y-axis like so, and the graph is going to be like the same thing because it's the same function, and you still go from 0 to infinity. For the value-wise, they have the same value, so this is okay. All right, so what do we do? Check this out. I'm going to do i square. i square is the same as i times i. And the first i in black, I will write yes, the integral going from 0 to infinity, e to the negative x squared dx. And the second i in red, I am going to write yes, integral going from 0 to infinity, e to the negative y squared dy. Wow, yes. Next, I'm going to, because this thing is in the x world, this thing is in the y world, I'm just going to multiply the insides together. And because they have the same base, we can just add the exponents. So this right here becomes the integral going from 0 to infinity. The black integral first, and then the red integral right here going from 0 to infinity. And then for the inside, I'm just going to put this down as e to the this plus that. We can factor out a negative. So negative parentheses x squared plus y squared. And then it was the integral in red first right here inside, and then the black one is the one on outside. So that's what we have. Cool. How do we continue? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you guys the polar coordinate. Can we do it without, polar, without the polar coordinate? Yes, you can check out my other video for it, but I promise you guys in that video that I will do this one with the polar way, so I will do the polar way here. What we need is, I'm going to do the polar way from Cal 2. We know x is equal to r times cosine theta, y equals r times sine theta. It has two variables, x and y, so this is that. Eh? Now if you think about it, 
Earlier, it's kind of similar, huh? When we have x is equal to something, or well, like, like the, earlier, when we were doing this integral, what we did was we said x equals 1 times secant theta, right? In this particular one. What we did was we put this down and then differentiate this right away. Done. But now, how are we going to get the dx and dy? Shall we just differentiate this and differentiate that and multiply it? Not quite, because both r and theta, they change, they are not constants. So we cannot just differentiate this. Can we do the product rule? Mm -hmm. Good question. Uh, But product rule of what though, right? No, 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 no. Here, let me introduce you guys how to change from dy dx to d theta to d r d theta. This is called the this is called the change of variable with a double integral. So I would like to tell you dy dx you can just multiply it, so you don't really need to worry about which one comes first. So dy dx. To figure this out, right, we are trying to figure this out. What we are going to do is, we are going to figure out the so-called Jacobian, which is the partial, this is the notation for Jacobian. This originally is x, y, and then divided by like, it's like, this is the notation for Jacobian, so r theta. So this is the so-called Jacobian. Jacobian. And I am actually going to write it as dx dy because the water is better in the sense that I put on xy like that. But it doesn't really matter. So we have this right here. But the Jacobian is this thing. I will tell you guys what it is. But technically, we are going to put the absolute value around it. Right, so this is the absolute value. We need this thing, and then we multiply by the dr d theta. So that's like the calculus three way to do these things that we did earlier. Arguably, you can also think about this, right? dx is equal to this thing times d theta. This is the Jacobian. Yeah, you can think about it like that. So how exactly do we compute the Jacobian though? In fact, what we do is the following this and i'm going to just write it as a det for determinant because otherwise i have too many vertical bars it looks like absolute values you don't really need a det but anyway what we do is we do get x right and do the partial derivative with respect to r and then do the partial of x with respect to theta so it's not it's not the product rule of r times cosine theta no, partial derivative, calculus 3 stuff, and then partial y, partial r, like this. Yeah. And then we apply the absolute value on the whole side, and then you have that dr d theta. So let's see, this right here is the absolute value, and we look at the determinant. And you really don't need the determinant, because this is just a nice way to... This is just a nice way to just let's just do it. Partial x with respect to r. Look at this. Differentiate this with respect to r, meaning that we are in the r world. Theta is a constant. Differentiating r, we get one times cosine. So we have cosine theta. Now look at this and differentiate this with respect to theta. R is a constant. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, so we have negative r sine theta. Do the same thing. This with respect to r, we get sine theta. This with respect to theta, we get r cosine theta. And then dr d theta. Now to find the determinant of this guy, we do this times that, which is r 
cosine square theta, and then we subtract, okay? We subtract this times that, but this is a negative, so it becomes positive right here, and then we have r sine square theta. Absolute value, technically, but absolute value is not needed because you will see that it's just going to be r. And we have um, this thing, dr d theta. Yeah. Okay. Why the absolute value is not needed? You have to be really careful because sometimes the partial derivatives might be just numbers, not functions. And right here, you will see the range of r. It's just positive, so that's why r is positive. We just don't need that absolute value. Okay, by the way, x, y, this and that, don't forget another thing that we need is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And yeah, so this, 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 and this. Four main ingredients to do the polar coordinates, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, integral, integral, and then this thing is e, and then we have the negative here. This thing is r squared, so that's good. dy dx, again, as I said, is d x dy, same thing, and we'll just multiply by r dr d theta. This is just like the rectangle area, so dy times dx, the same as dx times dy. I should also say that. It's also because this is just from zero to, the range, the, the, the interval that we're looking at is zero to infinity, only y, uh, it's just, it's just in the first quadrant, so yeah, sorry. So that's why it really doesn't really matter. We're getting to the double integral later on. Let me just finish this. R, okay. By looking at this region, it goes from zero to infinity. Why? Because originally we are at the origin, and then of course it goes to the whole, the way, whole thing, right? So, zero to infinity. Theta, originally we look at this, zero degree. And then once we go look at that, it's pi over two, right? 90 degrees of pi over two. Okay, now we can integrate. Do things at first. This right here, do u sub, we get, this thing looks like the thing that we got earlier, isn't it? We did it earlier. Earlier we put the x. What's the answer? One half. Let's put one half. We're done with that. All right. And then we do the integral from zero to pi over two, and then d theta. All right. So this is one half. So all together we just get pi over four. Why? Because when you integrate that, you just put a theta here, and you plug in pi over two. Pi over two times one half is pi over four, and then plugging zero is nothing, so it's pi over four. Are we done? No. I squared equals pi over four. This means I equals square root of pi over two. Why do we just take the positive? Because e to the negative x squared is a positive, so it's above the x-axis, so the area under the curve, right? It's positive value. And for this thing, yeah, it's exactly what we're trying to get. Integral going from zero to infinity, e to the negative x squared, dx. Yeah. Yeah. And this, I think this is the best explanation I can give you guys in a, in a short amount of time. And Later on, I'm just going to be using this because if I have to keep explaining this, then this is going to take me 10 hours. But here you go. This is the so-called Gaussian integral with the polar coordinate.
Okay, number 66. This is also a improper integral. We are going to find p so that the improper integral going from 1 to e, 1 over x times ln x to the p's power, this thing, we want this right here, converges. And now why did I say this right here is an improper integral? Because assuming that you have a, um, because when we have x is equal to 1, ln 1 is equal to 0, then we pretty much 1 over 0, so we will get a vertical asymptote at x equal to 1. Yeah. Uh, but don't worry, because if we have a good p, then this thing will still converge. Yeah. So vertical asymptote is when the function goes straight up, so that's an infinity, right? Earlier is the infinite interval, so that's also infinity. So that's when we have improper integrals. All right, to deal with this, we just need to do a uh, use up. Let me try, let me, let me show you. Let u equal ln x. And then du will be 1 over x dx. And we have that, this is nice. Check this out. x goes from 1 to e. Take this integral to the u world. Put 1 in here, ln 1 is equal to 0. Put e in here, ln e is equal to 1. No. What am I talking about? No, 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 no. What am I doing? Hold on. <sighs> oh, no, 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 no. This is not the same as the, the question that we got. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 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 All right. Put e to inside ln. E is 1. So we have integral going from 0 to 1. And then we have just 1 over u to the p, and then this thing and that together is the du. So that's what we have. And now, to integrate this, again, we will have to consider cases. If p is equal to 1, then we get a natural log situation, right? So integral going from 0 to 1, 1 over x, sorry, 1 over u to the first power, and we don't have to go back to the x world to figure this out because once we have the this integral right here in the u world, if we can figure out the value, it's the same as the original value. So yeah, especially we change the limit of the equation already too. So by anyway, this right here will give us ln u, and we go from zero to one. Be really careful. This right here, it looks like we get ln one, yeah, minus ln zero. Ln0 is not defined, but technically we will have to take the limit. So this is technically 0 plus, but we just don't write it. So Ln0 plus. Yeah, so just you have to keep in mind, this really means take the limit as the lower limit goes to 0 from the right hand side. This gives us 0, that's good, and then we have the minus, and this thing right here gives us negative infinity. So on all, we get plus infinity, therefore, when p is equal to 1, it let this thing diverges. So now, if p is not equal to 1, then we look at the integral u to the negative p du going from 0 to 1. Add 1 and then divide it by that. So we get integral 1 over... Sorry, that's the result already. This right here is... 1 over 1 minus p, u to the 1 minus p, and we go from 0 to 1. This time when we plug in 0, uh, when we plug in 1, it's okay, but we have to be careful when we plug in 0 in here. In order for this thing to not go to infinity, we will have to make sure 1 minus p has to be greater than 0 because when we put 0 into the u 
we want to make sure that 0 to the past d power, this thing right here will give us 0. If we have 0 to the negative power, if it's positive value, then there's no plus or minus. If you have, let's say, 1 over 0 plus like this. If I have 0 to negative power like this, it goes to infinity. That, 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 that's not good. So we want this, and then we can just solve for p. p has to be less than 1. Yeah? So that's the answer. Okay, that's the answer. All right, number 67. Integral going from 0 to pi over 2. Inverse tangent. All right, this right here is a improper integral because vertical asymptote at x equals pi over 2, right? It's improper. But it's okay, let's just do the integral and then be careful with the limit. Integrating tangent x, we get ln absolute value of, we don't need absolute value because on this interval, it's positive. So ln secant x and we go from 0 to pi over 2. But now, if you look at the limit as x goes to pi over 2, and technically, this right here should be from the left-hand side. All right? Because it's 0 to this, so it's like this. Here's 0, here's pi over 2. You have to avoid touching pi over 2, so you have to you know, just approach it from the left hand side, like that. And then we have, let's just look at secant x first. And then, yeah, let's do this. Let's, let's, let's do this like this, ln of. Secant x, here's the picture for it. It's 1 over cosine, yeah? It looks like this. And then like that. And here is the pi over 2. So, if x is approaching pi over 2 from the left-hand side, you see that it goes to infinity. So this right here will be infinity. Instead of the ln, that will still be infinity. Therefore, 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 this thing will diverge. Yeah, we end up with infinity minus plugging 1, we get 1. So, it's infinity. This the whole thing diverges. Yeah. And of, uh, uh, again, it depends on how much work that you want to show, but diverges because you take the limit for that. Number 68. Integral going from 0 to 1, ln x, dx. How do we do this? Well, you can do integration by parts and then just plug in, you know, do a limit all that. But here's a better way to do it. Sometimes there's a connection between, this is the so-called type 2 improper integral when we have vertical asymptotes. Type 1 is when we have horizontal asymptote, or like inter horizontal infinite interval. Let me show you this way. Take u to be ln x, and we will see du will be 1 over x. No, 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 no. I am not going to do the u substitution anyway. Number 68, the integral going from 0 to 1, ln x dx. Check this out. Here is the picture of natural log. This is y equal ln x. And we want this area, right, to see if it's finite or not. And the value for this will be negative because it's below the x-axis. All right, again, 
this is improper because vertical asymptote at x equals zero. But the truth is, if we look at this region and just flip it about the diagonal line, which is y equal to x, this right here will give us this picture, namely the area under e to the x from zero to from negative infinity to zero. And this is easier to handle. So I would like to tell you this integral going from zero to one L on x dx is equal to the integral going from negative infinity to zero of e to the x dx. And you can probably do some substitution and to work out algebraically, but I think if you understand the graph and then just do the reflection, it's much better. Okay, to integrate this, integral of e to the x is very easy, just e to the x. And then we're plugging zero, so we're plugging negative infinity and zero. Zero goes first though. So e to the zero minus e to the negative infinity. This is one, e to the negative infinity is zero, so the answer is one. Wait, there's one small part that I will have to tell you. Did I mention that they have the same area, but this right here has negative value for the integral, right? Once we flip this, this area, this region is above the x-axis, so when we just do the integral, it will have positive integral value. This right here has negative integral value. So be really careful. This area is one. This area is also one. But if you want to figure out the value for this integral, it's negative. So technically, right here, this is equal to negative of that. Likewise, we have a negative here, and then we negative here, so the answer is actually negative one. Therefore, this thing converges to negative one. Oh yeah, so 60 to 80, I have like some kind of improper integrals or definite integrals. And then the last 20 question is the crazy ones. Number 69, integral from zero to pi over two. Square root one plus secant x. So how do we deal with this? Firstly, there is a vertical asymptote. x cannot be pi over 2, right? Otherwise, yeah. So check this out. Check this out. Let's just focus on the integration, right? So let's see. I just want to do this one in blue, and then we'll do the limits later on. So we'll see. This is the same as integral of 1 plus 1 over cosine x. Yeah? Get a common denominator and then clean things up. So we have square root and this is cosine on the bottom. And allow me to write 1 plus cosine x instead of cosine x plus 1 because what we'll do is the conjugate, actually. <laughs> so I will multiply the top and bottom by its conjugate. It's easier that way. Okay. <sighs> yeah, let's do that. So 1 minus... All right. This right here is sine squared. In the square root, it's just sine x. Even though, as I mentioned it earlier, as I mentioned it a couple of hours ago, we have to care about the absolute value when we have definite integrals. Yeah, we do. It was sine squared in the square root. Cancel it, we should have the absolute value. But x goes from 0 to power 2. Sine x is positive 
from 0 to power over 2, so no need for absolute value. And then over here, we have square root of cosine, so let's multiply, so this is cosine x minus cosine square x. Okay, so what do we do next? U sub, it's a great place for doing U sub. So U equal cosine x du equals negative sine x dx. So negative, negative, this gives us negative integral 1 over square root of u minus u square in the u world, yeah? Okay, how do we do this? Completing the square, yes. So right here, u minus u square, I will factor out a negative, right? So we still have u, negative u plus u, sorry. Look at the inside, we factor out a negative, so this right here becomes negative, and then negative u plus u square, yes. Now take half of negative one, square that is positive one over four. We add one over four inside, but technically this is minus one over four. So on the outside, we have to add one over four, right? Minus one over four plus one over four. And this right here will give us, let's put this down first, which is one over four minus, this thing is one over two minus u square. So, this right here is the integral, negative integral 1 over square root. Let's write this as 1 over 2 square minus 1 over 2 minus u and then square du. Now, let's take a substitution again. You can let w equal to 1 over 2 minus u and see dw is equal to negative du so the negative and negative will cancel and i will tell you within this earlier for question number three this is the a value the answer for this is inverse sine yeah and then is w over a but a is one over two so we have two over one and then w is this thing, which is 1 over 2 minus u. All right, I'm ready to go back, so it should be enough information. So integrate that, we get inverse sine of this times that is 1 minus, this times that is minus right, 2. What's u? u is cosine x. So 1 minus 2 cosine x. I would say this integral is a pretty hard integral by itself. But yeah. So that's all we have. But we are not done yet. We are talking about the definite integral, improper integral. We go from 0 to pi over 2. Let's finish it. Wrong color. All right, shall we do this in your head? Okay, let's do this in your head. Pi over two, cosine of pi over two is zero, so this part is zero. So the first part is going to be inverse sine of one, all right? And then you minus, put zero in here. Uh, we just get cosine of zero, which is one. One minus two is negative one, so we get inverse sine of negative one. But here's the deal. S inverse sine is an odd function, so you can put a negative right here, so it becomes plus. So this right here becomes two inverse sine of one. But here's the deal. Cause uh, sine of what angle will give you one? And the answer for that is pi over two. So this right here is two times pi over two. And here's the deal. 2 times pi over 2, yeah, this answer right here, it's very nasty, it's just equal to pi. 
It's the area of the unit circle. <laughs> yeah, number 69 right here. Okay, just a couple more questions to go. Right, number 70. This is a somewhat standard improper integral. Integral going from 1 to 2. 1 over x squared mm, plus x minus 2. Yeah, hold on. Partial fractions, yes. x plus 2, x minus 1. And we get integral something over x plus 2. All right, and then plus something else, x minus 1. To figure this out, cover this, x has to be negative 2. Put it here, 1 over negative 3. To figure this out, x has to be 1. Cover it, put it here, so we have 1 over 3. Good. And then we see that this is negative 1 third ln, no need for absolute value, x plus 2, and then plus 1 third ln x plus 1 and uh, before we plug in numbers we will combine the logarithm first we have the one third factor it this has negative so this thing goes down the bottom this thing on the top so ln it looks like a horrible ln ln x minus 1 over x plus 2 yeah and yes 1, 2. When we plug in 2, we get 1 third times ln. 2 minus 1 is 1 over 2 plus 2, yeah? So that's the first part. And then when we plug in 1, we get minus, and then we have ln, I mean 1 third ln. When we plug in 1, we get 0. Technically, this is 1 plus. When we're plugging 1 plus here, this is positive, so it's 0 plus over 3, so it's still positive. So it's 0 plus. So this is the write out. This is finite, but all this right here becomes, this is negative infinity times 1 third, so negative infinity, negative negative. Positive infinity, finite value doesn't matter, but all in all, this right here. Diverges. Okay. Number 70. Okay. All right, number 71. I'm going to let you guys tell me if this is an improper integral or not. We have the integral going from 0 to 1, and then we have ln x over x minus 1. But regardless, I will tell you that this right here does have a very nice answer. And this is one of the special ones that I'm featuring between 70 to 79. Let's see. We'll be using. What's that called? What's that called? What's that called? Infinite series. Power, 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 power. We will be using power series. So, check this out. You might be able to finish this with special functions, but power series is the key. Here we go. Ln x equals the series as n goes from zero to infinity. Just review the power series on your own, I will say. I cannot prove the power series. It's way too much. No, 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 no. I, I don't like this version of the ln x. I want ln of 1 plus x, sorry. Anyway, number 71. Let's do a use up real quick. So I will say that u equal x minus 1. So 
du equals dx. But the important thing here is that you see we will be getting the integral going from u equals when x is equal to 0, u is negative 1. And when, we, and when x is equal to 1, u is equal to 0. Okay. And then x is u plus 1. And then x minus 1 is the u. And then du and dx is the same thing. Okay, so that's that. Now, I like to look at the power series for ln of 1 plus u. So perhaps I'll put a u in red. This right here is the power series as n goes from 0 to infinity. It's alternating, so we have negative 1 to the nth power, and then the bottom is n plus 1, and then x, sorry, we're using u, u, and then the power here, and then this thing matches, so yeah, power series. And I will tell you, this thing works, uh, the radius of convergence is equal to 1, and it's nice, it works right here, so let's see. You might be worried about like we're putting negative, but we'll take the limit, so that, that's that. Anyway. Right here, in the U world, we just finished everything, right? So we are going from negative 1 to 0. On the top, let, let's put this down right here. We have the 1 over U. And then the blue part is for the LN. Yeah? So I'll write this down, which is Intergroup, I mean the power series n goes from 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n over n plus 1, and then we have the u here and the n plus 1. Yeah. And we have the du at the end. Yeah. Alright, fix this a little bit. This is like saying u to a negative 1. And then we can distribute that. So this and that cancel. Okay? Now, this thing converge, so we can integrate that term by term right here, that nicely. So, after we cancel that and that, to integrate this, we will have to add 1. So we get a new power, which is u plus 1. It's n plus 1. And then divided by the new power, so we just put n plus 1 here. So we integrate it. We get the series as n goes from 0 to infinity, and then we have negative 1 to the nth power over n plus 1 square and we have u to the n plus 1 power no need for the plus c because we will be plugging numbers negative 1 0 good thing for you guys is that when we plug in 0 in here the first the everything will be 0 so that's nice nice huh? because we have 0 to the first turn is u right with u and whatever everything will be zero, so that's that. Then we are going to subtract, yeah? Subtract, and then we have the series n goes from zero to infinity. This is negative one to the n over n plus one square, and then we have negative one to the n plus one. Now let's do this real quick. This is the same as saying negative 1 to the n times negative 1. Negative, negative, that will be positive. Right, so how should I, I don't want to cancel the out. Alright, I'm just going to do like this. So this right here is just going to be again, mm, okay, I'll do this. So we have a negative here. And then negative 1 and that, so it becomes positive. Yes? And then the other thing is negative 1 to the n times negative 1 to the n is negative 1 to the 2n is always equal to 1. So we put that inside of a series. 
1 and then over n plus 1 square. Ladies and gentlemen, if you write this out, then you'll see that this right here is actually just 1 over 1 square plus 1 over 2 square. Right? When n is equal to 1, you put it here, you get 1 over 2 square. And when n is equal to 2, you get 1 over 3 square. And so on, so on, so on. And this right here is famously equal to pi square over 6. Yeah, I, I didn't do this on the, my, I didn't do this in my 100 series video. One day, well, but I have a video on this, so you can check that out. But um, yeah, so this is it, number 71, number 71. All right, number 72, it's crazy. Number 72, um, I am going to, let me see if I can fit in here, all right? It's the integral going from zero to one. But instead of ln x over x minus one, I will do the reciprocal. So that is x minus one over ln x. And you might be thinking that how is this even possible? Yes, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to make this video. Again, let me know if you think this right here is improper or not. Do we have any vertical asymptote? Or horizontal asymptote? Vertical asymptote, just let me know. Anyway, this right here, we use power series. This right here, I'll show you guys a technique called the famous technique of integration. It goes like this. I will give you guys a very nice formula. I will start by calling i of, let's say you, t. I'll put t here because I want to cancel with the ln x. Let me show you. Integral going from 0 to 1, x to the t's power minus 1 over ln x. What we do next is we'll be looking at this and differentiate it with respect to t. On the left hand side, we get i prime of t. On the right hand side, what we'll do is just do the derivative inside. So we get integral going from 0 to 1. We have 1 over x. So 1 over ln x, yeah? That's a constant in the t world, so we keep it. The derivative of x to the t in the t world is that we get x to the t times ln x. The base. Why? Because I'm doing this dt. Let's say if we have 2 to the t, we get 2 to the t times ln2, yeah? Now, we don't have the 2. We have the x. It's a constant x. That's that. And the derivative of 1 is 0, so we don't have that. So this is what we have. And then, we have the dx. But you notice ln x, ln x cancel. We can finish this nicely. You see, this is just the integral going from 0 to 1, x to the t in the x world. So we add 1 to the power, divided by that, and we just get 1 over 1 plus t, x to the 1 plus t, or t plus 1, depending on how, how you want to write it. Doesn't matter. And then we go from 0 to 1. Plug in, plug in, then you get just 1 over t plus 1, right? Plug, plug in 0, you get 0. Okay, so that's good, but this is i prime of t. So what's the original i of t though? Let me do this again. i prime of t equals 1 over t plus 1. To go back to the original, of course, we just integrate both sides, and we are in the t world. Then we get i of t equals, this right here gives us ln absolute value t plus 1. And of course, don't forget the plus c. So that's pretty much the idea. Now, this t, we can just put whatever we want. 
Have a look. Integral going from 0 to 1, x to the t's power minus 1 over ln x dx. Based on this, we know it's ln of t plus 1 and then plus c. But what exactly is the c? We will have to figure out. And to do so, we can just let t equal a nice number that says 0. When we plug in 0 in here, x plus 0 is power is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So the whole thing inside is 0. Integrating 0 from whatever to whatever is always 0. So we get 0 equals, put 0 in here, ln 1 is 0 plus c. So c is equal to 0. Therefore, we can say the integral going from 0 to 1, x to the t's power minus 1. Let me write it down bigger x to the t's power minus 1 over ln x dx is just nice the ln and because it's positive you know if you pick the positive value then yeah i'll just put a parenthesis t plus 1. the connection between this formula and the one that we have is t is equal to 1. so now that t equals 1 ladies and gentlemen we go from 0 to 1 x to the first power minus 1 over ln x dx equals ln 1 plus 1, which is 2. Yes. All right, I took out the absolute value. But here's a small question for you guys. Will it work if I have, let's say, does it work if Right, some question for you guys. First, t equals negative 1. t equals negative 2. t equals pi. Right? Uh, actually, maybe keep the absolute for you again. But anyway, this is how you go about it. Yeah? You guys can let me know. All right. You guys go ahead and figure that out a little bit. All right. 72. Number 73. Integral going from 0 to infinity, we have ln x over 1 plus x squared dx. The usual integration technique in the sense of integration by parts or substitution, it's not going to work. Here, we are going to take advantage of that. This is the definite integral. So maybe we can do some symmetry, that kind of business. Let me show you. I will do a substitution. Have a look. I will do the following. Mm, you can write this down either way. I will put this down. I'm going to say let x equal to 1 over u. In another word, u is equal to 1 over x. Same thing, seriously. And then, of course, dx will be negative 1 over u squared du, right? And it's pretty nice. And it's the same thing. All right, be careful. x going from 0 to infinity. Technically, this is 0 plus. Put it here, 1 over 0 plus is infinity. So in the u world, you start with, you start at infinity. Infinity to here, u is equal to 0. It's kind of like in the wrong order, huh? All right, and then we have ln. x is 1 over u. Over, 1 is 1. x squared, of course, you'll square both sides, but I will write it down like this. 1 over u, and then square. Lastly, dx is 
that negative 1 over u squared du. Now, I'm going to use this negative to help me switch the order of integration. So, I'm going to have the integral going from 0 to infinity, thanks to this negative sign. And then I will distribute this u squared. So we have u squared on the bottom. And then plus 1. On the top, I can write this as negative ln u in the u world. So yeah, have a look, ladies and gentlemen. This is equal to that. This is equal to its negative version. That's kind of cool. So what this is saying is that the integral going from 0 to infinity ln x over, of course, 1 plus x squared dx. This right here is equal to even though I put on u right here, but it's just a so-called dummy variable, it doesn't matter. You can put on t, you can put on x again. I know this is the part that a lot of people um, maybe don't even want to accept, but what I can do for you guys is that you can even write this down like this. Integral ln t over 1 plus t squared dt. Yeah? I just put x to be t. This right here, I can also put u to be t, so this right here is negative integral ln t over 1 plus t squared. Yeah. Anyway, what I'm going to do is, instead of the u, I'm going to just write it as the integral going from 0 to infinity. We have this negative, and then ln, I will put the x back, and then 1 plus x squared dx. Again, it's not because I'm saying, it's not because I put a 1 over x in here. It's just that I'll just say u is a, the so-called dummy variable. So we can rewrite this. Write this with x. It's okay. So just ignore all that. In order, put x for all this, and then we get that. Right? I think that should be that should be a very good explanation. Anyway, check this out. This integral is equal to is equal to negative itself. You can add this on both sides. Two integral zero to infinity ln x over one plus x squared dx. You get zero. Divide 2 on both sides. <laughs> Integral going from 0 to infinity, ln x over 1 plus x squared dx equals 0. And then we are done. Huh, we're done. Yeah. <sighs> Alright. Yeah. So. This is a nice reflection. Well, one over the reciprocal substitution that makes this work. I know when we have zero for the answer, it's not so satisfying. So for the next one, I'll prepare another one for you guys. That is with the same approach. And you might be wondering, how about another famous techniques of integration? Don't worry, I got you later. Number 74, we are looking at the integral going from 0 to infinity. 1, sorry, this is 1 is too small. 1 over 1 plus x squared. And then for the other part, we have 1 plus x to the 2022. And then we have dx. So we'll do the substitution again. Check this out. I'll put u. Let's put 
Yeah, let's put this u to be 1 over x. So x is the same as 1 over u, and then dx equals negative 1 over u squared du. Same thing like earlier, this is integral going from 0 to infinity, but we will have 0 plus, put it here, so you start with infinity. You start with infinity. <laughs> put infinity to here, we get 0, and then just pretty much do the rest like earlier, 1 over 1 plus 1 over u square 1 plus 1 over u to the 2022 yeah and then dx is the same as that thing so negative 1 over u square du what did we do earlier we used this negative to switch the integration order right the limits of integration so we'll do the same thing this is the integral. Thanks to this negative, we go from 0 to infinity now. And then I will multiply this part to this only. Yeah? So it's just, just distribute. Same thing. So we will get u squared plus 1. For the first parenthesis this time. Stuff. And then for this right here, we'll just get the common denominator. So what I will do is multiply the top and bottom by u to the 2022. So on the top, I will actually end up with u to the 2022. And then this right here will also be u to the 2022. And then this will just give us 1. So it's just the algebra for that. All right. This is equal to that. And again, just like what we said earlier, I can write this back with x, with t. doesn't matter. This means... Yeah, this means the integral going from 0 to infinity 1 over 1 plus x squared times 1 plus x to the 2022 is equal to integral going from 0 to infinity x to the 2022 over 1 plus x to the 20 x to the 2 and then uh, let me just change the water back like this x to the another way to think about this is that why am I able to do this is just that one one last time I'll explain this right? on the u axis whatever that graph is yeah you have the area, yes? I can write this back. Just change that to an x-axis. And then it's the same graph. And it's the same structure for the function, yeah? And then same area. This thing and nothing are the same. Just ignore that. Do not think about put this back for this u. No. We're trying to say this and that are the same. Just change back the down variable. Okay, so this time, unfortunately, I cannot do anything too much, huh? Because I cannot just move this around and then... Um, yeah, so what do we do? I'm kind of stuck. All right, check this out. Notice, I cannot bring this over because um, it doesn't really do me any good. But this is what we can do. Notice that they are equal. If we add them up, we get 1 plus x to the 2022. They cancel out with the factor on the bottom, and then we can figure out the rest. So, this is what we are going to do. Alright, so let's see how I shall write this. Let me drink something first.
if one day they can sponsor me, I'll really appreciate that. Yeah, it's a very good sports drink. All right, I'll do the traditional way, yeah? This right here, it's going to be a number. I will just call that to be I. I can call that to be K as well. I'm not saying I of T or what now, it's just I, right? So what we did earlier was that we showed this integral and that integral are, well, they have the same value. So I'm going to do like this. Once we have the I right here, I can say, I equals that, yeah? Integral going from zero to infinity, one over one plus x squared, and then x one plus it. x to the 2022. dx. But what I can also say is, it's the same as this. I can also say I equals the integral from zero to infinity x to the 2022 over 1 plus x squared 1 plus x to the 2022 it's kind of like the time that we did a wouldn't it be nice integral right then i look at these two things and add them up so we get 2i equals 1 plus x to the 2022 over 1 plus x squared 1 plus x to the 2022 and then we go from 0 to infinity so in another word i is going to be 1 half times the integral going from 0 to infinity and this and that cancel which i can just do this let's do this in our head this right here is inverse tangent of x. Plug in infinity, we get pi over 2. Plug in 0, we get 0. So we get pi over 2. So this right here, we get 1 half and multiply by pi over 2. Therefore, the answer is pi over 4. Yes, a lot of times, a lot of the integrals, yeah, just, they, they, the pi just want to show up. The pi just want to show up. I just want to show up. Okay. <sighs> Why does he feel like 10 hours already. Right now it's only 5 hours and 43 minutes. Uh, maybe it's just a sign of like me getting old. 75. Integrating going from negative 1 to 1. x squared over 1 plus 2 to the sine x power. Let me write this down again. Sorry. 75 integral going from negative 1 to 1 x squared over 1 plus 2 to the sine x dx hmm no hope to integrate with any whatever function in the usual sense but we can figure this out by doing some kind of symmetry or like substitution in integral property and all that stuff let's do the following Notice that on the top we have an even function. On the bottom we have an odd function. And it goes from negative one to one, okay? We like when we have integrals that goes from negative number to the positive of the same number, a positive number. Let's do, the, that, 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 let's do this. I'm gonna say that u equal to negative x, meaning x equals negative u dx equal negative du. So similar, huh? But let's see how this will help. x will be going from negative 1 to 1. And that will tell us u will be going from positive 1 to negative 1. Yeah, the word is changed again, but don't worry. Here we get parentheses. x is the same as 
u, so we have negative u, sorry, x is the same as negative u, and then we square that over 1 plus 2 sine of negative u, and then dx is the same as negative du. Similar like what we did earlier, we can use this negative to change the order of the limits. And we can get integral going from negative 1 to 1. And let's see, negative u squared half, that's just going to be u squared, it's the same thing, over this right here is 1 plus 2. Think for the sine and odd function. So we can put a negative right here. And then we have sine x and then, sorry, sine u. And we have du right here. That's good. And you know what's even better? This right here means 1 over 2 to the sine u, yeah? So let's clear the common denominator. Let's clear the complex fraction. I'm actually going to multiply the top and bottom by 2 sine u times 2 sine u. 2 to the sine u, sorry, 2 to the sine u to make it more clear. So this right here will give us the integral going from negative 1 to 1. And uh, we have u squared times 2 to the sine u. Yeah. And then this times that is 2 to the sine u, and this times that is just 1 in the u world. And you know what we are going to do. You see, this is equal to that. I will replace this with x. So you see, what we are saying is that this integral going from negative 1 to 1, when we have x squared over 1 plus 2 to the sine x, it's in fact equal to the integral going from negative 1 to 1. And here we have this extra friend of that. But the structure is x squared times 2 to the sine x over 1 plus 2 to the sine x dx. So how does this help? Well, it does just like what we did earlier. I will call this i. First, i is equal to integral going from negative 1 to 1. And we have x squared over 1 plus 2 to the sine x. Next, we have this. It's also the same as that, which is also the same as i. So i equals negative 1 to 1. x squared times 2 to the sine x over 1 plus 2 to the sine x. You guessed it, add them up, we get 2i equals integral going from negative 1 to 1. Hey, have a look. This is x squared, this is x squared. When we add them up, we can factor it. We get 1. Now let's put it down like this. We factor out the x squared first. And then we have 1 plus 2 to the sine x. Do we see it? <laughs> and then over, this right here is 1 plus 2 to the sine x. Yeah. Cancel, cancel. Uh huh. And then we can say i equals 1 half integral going from negative 1 to 1 of x squared. And in fact, if you want to make this even better, this right here, notice that x squared is an even function. So we can say this as 2 times the integral going from negative, sorry. Because x squared is an even function and we go from negative 1 to 1, so we can say this as 2 times the integral going from 0 to 1 of this, inter of this even function. And then we still have that 1 half right here, yeah? They cancel. So it's just the integral going from 0 to 1, x squared, dx. Work this out, you get 1 third. The reason I simplify like this and then show you guys this right here is because, look, x squared is here. And instead of going from negative 1 to 1, all you have to do is just go from 0 to 1 of that. I can give you guys a quick formula that will work. 
when we have the integral going from negative a to a of an even function over 1 plus a number, legitimate number, to an odd function, this right here will be equal to the integral going from 0 to a, yeah, and then of that even function. So if you remember this, you can do a lot of the hard integrals in no time like when they are in this kind of structure. So this is very nice. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, for number 75, I'm going to change. I'm going to put the sine x right here and then x squared right here. So let's have a look. All right, number 76. Negative one to one, but this time we have sine x over one plus two to the x squared power. I told you, yeah, I told you this, I just changed the sine and cos uh, x squared earlier. But this right here is even easier. The structure here is add function and then one plus two to the even function, yeah? The whole thing is odd function. So the answer is just zero. This is an odd function. However, when you go from negative one to one, and especially this thing converges, this right here is equal to zero and then we are done. Why is this odd? I'll show you real quick. All we have to do is we check sine of negative x over 1 plus 2 to the negative x squared. We want to see if we can legitimately put the x to the front. And then if we get that, and then it's odd. So firstly, sine is an odd function, so we can legitimately put a negative on the, uh, at the front. So sine, negative sine x, and you see this right here is 1 plus 2. Negative x squared is x squared. Yeah, so this right here is negative of the original. So it's out. That's why it works. <sighs> Number 77. Another integral going from negative 1 to 1. This time we have cosine x times inverse cosine x dx. How do we do this? Uh, it's an even function times an even function going from here to here, right? So maybe let's just do a quick shortcut. Maybe this is just twice the integral going from zero to one of cosine x times cosine inverse of x dx. And how do we integrate cosine x? That's past the sign, yeah? So we have two and then past the sign x. And how do we integrate Inverse cosine x, well, that's just uh, inverse sine, yeah? Negative one like this. And then we go from zero to one. So put a one in there, we get two sine one times inverse sine of one. Plug in zero, we get zero, and we're done. No, this is incorrect. No, just, just, just plain. Okay, I know it's 77 and it's like six hours in, but yeah, we should, we should still have fun, okay? All right, how do we do this? Number 77, I'll put it down right here. Integral going from negative one to one, and we have cosine x inverse cosine x. Firstly, x is in between of negative one and one, so this right here makes sense. And we can replace this with 
the one that I told you guys earlier, the one we used it earlier, and that is its best friend, namely pi over 2 minus inverse sine x. And that's okay. And then what we can do next is, of course, just distribute the cosine and see what happens. So here we get integral negative 1 to 1. We can have pi over 2 times cosine x. It's a constant multiple times that. And let me close that. And then minus integral going from negative 1 to 1. Cosine x times inverse sine x. dx. Guess what? This is an even function. This is an odd function. Part of an even and odd function together. This is an odd function. Ah, just like that. So this part is legitimately equal to zero. So you just have to figure that out. So right here, I will write it. We have the pi over 2 at the front maybe. And then integrate cosine, we get positive sine. And then now we just have to go from negative 1 to 1, yeah? So, okay, I'll put it down right here. This right here gives us pi over 2. You know what? I want to just kind of honor the properties that we're doing. This right here is an even function. So when we go from negative 1 to 1, I can do 2 times the integral going from 0 to 1. And we still have this pi over 2, right? And then we have that cosine x dx. Okay. So this and that cancel, that's good. We have the pi right here. That's nice though. Okay. We have the pi right here. That's nice. Yeah, that's okay. And then integrating cosine, we get positive sine x. And then we go from 0 to 1. Plugging 0, plugging 1, plugging 0, we get uh, sine 1. Plugging 0, we just get. Sorry. Nothing wrong of what I did, but. This is not what I wanted to do. All right, I want to honor the property of the even and odd function. Right here, this is an even function. So I will just do two times the integral going from 0 to 1 instead. 0 to 1 instead. And then we have that pi over 2 cosine x dx. So that's good, huh? And now, let me bring your attention to here. We have this two all the way at the front. That's good. And then I want to integrate pi over 2 times cosine x. So that is pi over 2 times sine x. Yeah? And then we go from 0 to 1. Yes. And then I'm just going to plug in the 1 and plug in 0. So this right here is 2. And then we can plug in 1, so we just get pi over 2, and we have sine of 1. Plug in 0, we just get 0. So this is the answer, right? And in fact, the reason that I left the pi over 2 is because this. I can write this as, if you want, seriously, the answer is just equal to pi times sine of 1. And then you move on to the next question. But I want to have some fun. 2 sine of 1. Pi over 2. Suppressing the enough, this is the same as the inverse sine of 1. Hey, hey, this is good. So this is the correct answer to that. But wait. <laughs> you see? Okay. Have fun with this one on your own. All right, number 77, done. All 
right. 77 done. Just two more pages. Oh my goodness. Whew. Number 78. Oh yeah. I remember these three questions. One of my favorite ones. Number 78. The integral going from zero to infinity. Sine x over x. I know this is a special function. You can put si of x, but we want to find out its value because if we go from zero to infinity. First off, let me tell you that it converges. Keep that in mind. And then you have many ways to do this. I will use a way that you from the so-called differential equation class. So most likely you have seen it before. Um, yeah. Or you can also use Feynman's technique of integration. I will let I will leave, leave that to you. How do we do this? Check this out. I would like to tell you if we have the so-called Laplace transform, this thing, right? Laplace transform f of t here. Then the definition for this is the integral going from zero to infinity, and then we have e to the negative s times t and then we multiply by f of t dt f of t has to be a function with the so-called exponential order so that this right here converges and you will learn a lot more of this kind of things in your differential equation class we can also watch my differential equation marathon or the laplace marathon uh, to learn more about it all right this right here is pretty nice but let me tell you that if we have the plus transform of f of t over t, this right here is the following. This right here is the following. You actually integrate this from s to infinity, and then you look at f of u in the u world. And I would like to write this down where um, f of u is the Laplace transform of the function. Yeah. So let me put this in action for you. Firstly, I will also need you guys to know that if we have the Laplace transform of sine x, but technically we use sine t, so let's put down sine. Um, Okay, sine t. You send this to the s world, but again, that's like a dummy variable. So I will write it, I will just write this down 1 over 1 plus s squared. Okay, so note these three things. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, have a look. First, I want to do that. Oh yeah, 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 what am I doing? All right, let's look at this. If I want to do a Laplace transform of sine t over t, you guys will see a connection of all these things real quick. This right here, by definition, is the integral going from zero to infinity, e to the negative s t times sine t over t dt. This is not what we want this is but the connection is that if we can make s equal to zero then this will be one and we can get the thing that we want but to integrate this you can use again famous technique of integration aka differentiation under the integral sign aka a problem that we did earlier or you can just use this property which is derived from the differentiation under the integral sign aka famous technique of integration so this is good, this is great, but let me tell you why it's even better. This right here, what we can do is just use this property here. I'll put this down in blue. I'll put this down in blue. This right here is integral going from s to infinity. f of u, f of u is the Laplace transform sine t. So you see, Laplace transform sine t is 1 over 1 plus s square just worked out this 
if you don't have the over t, then it's easy. You can just work it out with integration by parts. I'll leave that to you. And um, right here, the output that we want is u. So instead of using s, we'll put on u. Okay. So this right here, I just have to put down um, 1 over 1 plus u square in the u world. That's all. Um, because again, of this thing here. Yeah, Laplace transform, right? F of u is Laplace transform of f of t without the divided by t. So if you just look at Laplace of sine t, it's 1 over 1 plus s squared. But for this part, look at the structure, don't look at the variable. Let's use u for it. And when we do this, we get inverse tangent of u, and then we go from s to infinity. When we put infinity to tangent, in inverse tangent, we get pi over 2. Minus, put s in there, so we get inverse tangent of s. Alright, so this thing is equal to that. So, guess what? Here, we have this s here. Yeah, This is equal to that, namely pi over 2 minus inverse tangent of s. If I want to get that, all we have to do is just look at this part of the equality, the equation. I will just say let s equal to 0, so that will give us 1, and that will give us the integral going from 0 to infinity, sine t over t dt equals <laughs> pi over 2. Again, pi over 2, pi comes out of, again, comes out of nowhere, right? Uh, again, almost nowhere. Just like that. Very cool, isn't it? All right, so I think this is the cleanest way, but of course, I use the property for, from Laplace transform, and that property is derived from um, famous technique of integration, so, mm, yeah. But don't worry, that was just the first power. I also have the second and also the third power. Next question, number 79. Integral going from 0 to infinity, and let's look at sine squared x over x squared dx. Let me tell you, this thing right here is also equal to pi over 2. But I'll prove it for you guys real quick. Check this out. Let's do a integration by part first. So di plus minus. I'm going to be differentiating sine square x and then let's integrate 1 over x squared. We did this kind of things earlier already, right? a few times, so yeah. Take the derivative of that, we get 2 sine x times cosine x. Integrate that, we get negative 1 over x. First part of the answer, we get negative sine square x over x. Multiply. And then we put this down inside of an integral. Negative negative becomes plus, and we have the integral. And this thing right here, guess what? It's nicely equal to sine of 2x. And then we have this over x, and then in the x world. So here, we still go from 0 to infinity for the integral. But this right here, we can plug in right 0 to infinity. Yeah. OK. Technically, we have to do limit for both of them, so let's do it real quick. I will show you the limit as x approaching infinity of negative sine squared x over x. You can use the squeeze theorem. The type is at most 1, right, and then divided by infinity, whatever you want to do. You end up with 0, okay? And then 
The other one that we have to do is the limit as x approaching 0, and technically this is 0 plus. So 0 plus of negative sine square x over x. To do this, the quick way is I will just tell you the answer is 0. No. I will break this apart because the limit of a product is the product of the limit. Negative all the way to the front. Write this as the limit as x approaching 0 plus. Let's write down sine x first times the limit as x approaching 0 plus of sine x over x. This is the famous limit equaling to 1. This is an easy limit equaling 0. So on the whole, 0 times 1 is equal to 0. So the first part here is legitimately equal to 0. For the second part, I'll show you real quick. x is going from 0 to infinity. Just to use up, and this is nice. Let u be 2x du is equal to 2dx dx equals du over 2. Uh, what's x though? Let's see. x equals u over 2. Alright. This right here. I'll, I'll do this in, in red. This integral in red is equal to... This is 0 already, so it doesn't matter. When x is 0, put it here, u will also be equal to 0. When x is infinity, u will also be going to infinity. And then we have sine 2x is u over x is u over 2. And then dx is du over 2. Do we see it? <laughs> this 2 and that 2 cancel, and we just have the integral going from 0 to infinity of sine u over u. We did that earlier, didn't we? We did! We certainly did. So this right here is pi over 2. Now next one, you know what's coming. Number 80, integral from 0 to infinity, sine to the third power x over x to the third power dx. Of course, pi over 2, right? No. 3 pi over 8. 3 pi over 8. Right, let's move on to number 81. Here we have the integral of, double integral of, just kidding. Let me show you guys that, right? So, how can I move down to that? Don't worry. All right, number 80. Why the integral going from zero to infinity of sine to the third power x over x to the third power dx is equal to 3 pi over 8. Oh my goodness. Nobody likes that, right? Don't worry, don't worry. I got you. Unfortunately, the pattern didn't work. Ah, I owe you guys one more example for Feynman's technique of integration. So I will give you guys another Feynman's integration example right here. Here we go. I'm going to call this i of t. Starting, putting t here next to the x. So we get the integral going from 0 to infinity. Sine of, sorry, sine third power. Tx over x to the third power, like so. And dx. Here we go. Take the derivative with respect to t. So we will first get i prime of t. And for this right here, I will just do the derivative for you guys. We go from 0 to infinity. Differentiate this, we get 3, and then bring the power to the front, so 3, and then sine 
square and then tx and then multiply by the derivative of sine tx which will give us cosine tx and then multiply by the derivative of the inside tx in the t world so we have to multiply by x that's the chain rule for that part and then over x to the third power dx and nicely enough this and that cancel what x squared yeah. uh, almost Okay, uh, sign of x squared. I don't really know what to do next. Hmm. But you see, the deal is that if we differentiate this with respect to t, we can squeeze our x, and then this x can cancel with an x on the bottom. So if we can somehow do this again, would it be really nice? Yes, it will. But you really don't want to differentiate this right now because it's a product of crazy stuff, right? So maybe let's do some identity business before we um, differentiate this again. So, okay, I will use this. Uh, let's see. I will use the identity. Three, I will put this as one minus Okay, right, let's, let's deal with cosine right now. Cosine square of tx, yeah? And then cosine of tx. Good, and then over, ah, wrong column. Over x square dx. The three all the way at the front, no problem. Zero to infinity. Cosine tx. That's good. And then minus cosine to the third power tx. Ooh, shall we really be differentiating this now? If I differentiate this, we get three cosine square of tx. And then times negative sine of tx and times x and oh sorry x squared and then that can cancel with one of the x on the bottom that's good and then the problem here is that here you see we will maybe write it with one minus sine square and we'll end up with like one minus sine to the third power that's I don't see it's a good trade-off. So let's try to do what we did before. That is the power reduction formula, not for integral, but just the regular uh, sine cosine business. So focus on that and reduce the power and see, and hope for the best. Yeah. So how do we go about this? Let's say, we have just that part, cosine of tx times cosine square of tx. Okay, this right here is, oh, there are two ways to go about it, I remember. One is you can write the cosine triple angle formula and then it has the third power part and isolate that. Do I want to do that? Or do I want to do this? Mm. I, I will do this, don't worry. All right, so this right here is equal to this time, so I'll give you guys some more flavor of the formula approaches and all that. Anyway, this right here is cosine of tx. What should we do with that? One minus sine squared? No, that does not really help. Let's use the power reduction formula for this, namely one half times one plus cosine of two input is tx. Parentheses, parentheses, yes. And then we can see this times that is one half cosine of 
tx so that's that's good that's very good and then one half and we have cosine times that right so it's cosine of tx times cosine of 2tx and now the product of these two things is equal to one half cosine of first minus second so tx minus 2tx is negative tx times no plus yeah plus um the second part is cosine of this thing plus that thing which is 3tx yeah <laughs> so oh let me let me combine this right here first so we have that one half right here so this is one over four so this is one over four yeah so one over four and then plus that is three over four and then we have cosine of tx because this right here is the same as cosine of negative t thanks to cosine being an even function and then this thing right here is one over four times that so it's plus one over four cosine of three tx <laughs> so i'm going to do the this right here this is three integral zero to infinity cosine of tx minus all that stuff which is 3 over 4 and then we have cosine of tx plus 1 over 4 cosine of 3 tx and then all over x squared and keep in mind we're just using trick identities for all this all right to be quite honest i am not entirely sure if i did this correctly or not i just want to give you guys the best video possible so let me do the other approach that is coming up from the triple angle identity and then go backwards so let's see if today i have cosine of three theta this right here is the same as cosine of theta plus two theta which is cosine of the first times cosine of the second minus this i remember correctly sine of the first times sine of the second and then i want everything to be in terms of cosine so this right here becomes cosine theta times two cosine squared theta minus one and then this right here is minus sine theta times two sine squared theta no sine theta cosine theta all right so multiply this out we get two cosine third power theta minus cosine theta and then this is two one minus sine square which is one minus cosine square theta so negative two cosine theta times one so negative two cosine theta and then negative negative becomes positive and then we have that two and then cosine the third power theta and then all together we have this and that which is four cosine third power theta and uh, minus three cosine theta yeah so you see this thing is the same as that thing i want to isolate this so i put this to the other side and then divide everybody by four so ladies and gentlemen if i have this we get cosine third power theta being equal to this thing here first then i will get three over four yeah three over four cosine theta and then it has a triple angle here and uh, is plus one over four cosine of three theta so here tx put the tx here tx here 
TX here. Got that. This is correct. All right. Keep in mind that's just the proof for the triple angle identity or the power reduction formula for cosine to the third power, depending on how to look at it. <laughs> All right, now, this and that can be combined. One minus three over four, so this is one over four, and then we have cosine of tx, yeah? And then it's a minus, be really careful with that. But the point is, the one over four, one over four can be factored all the way to the front. So we have three over four and an integral, and then we have zero to infinity, and then let me just have cosine tx minus one over four is in the front already. Cosine of three tx over x dx. <laughs> All right. Now, based on this, let's just do this in your head. I double prime of t. Differentiate this. Differentiate that. We still have the 3 over 4 at the front. We still have the integral going from 0 to infinity. Take the derivative of this, we get negative sine of tx and then multiply by x. Yeah? And then take the derivative of that is mm, originally was minus, but the derivative of cosine is negative, so it's plus, and then we have cosine of 3tx times x over x, sorry, x squared here, and it was x squared here, and then dx. Now, this, this and that can cancel. So what we're really looking at is this. I double prime, yeah? <laughs> I double prime of t is equal to 3 over 4, but Let's, let's do this like this. Factoring out, let's, let's do it like this. Negative 3 over 4, integral going from 0 to infinity. This and that cancel, so this part is sine of tx over x, and let's close that. Let me double check. That's correct. And then this is positive, and it does have the 3 over 4, so plus 3 over 4. Sorry, let me just write it down more right here. Negative 3 over 4 integral going from 0 to infinity, and then we have sine tx over x. Good. Close that, and then we add positive 3 over 4 integral going from 0 to infinity, and sorry, that should be a sine. The derivative of cosine should be a sine. And this is sine of. 3tx over just x. Very good. All right. This is similar to what we did earlier. Just do a u sub. Let u equal tx. And um, just work it out. Just work it out. And t shall be non-negative, right? Just just work it out and then yeah, just 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 work out t's t t t t to be ah, t t t yeah okay. Because if t is not <laughs> negative the infinity is gonna yeah, just, just just work it out. But anyway oh Hold on, let me just do this carefully a little bit. Yeah, I want t to be non-negative right here. That would be ni much nicer for us. But if you work this out like what we did earlier, then we get pi over two. So this right here is negative three over four times pi over two. Likewise,
Oh, sorry, there's one little part that I missed. When we differentiate this part, it's not just x, but rather 3x. Because if I say this is power over 2, guess what? There is 0. That doesn't make sense. So I'm sorry. Let me do this. Let me do this again. Differentiate this, we get that. Differentiate negative cosine, we get plus this sign. 3tx, yes, and then the derivative of the inside, with respect to t, we have to multiply by 3x. Yeah. And now let's split this. So first we have negative 3 over 4 integral going from 0 to infinity, and then we have sine of tx over just x, because this and that cancelled. And we can close this nicely. Next, 3 over 4 times 3, it's 9 over 4, so plus 9 over 4, and then we integrate from 0 to infinity, and then we have sine of tx over x and dx. Yes. All right. For this part, you let t do a u sub, let u equal to tx, and then right here, uh, we should just say some, somewhere, let's say t is greater than or equal to 0. Okay. Uh, it should be okay, right? there's no violation. Then we can just focus on that. If t is less than 0, thanks for thanks to sign being our function, just put a negative in the front. Anyway, that's what we have. And um, yeah, you can work this out. You will see you, it's going to give you, in fact, you can have any constant multiple. This is just going to give you pi over 2. Negative 3 over 4 times this thing is pi over 2. Likewise, plus 9 over 4. And that will give you pi over 2 as well. So all in all, let's see what we get. That's negative 3 over 3 pi plus 9 pi. So 6 pi over 8, which is 3 pi over 4. So all this is 3 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4. I think that is correct. Okay, that's 3 pi over 4. Okay, that is 3 pi over 4. <laughs> this is not the answer yet. Alright, check this out. I double prime of t is this crazy integral, yeah? And then we see that it's always going to be 3 pi over 4. Now we have to go back to i of t. So i prime of t, right? We have to integrate this right here first, which is going to be the integral of what? Of this result, which is our 3 pi over 4. <laughs> In the t world, like that. And of course, this right here will give us 3 pi over 4 t, but don't forget the plus c. Now, how do we figure out the c? We have to look back to i of t being this guy. So what do we do? Again, pick an easy number for t. So let t equal 0. Then we can see that. I'm not going to show you the road right now, just kind of follow along. Put a 0 in here and here. Sine of 0 is 0 thanks to that. So integrating 0 from 0 to infinity is 0. Equal, put a 0 here is 0 plus c. So c is equal to 0. Yay. Yeah. Now we have this guy. I want to get to i of t, which is the integral of this guy, which is 3 pi over 4 t in the t world. And when we integrate that, uh, we get, let's, let's finish here, we get 3 pi over 8 t squared. Yes, yes, add 1 and then yeah, and then plus c, let's, let's say this is c1, 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 and let's say this is c2. Okay, so how do we figure out what c2 is? Again, let's 
looking at of t, which is this right here, and we have this thing, and I'm just going to let t equal to zero, this thing in blue is zero, equal this thing when t is equal to zero is zero plus t2. So c2 equal to zero. Ladies and gentlemen, i of t, which is this guy, integral going from zero to infinity of sine to the third power tx over x to the third power dx is equal to 3 pi over 8 t squared. Yes, I'm not kidding. <laughs> and when t is equal to 1, that's exactly what we wanted. So now, let t equal to 1. We get the integral going from 0 to infinity, sine to the third power of just x over x to the third power dx is equal to this thing's 1, right? So we have just 3 pi over 8. <laughs> Let me see. Wow, that took me at least half an hour. So please have a look. And now, 20 more questions, and they are not the easy ones. Double integrals. Uh, double integrals. All right. Whew. All right, number 81. All right, I'm going to do, do this right here, number 81. Integral, integral. Yes, we have a double integral. And uh, the first one is going from 0 to 1. And then the next one is pi y to pi. And then the input, you guys might guess that sin x over x dx dy oh my god right okay i'm just going to show you guys all the necessary steps and then if it is like a long computation i'm just going to tell you guys the answer all right but here's the thing if you want to integrate sin x over x yes you can say s i of x but that's it's not really going to be helpful in terms of coming up with the final numerical value and the problem with this is that we have this double integral with x going first. So let's try to change the order of integration. But you have to be really careful of the region that we are dealing with. If it's a rectangular region that we are integrating over, then we can just change x, uh, dx and dy, that's no problem. But if it's a function here, then I would recommend you guys to sketch the uh, region and then do the following. So check this out. So right here, here we go. X, right? So we have to look at X is equal to pi times Y. So let's see, X is equal to pi times Y. This means Y equals one over pi times X. So depending on how you like it, when you graph it, it's the equation of a line. So I will just graph this. I graph that. Let's say that's that. And then the other function is x is equal to pi. Hold on. Uh, my picture is, I need to have space. So let's say this right here. Ah, no, sorry. All right, x is equal to pi y. So right here, x is equal to pi times y, okay? So we look at this, and then we go to x is equal to pi. 
So we have this right here, and then x is equal to pi, that stays right here. So it's a vertical line. Don't forget this is x equal to pi. And then next, we look at dy. So I'll put this down in red. I should have written this in black and right, red already. Yeah? If we look at dy, y goes from 0 to 1. So this is y equal to 0. Right? y equal to 0. I'll put it down right here. And then, of course, you can double check. This right here will be y equal to 1. So the region that we're talking about is this bottom bottom uh, triangle here. Anyway, this is like a function. It's kind of like you have a function like right here and you're trying to find the volume. It's three dimensional, that kind of thing. Okay, so what do we do? Okay, originally, originally, we go horizontally. Right? Um, we have this to that. So now we have to look at this vertically. So we draw a vertical rectangle because we want to go with dy first. So this right here, I want to have dy going first and then dx. And then we have the integral. Oh, sorry. dy will be with red and then dx will be with black. And the function inside does not change. It still does a function right here. So we still have the sine x over x. So if you have the dy right here integrating that, it's so much easier because x is like a constant in the y world. I'll show you guys how to integrate that in like a second. But how do we do it though? As I said, we draw a vertical rectangle. So look at this right here first. For the blue part, you see y goes from 0 from the bottom. So that's good. And then once we reach to the top, this y value, well, is this equation. We will have to isolate this y, and y equals 1 over pi times x. And I will just write this. Uh, yeah, 1 over pi times x. So that's that. Then, for the x part, well, it's still going from 0 to x. That means 0 to pi. You see? dx, you start with this x value, and then with this x value, so we still go with 0 to pi. So that's that. Now let's integrate this. Very easy. Outside, you keep it. Integral of going from 0 to pi. Inside, we have sine x over x. In the y world, you just have the y here. That's it. Okay. Integral sine x over x dx. This right here is si of x plus c. Integral sine x over x if you have dy. If there's no connection with x and y, meaning you don't say like y is equal to x squared or whatnot, none of this, you know, that you substitution, no, none of that, then the integral of this is just sine x over x times y plus maybe not constant because usually we deal with a definite integral in this situation. All right, and then we go from zero to one over pi x and then dx after that. So let's go ahead and do it real quick. Put this in here, we have x over pi. So let me write it down for you guys. This is integral going from zero to pi sine x over x and then we have x over pi yeah and then plugging zero we just get zero so this is okay so about the x guess what this and that cancel <laughs> and we will get one over pi at the front and then integral going from zero to pi sine x dx Right, work this out on your own. This is 1 over pi times 2. So we get 2 over pi. Yeah, just like that. Very cool, huh? I designed this. <laughs> okay.
So of course, the next question is, do we always have to change the order of integrals? Uh, the answer is no. Here's another example. Number 82, double integral. Uh, I will put a outside 100. Zero to one, and then here we have inverse tangent of x, and then pi over four, and then let's say we have cosine y dy dx. If you look at this right here, can we integrate cosine y in the y world? Yeah, that's pretty straightforward. So let's just do it. So right here, we have the integral going from 0 to 1. Integral of cosine y is positive sine y. And then we will just have to go from inverse tangent of x to pi over 4, and then dx. So this right here, we get the integral going from 0 to 1. And then we have sine of pi over 4, and then minus sine of inverse tangent of Oops. Yeah, like that, and then uh, dx. Hmm. Maybe we'll put another parentheses. All right, so let's figure this out. Let's figure it out on the integral. So here we have the integral going from 0 to 1. Sine of pi over 4 is 1 over square root of 2. For this right here, let's draw a right triangle real quick. So inverse tangent, so x over 1. And then this right here is uh, square root of 1 square plus x square. So sine of this, where the, the angle is here, the, this is the angle, is x over that. So it's minus x over square root of 1 plus x square. And then we have the dx. All right, integrate. 1 over square root of, just kidding. 1 over square root of 2x. And integrate this, you just do u sub. I uh, will leave that to you. You get minus square root of 1 plus x squared. Yeah. And then you go from 0 to 1. Okay. Putting 1, we get 1 over square root of 2. Putting 1, we get square root of 2, so minus square root of 2. So that's the first part. Minus putting 0, we get 0, and putting 0, we get minus 1. So be really careful. I shall just write down the whole thing, 0 minus 1. Yeah. Okay, and then just get a common denominator and all that stuff. So multiply by square root of 2, multiply by square root of 2, and uh, this is 2. But 1 minus 2 is negative 1. The, the one minus minus negative negative one is one, and then two mi one minus two is negative. So yes, this this, this number one minus one over square root. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Okay, so 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 that 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 will do it. Okay. Now. Ready for more double integrals? Number 83. Okay, let's put the red one on the outside. That looks like a weird symbol. Integral, and uh, we go from 0 to 1. Integral, we go from y to 1. And here we have 1 over 1 plus x to the fourth power dx and then dy. So it depends on what the integral. <laughs> what they give you. Sometimes dx goes first, sometimes dx, dy goes first. Here. dx. Mm, 1 over 1 plus x to the fourth power is super hard to integrate. You can try it. I have a video on that. I wouldn't recommend you guys do this. So let's change the order of integration. Okay, x is equal to y, so that's just the diagonal, that's good. Like that. 
and then x is equal to 1. So again, it's x equal to y, starting from here, and you move to the left. So we are looking at this region here, yeah, left to right. And then for y, it is y equal to 0, and then to 1. Right. Bottom to top, so it's this triangle here. So it was left to right, so it was meant to be a horizontal rectangle first, but now to change the water, we draw vertical rectangle. And I will just write this down. This is the integral, integral. We want dy goes first, and then dx. And the inside is still 1 over 1 plus x to the fourth power. OK, so if y goes first, then we look at bottom to the top. Bottom is when y is equal to 0. Up to top, top is y equals x. x, 0 to 1. Integrating this is very nice because we just have to multiply by an x. So this right here, we get, let me see. Now let's do this on red. 1 over 1 plus, so multiply by y, fourth power, and then y. Yeah, it's just 1. And then, oh yeah, and then we go from 0 to x and then dx. Put x here. We get x over 1 plus x to the fourth power. And then put 0 here, so it's gone. That's good. So this is what we have. Integrate this. Here's the trick. Integral. Oh, that looks like a super cool x. This is the integral going from 0 to 1. x over 1 plus parentheses x squared squared dx. Do your substitution on your, in your head. That u equal x squared. We need a 2, so divided by 2, yeah? So 1 half inverse tangent of x squared. And then, in 0 to 1. Put 1 in here. Inverse tangent of 1 is pi over 4. Pi over 4 times 1 half is pi over 8. Divided by... Plugging 0 is 0, so it's pi over 8. That's the answer. That's the answer. OK. That was nice. When can we switch dx and dy without any worry? Only when the region is a rectangle. Right? So if it's like a, just numbers, then that's it. But how often do we see that? Not often, I'll tell you. Unless you have like a super lucky day on the exam or so that. Number 84. <sighs> okay, 0 to 1. Square root of x to 1, cosine of y to the third power, dy, dx. So again, in this case, it's not possible to integrate cosine to the third power, cosine y to the third power, um, in the usual sense. So again, let's change the fourth term integration. So let's look at the region. Here, y goes first. So y is square root of x. So we look at this right here, y is square root of x. And then from bottom to top, right? because we have y, so this is the bottom, and we go up to top. So we go like this, y is equal to 1. OK, so bottom to top. And then we look at the x, which is right here x is 0, and then this right here is x equals 1. So it's this region that we are talking about now. Okay? So it really depends. You be really careful. It's not this, it's that. All right, so how do we change it? If we want to change the order of the integration, then we switch 
this we want the dx go first and then dy if dx goes first that means we want to look at this from left to right so we want to draw a horizontal rectangle that might be helpful okay so x starts with zero that's good but you see this rectangle it changes the horizontal length right and that changes y equals square root of x meaning x is equal to y square how about y though y goes from 0 to 1 next and then the function stays the same we have cosine of y to the third power integrate this real quick let's let's try this let's integrate this in our head this is the constant in the x world integrating this we just put the x and then oops sorry should be y here should be y here put the x here and then integrate the, let me plug in y square so we will first have y square and then cosine of y to a third power yeah and then plugging zero it's just zero that's nice and then we have the dy here now for this let's just do a u sub let u equal y to the third power so we need a one third here for the result of integration and then the integral of this is sine and then we have y to the third power and then we plug in plug in zero to one so ladies and gentlemen one third sine of one <sighs> number 85 uh, I see the hope I'm almost done <laughs> thank you thank you thank you everybody zero to one over square root of three integral and then we have inverse tangent of x to pi over 6 and uh, we have secant to the fifth power y dy dx if you would like yes you can use the reduction formula that we did earlier today to integrate secant to the fifth power of y in the y world but let's not do that change the variable change the order okay let's see how it goes so firstly i will have to draw y is equal to the inverse tangent so it looks like this right so i'll just say like it has a horizontal asymptote so this is y equals inverse tangent of x and then y equals so this is the bottom to the top y is equal to pi over 6 let's say this is pi over 6 okay. and then we go from 0 and this intersection you can verify on your own it's indeed 1 over square root of 3 okay. so it's this huh? button to the top button to the top so it's like that and now we we'll change water so horizontal rectangle right in here and let's just this and then secant to the fifth power y ah it's wrong color secant to the fifth power y dy dx no, I have dy dx already. Why am I talking about dx dy? Sorry, dx dy. Here we go. Dx. So from left to right, horizontal rectangle. Start with zero. This is this function, meaning just go ahead and do x equals tangent of y. So here we have tangent of y, and then y goes from here to here so it's 0 to power 6 now if, if is this 
any better? Yes, it is. Trust me. Here, integrate this thing in the x world. And yeah, let, let's just do that. We just put x and we put a tangent, yeah? So first we have 0 to pi over 6 still at the front. And then we have secant to the fifth power y times tangent y. And the plugging through just nothing, so that's what we have. So we have the dy here. How do we deal with this though? Let me tell you, put out a secant. So here, integral going from 0 to pi over 6. Secant to the fourth power y. And then let's have secant y tangent y dy. Put u to be secant y. The derivative here is that. So we can see this is one fifth secant fifth power y, and we go from zero to pi over six. What's secant of pi over six though? Okay. Pi over six is 30 degrees right here. And then we will have one square root of three and two. And secant is this over that. So we are going to get 1 over 5 and then 2 over square root of 3 to the fifth power. That's the first term, yeah? And then minus, put 3 in here, we get 1. So it's 1 over 5. Secant of 0 is 1. Fifth power is 1 and multiply by that, okay? Finally, we just clean things up. 2 to the 5th power is 32. Square root of 3 to the 5th power is... 3 times 3 is 9. Because 2 of the 3 come out, so 9. 9 times 5 is 45. And then 1 more square root of 3, and then lastly, minus 1 over 5. Okay. That's correct. Yay. Right. So I dropped my blue marker and then I cannot find it anymore, so I will just get another blue marker. <sighs> what question do I do? Oh yeah, number 85, so a couple more questions to go. So number 86. Integral going from 0 to square root of pi over 2. Sorry, the number is just very small. Square root of pi and then over 2, right? So the 2 is not in the square root. And then 0 to x squared. And then x secant. Oops, wrong color. dy dx like this okay so shall we change the order of integration no we don't have to oops sorry 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 sorry, sorry. dx dy so dy dx so we change the order of integration let me tell you no here we can integrate secant square y in the y world easily this is just a constant multiple leave it right, leave it so here we are going to get integral going from zero to square root of pi over two this is going to give us tangent y and then let me just have x times tangent y and then keep in mind y goes from zero to x squared here and then here we have the dx so put the x squared and then put that so here we get the integral going from zero to square root of pi over two and we have x times tangent 
y is now x squared, okay? and then plugging 0 into the y is just 0, so that's nothing, and that's pretty much it. Then we can do a u sub, right? so that u equal x squared, and uh, yeah, and let me also remind you guys the integral of tangent u du is uh, ln absolute value of secant u. Why am I telling you guys this? I did this earlier too. So let me erase it. All right, just do a u sub on your own like that, and we'll end up with one half. Integrating tangent u, we get ln no need for absolute value, just parentheses, secant u, which is x squared. <sighs> All right, and then we go from zero to square root of pi over two. And we get one half, ln parentheses, secant of square root of pi over two square, like this, like that, and the minus put zero in here is one. L and one is zero, so we don't have to worry about it. And then here inside it's just secant of pi over four. So this is one half L n secant of pi over four. And what's L n of secant pi over secant pi over four is square root of two. So this right here is one half L n of square root of 2. And square root is the same as 1 half power. 1 half can be brought into the front, so we have 1 over 4 L on 2. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Number 87. Integral going from 0 to 4, integral going from 0 to y, 2 over x plus 1, y plus 1, and uh, we have dx going first, and then dy. Alright, so uh, same thing, you don't really have to change the order of integration. So I'll just integrate it. Here we have going from 0 to 4 first. This is just a constant, yeah, so just keep it 2 over y plus 1. Just leave it like that. No problem on it, okay? And then, um, do, do, do. <sighs> integrate ln integrate x plus 1 is ln, so it's ln, and we don't have to worry about its opacity, so x plus 1, yeah. Okay, and then we go from 0 to y, in the y world here, y goes in here first, so we have integral 0 to 4, let's put a 2 at the front, yeah, and then ln of y plus 1, over y plus 1 and then dy yeah put the y in here so that's what we have and um, integrating this all right so this right here I'll give you guys a little hint we let u equal to ln of y plus 1 because du will be 1 over y plus 1 dy so in fact we are you just integrating u in the y world so we get the 2, and then integrating u is u squared over 2, right? So the 2 cancel out. This 2 cancel out. Now this 2 is no more. Now this 2 is no more. But it's just going to be ln of y plus 1 to the second power. And then we go from 0 to 4. So put a 4 in here we get ln of 9, no, 5. And then square, put a 0 in there, it's just nothing, so ln of 5 square. You can write it down like this, or... Mm, I don't know if really people do it like that. Let me see how to write it. Eh, 
maybe this right here is slightly more clear. So ln five squared, or some people write it as ln two of five. Yeah. Okay. Am I going to do any three pointer growth? Maybe in the future. Not now. Definitely not now. Not this time. Sorry. Okay, number 88. Integral going from 0 to square root of pi. And then integral going from 0 to pi. And then y times sine of x plus y squared dx. And then dy. Okay, for this one, I just want to show you guys what I mean by you can change the order of dx dy if the region is a rectangle. Notice we have dx dy, yeah? So x is going from 0 to pi, and then square root of pi is smaller, so let's say we have it from 0 to square root of pi. Uh, this is x. This region. If you would like, this is actually the same thing as we integrate um, x first. So I will still write this down inside. Okay, so sorry. And then y sine of x plus y squared dy dx. You can switch this. dy can be inside first, like that. In that case, you just put 0 to square root of pi. And then if you look at x, you go from here to here, which is 0 to pi. It's a rectangle. You can switch it without any worry. When you have functions, when you have curves, be careful. All right. But the truth is, for this one, we don't have to switch the water. In my opinion, they are the same. They are about the same difficulty. So let's just integrate inside one first. Integral 0 to square root of pi. Integrating x, y are just constants. So we get negative cosine. So the y is a constant multiple, we keep it. And then integrate sine, we get negative cosine. And uh, we have x, and the derivative x plus y squared just one, so nothing else we have to worry about. So this is the integral for that, yeah? And then we have to plug in numbers, 0 to pi dy. And be super careful, we are in the x world, so this right here, we have to put it in the x. So 0 to square root of pi, put pi in x, negative y cosine of pi plus y squared. And then put 0 in here. Mm. Oh, and let's see, this is like this, and then minus negative y, put 0 in here, just cosine of 0 plus y squared. Don't need that anymore. Close parentheses, close, and then finally we have that dy. Okay, trick identity. Cosine of, let me write it down to make it more clear. Cosine of pi plus theta equals negative cosine theta. So with that being said, this pi, which is just keep it and make that positive. So this right here will give us integral going from 0 to square root of pi. 
Again, make that positive, then we just have cosine of y. Sorry, y at the front. Y here, and then cosine of y squared. And that becomes positive because of the pi. My negative negative is positive, and then again another y and then zero doesn't matter. So that's what we have. Yeah, and guess what? You can use some kind of symmetry to argue this, but let's just do it. Not really symmetry though, it's not what I'm talking about. It's not symmetry from 0 to square root of pi. Anyway. Oh, I thought it was like a symmetry, but the answer is still 0 anyway. Anyway, anyway. Okay, y, y is 2y, cosine of y squared. We integrate this from 0 to square root of pi dy. The inside here give us the integral of cosine is positive sine. And then it's just y squared. Yeah, we well, have 2y here already. And then we go from 0 to square root of pi. Put the square root of pi here, sine of pi is 0. Put 0 in here, it's also 0. Oh, no, we get 0. <laughs> yeah. Eighty-nine. Fix my hair. Integral going from zero to two, and then integral going from zero to x. Uh, sorry, x to two. X. times the square root of 1 plus y to the third power dy dx We're in the y world, can we integrate this part? Know that that's a constant multiple But let me tell you, it's not possible So, change of variable is the best Let's see y goes from x, right, so y is equal to x. It's this line again. So we go from the bottom, right, the bottom to the top. y is 2, so this is y equals 2. Y, huh? And then x goes from 0 to 2. So it's this region. Okay, I want the integral and then integral and then the inside stays, which is x square root 1 plus y third power. I want dx going first and then dy next. If dx goes first, we look at the horizontal cut. From left to right, left is 0, right is x equals y. y goes from 0 to 2. Now, we have an x here, so this time it's not so easy. We have to integrate x, which is x squared over 2. Plugging y, so all together right here, we could get 0 to 2, and then we get y squared over 2. Okay, and the plugging 0 is nothing. And then we have the square root of 1 plus y third power dy. And now, put u to be 1 plus y to the third power <sighs> Okay, let's try if we can do this in our head Put y to be y to the third Put u to be y to the 1 plus y to the third power We need, a, we need to divide it by 3, yeah? 
we have y squared already, so we divide by we need to divide it by three. So it's one over six, and then we have u to the one half power. Integrate that is u to the one half plus one is three half. Divided by the new powers, multiply by two thirds. So it's one over nine. Yeah, so it's one over nine here. And then we plug in numbers, zero to two. Just work this out on your own, yeah. <laughs> so altogether we get 26 over nine. Yeah, put a two, but I'll still do it. Put a two here, two is eight, eight plus one is nine. And I take the square root of that is 3, 3 to the third power is 27 over 9. Put 0 in here is 1 over 9, so 26 over 9. Okay, I did it. I just didn't write it down. <sighs> Number 90. <laughs> 0 to ln2. e to the x to 2. e to the x to 2 and then we have two x y over L and Y in the Y world first and then the X Okay, in the y world, y over l and y, we cannot integrate. If it's l and y over y, yes, but not this one. So again, change of variable, the change of change of order. Y is e to the x, yeah? So this right here is one, don't forget, don't forget one. And then to two, so bottom to the top, so let's say it's two right here. Oh, that's horrible. This because if one it should be like this. Ah. Okay. okay, number ninety. We have this double integral, and of course, if you do care y, and here we have y over l and y, we cannot integrate that. So let's just change the order of integration. So let's look at the region. We are looking at the bottom is e to the x. So you have it like this. And then 2, so let's say it's right here. So this is y equals 2, and this is y equals e to the x. And then we are going from x equals 0 to ln2. So it's this region here. Okay. Integral, integral 2xy over ln y. dx going first and then dy next. In that case, look at from left to right first. Draw a horizontal rectangle. Start from zero. This right here is the curve. So x is ln y. So I'll put that down right here. And then dy <laughs> is, be really careful. Here is one. One. 1 to 2, 1 to 2, so 1 to 2. Okay, integrating 2x in the x world, we get x squared, we get x squared. So I think I will just do this one in, let us do it like this, integral 1 to 2, and then we have y over l and y, yeah? Then this part, so it's constant multiple, we'll write it down first. And then we get x squared. Plug in L and Y, so we have L and Y squared. Or we have L and Y squared. Uh, 
All right, and then plugging zero, it's zero, so that's what we have, and then we have dy. This is good, can cancel, cancel, and for this guy, we can integrate by parts. So di plus minus, I will differentiate l and y, I will integrate one, I will, I will integrate y. So this right here will give us one over y, I will get one over two y squared. So first part of the answer is one half y squared ln y minus multiply this and that so the integral going from this is one to two and then still go from one to two this multiplies so we get one half y yeah they cancel so we just have y and then dy okay one half y square ln y minus the result the integration here is Put two divided by that's one over four y squared and now plugging plugging one two <sighs> put two in here one half of four is two and then l on two put two in here is minus one put one in here the zero put one in here is minus 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 1 over 4. It's a minus 1 over 4, so like that. So all in all, we get, how do you write the answer? Oh, just like that. So just 2, uh, just 2 or ln 2. And then this is L, this is negative 1 plus 1 over 4, so it's minus 3 over 4. Okay. Alright, so these are the double integrals when we have like the limits of integrations and now i'm going to describe the region for you guys and we did something called the jacobian earlier so maybe you'll see that again for the next questions Do I deserve new markers? No, 91, let me see. Let, let, me, let me get some new markers. Eh, it's okay. Blue one is not the greatest. So I'll change it. New blue one. Cool. Alright, now I'm ready. Alright, so I will just write this down for you guys. We have the integral integral and then we have the region r there and then the function inside is the integral right here is e to the negative x y over 2 and then we integrate over the area of the region so what's the r though i will tell you r is bounded by y is equal to 1 y is equal to 2 and uh, i'll just say y equals 1, y equals 2, and then y equals 0, and another curve is x, y is equal to 1. Okay, so this kind of questions will definitely be, most, be much scarier, scarier than the ones that we saw earlier, <laughs> because this right here you really have to draw the region and analyze it on your own first, but it's not so bad. Check this out. Just draw the region first. Y equals one. So just keep that in mind y is equal to one. Okay, so y equals one, let's say it's right here. Y equals two. It's not even, it's not even. 
All right, let me try again. Okay, y equals one, y equals two, eh, okay. X equals zero. And then we have x, y is equal to one, and depends on how you like it. You can divide both sides by x. So this is the same as saying um, y equals one over x, which is just a parabola, I mean, just a hyperbola. So the bottom part doesn't matter, but it's the top part like this, like that. So it's like this, and of course, it's this region here that we are l focusing on. So this one is y equals 1 over x okay so how do we deal with this though we have to set it up which order do we do first look here we have negative x y over 2 mm. if you have dx first eh, yep you are first what dx doesn't matter so let's just see We have the function e to the negative x y over two, yeah. And then let's just put the let's put the x first and see what happens. If we want to do the x first, oh, 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 I forgot why. I just recall why I I uh, make this question for you guys. Sorry. I don't know yet. I don't know if it's dy first or dx first. So let's say if I want to put dy first and then dx. Remember, if we have dy going first, let me start to look at the bottom to the top. We are drawing vertical rectangles to find the region, right? But you see, this vertical rectangle, okay, top is two, bottom is one, good. But once we get past this point, the top is the curve, the bottom is one. So if you really want to do dy first, you will have to break this down into two curves. I mean two integrals, two double integrals. Two double integrals. Sounds pretty scary, huh? But if you really want to, I'll show you. If dy goes first, then let's see. When y is two, that means x is one half. So this point is when x is equal to one half. And when x is 1, that means this right here is when x is equal to 1. What we need first is, as I mentioned it, this region is 2 and 1, right? So the bottom is 1, and then the top is 2. And then we will have to look at the x. In that case, the x is going from 0 to 1 half. So it's this left hand side. Again, we are trying to draw vertical rectangles. And then right here, we have to have another one. So we will have to add dx going first and then dy. Well, depends how you look at it. Anyway. If we have dy, now we have to look at the other part. It's this, which is 1 over x. But remember, it's top to bottom. So it's bottom to the top. Bottom to top. So we have to go from 1 to 1 over x. All right? And then for the dx, in this part, is 1 half to 1. All right? So that's that. So we have two double integrals for this. Not a good idea, isn't it? So a better way to do this is if we draw horizontal rectangles. <sighs> yeah, all right. If we draw horizontal rectangles, then it will look like this. Still, still the same picture. I have the hyperbola and then y is one. y is 2 and uh, that so this right here let's say this right here is 
and this right here is equal to right. So this is done for the first part. And this right here, if we draw a horizontal rectangle, you see the function on the left is just x equals zero. So it's always x equals zero, that's good. And the function on the right is always x equals one over y. That's also good. So for this region, horizontal rectangle is better. And then we get um, integral. I want xi, okay, I'll do this. And then we have e to the negative xy over two. And then, sorry, wrong color. E to the negative x, y over two, dx and then dy, yeah? In this case, dx, right? So left to right, so left is zero, right is one over y, it's the function, and then dy, so we go from one to two. Yeah, so it's very similar to finding the area between curves when we did our uh, calc one stuff, right? So this is the detail for that. And then because I did this, I'll just tell you guys the answer. You just try this on your own. The answer for this right here is one minus e to the negative one over two times L and four. This is better, All right? All right, 92. All right, 92, we have actually the same function. So double integral like this with a region, and we have e to the negative x, y over two, dA. And the region r is bounded by y equals one over four x, and then y equals two x, and then y equals 4 over x and y equals 1 over x okay so let's just go ahead and do a sketch first and because i don't know what color it's for what so i will just draw everything black first so this right here 1 over 4x so this is a line like this this is y equals 1 over 4x next 2x or slope is higher so it looks like this y equals 2x now, 4 over x, it's a higher per hyperbola like this. And then 1 over x is the smaller one. Uh, actually, let me put on y equals 4 over x. And then 1 over x, it will look like this. Somewhat like that, y equals 1 over x. Hoo -hoo. Look at this thing. This is the region that we are talking about. This is the region that we are talking about. How do we find it? the area of this region? Just think about in calc 1. How do we set up integrals? If we do horizontal rectangles, uh, changes, changes. Vertical rectangles, changes, changes. So we are totally stuck on this. What do we do? Don't worry. There's something called a Jacobian that's going to help us. And the purpose of the Jacobian is to help us to change this crazy region to a much better region. Okay, so before that, let's just um, make some more observations. So I have all this equation written in terms of y being isolated. But if we don't do that, then you can see this right here, it's the same as saying 
y over x is equal to 1 over 4. And then divide the x on both sides, y over x is equal to 2. And then multiply the x on both sides, so x, y equals 4. And then lastly, x, y equals 1. Guess what? This, this, similar. This, this, similar. So, what we are going to do is, I'm going to call this to be, let's just say, u. I will say that u equal y over x. Yeah? And then, right here, I will just call this right here to be v. v equals xy. So, this right here will be the change of variable that we have. So now I have to pick this right here. What we will have to do is, we will have to get x and y in terms of u and v. So how do we do that? Mm, just solve system of equations. So right here, what you can do is, you can just put, um, let's see, multiply the x on both sides. So we know this right here tells us y equals x times u. And then I will just put this right here for that. So that will give us u, I mean, that will give us, that will give us v equals x times y, which is x u, which is x square u, like that. Okay, yes, v equals x square u. And I will divide the u on both sides, because remember, I want x in terms of u and v. So x square equals u over v. And I'll just take the positive square root because x is positive. So x equals positive square root of u over v. Okay, and then because of that, we know y will be x times u is, no, sorry, x is equal to square root of u over v, yeah, like that. So here, y will be x, which we found it to be square root of u over v, and I'll just write it as square root of u over square root of v. All right, my, my letter is not the best, sorry. No, sorry, sorry, I knew it. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, x squared equals v over u, divided u on both sides. And then we see that x is equal to, I'll just take the square root of v over square root of u. Everything's positive, so don't worry about the domain and all that stuff, don't worry. So that's that, and then x is this, so I'll put it here, so this means y equals square root of v over square root of u times u, and this and that can be reduced, so this right here tells us y equals square root of <laughs> u and v, so we will see square root of uh, v and u. So that's two square root of v and square root of u. Mm, like that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wow. Continue. What we want to do next is we want the, this integral to be in terms of u and v after the transformation. And to make that happen, we have to get the so-called Jacobian, and to do so, and uh, let me see where I can write that. I uh, will put it here. dy dx. Uh, let's do a Jacobian first. Let's just focus on the Jacobian. So, u is equal to this and that, and then x is equal to this and y is equal to that. So, let's focus on the Jacobian. So, Jacobian is this notation. 
right uh, I think I put X Y <sighs> really don't I really don't remember how I write it I think I put it as X Y already I, I think that's this and then let's put U V U V doesn't really matter the order huh? U V like that okay this right here use the determinant notation now this time the bar the bar is not the absolute value it's just a determinant so we will do partial x partial u and then partial x partial v and then partial y partial u partial y partial v and again this is the determinant notation <laughs> all right to make this easier to differentiate, I'm going to write the following. x is equal to, I'm going to write it as u first, right? So I will, go, I will write this as a power notation, which is u to the negative one half, and then v to the positive one half. And then for the y, I will write it as u going first, positive one half, and then positive one half. And hope for the best. Here we go. Partial x with respect to u. So look at this a differentiate, put the power to the front, so we have negative 1 over 2, and then minus 1, so we have u to the negative 3 over 2. And this thing just stays, so like that. Now do this with respect to v, so put the 1 half to the front, so we have 1 half, this thing stays, v, and then minus 1, so minus that. And then now do this with respect to u, we have 1 half u negative 1 half, and this thing stays. And now do this thing with respect to v, 1 half u to the 1 half, and then v to the negative 1 half. Okay, this times this, negative, negative, no negative positive, so it's negative 1 over 4. Yeah, this v cancel u to the negative 3 half times u to the 1 half is u to the negative 1 okay u to the negative 1 and then we do this times that but it's a minus in between 1 half 1 half is 1 over 4 this and that is u to the negative 1 and uh, this and that uh, they cancel so we have this and we can combine them negative 1 fourth minus 1 fourth is negative 1 half and then we have u to the negative 1. Yes. You think we are done? No, we are not. This is just a Jacobian. It's just... <laughs> so what exactly are we doing, right? Yeah. Don't worry. Now, integral, integral, still that function, e, but x, y, hmm. It's like the v, so we have negative v, and then over two. And now it depends if you want the u going first or u going next, uh, du first or dv. Don't worry, because it's going to be a rectangle. I'm just going to do d v, du dv technically. du dv sorry I'm going to just put down du dv originally it's like supposed to be like dx dy dy dx but no du dv much better but we also need this thing and remember this is just the Jacobian we need the absolute value and then negative one half and we have u to the negative 1. So that's the d by dx part. And if you set it up like this, then u goes first. So u starts with what? Our u is this. So it goes from 1 over 4 to 1, I mean to 2. So I would just say u goes from 1 over 4 to 2. And then v, you see, v is x, y, so it goes from 1 to 4. So v goes from 1 to 4. Yeah. 
All right, thanks to a Jacobian. And now let's just erase that Jacobian and um, let's see how this thing works. One thing though, it's really, really cool after we have done all this is that Oh, by the way, that will just make this positive and then U goes from this to that, so it's positive anyway, so don't worry about the after for U of U to a negative one. We can, you see this thing has no U here, so we can actually break them apart into two integrals. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the integral U goes this one first so b is equal to 1 to 4 and now just look at e to the negative v over 2 dv and then the other one i will just multiply it with u going from 1 over 4 to 2 and uh, i will just look at absolute value of one half is just absolute value of negative one half just one half and then we really don't need to worry about the absolute value for because you know, one, one over four to two, du. And then the good thing is, if you integrate this, integrate that, multiply it, you get the answer. For this, let's try it. Integrate this, we have e to the negative v over two, but we will have to divide it by the derivative of this, which is divided by negative one over two, which is the same as multiplied by negative two. Yes or no? Yes. And then we go from one to four. Let's focus on this right here first. So put four in here, we get negative two e, that's negative two. And then we subtract, but that's a negative, so it becomes plus. Put a one in here, we get two e to the negative one half. Yeah, that's that. This thing. 1 half ln u and we go from 1 over 4 that's ready as 2 to the negative 2 and then 2 is just 2. <laughs> Put 2 in here we get 1 half ln 2 and then just minus 1 half ln 2 to the negative 2. But you see this negative 2 can go to the front. So that's that. And um, I can do the blue part li a little bit more. This is 1 half ln 2 becomes plus, and um, that's gone. And then we have just ln 2, which is 3 over 2 ln 2. So this is the blue part. And then the, this part is still this, which is negative 2 e to the negative 2 plus 2 e to the negative 1 half. The 2 can cancel, and then, yeah, let's, let's do this. This, this, this cancel, and then let's put a 3 back here to the power. So, ladies and gentlemen, we get negative e to the negative 2 plus e to the negative one half times ln eight. Let's put the ln eight in blue. And let me tell you, I got this right. I have the correct answer here. I got this right. <laughs> oh my god, almost eight hours. All right, so yeah, definitely one of the hardest one for this video. So take a look and all that stuff.
All right, 93, we have the integral, integral, and then we have x squared plus y squared dA, and then we have a little r. r is a square with the vertices, so it's a square with vertices 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, no, negative 1, 0, and then 0, negative 1. So just draw a square real quick. Um, let's see, we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, Oh, it's a negative one zero. Wait, wait. zero zero, one zero. Wait. Oh, zero one. I I copied it wrong. Zero one zero one. Just kidding. Zero one. I was like, how is this? How is this a square? Right. Okay. Now I see. Zero one. 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and then negative, uh, 0, negative 1. So we have a square like this. Uh, you can see that this right here is, again, not going to be so easy for us to integrate to find the region, but we'll see. Unfortunately, we don't have the equation, so what do we do? We can come with the equation on our own. Slope here is 1, slope here is 1, yeah? So let's see. This equation has the, this line has the equation y equals slope is 1, so it's x minus 1. The intercept, the y intercept here is negative 1, yeah? And then this right here, the slope is equal to negative 1. So negative x. And um, the y intercept here is plus 1. And this right here is y equals x plus 1. And this right here is y equals negative x minus 1. So not so bad. Here we have this region. If you want, you can also just break this down into two double integrals. It's not so bad, I'll say. It's like this, like that. But let's try the Jacobian again. Let's try the Jacobian again. All right? Okay. So. For the Jacobian, we will just have to collect all the x and y. So perhaps I will put this and that together. So this right here is y minus x. Right, y minus x is equal to 1. And then this right here is y minus x is equal to negative 1. And then this right here is y plus x is equal to 1. And then this right here is y plus x is equal to negative 1. Yeah, we really don't like this water usually, so let's just deal with this. No, no problem. This. So right here we can see. Let's pick u, and uh, let's just get a little marker. U. I can pick that to be y minus x. And then v, I will just put that to be y plus x. So that's that. And now we have to figure out what x and y are in terms of u and v. So we see that we can just add these two equations. Then we can see, add these two equations, we get 2y equals this plus that. So this means y equals 1 half u plus one half v, right? Add this two, so it's u plus v, but divided by two. And then I will do this minus that, x equals this minus that, so it's v. No, the water is not, it's not good. Okay, I will deal with this. This minus that, so the y will cancel, and then we get 2 is v minus u, right, v minus u. But I'll write the v right here first, and then the minus u here. But then divided by 2, so it's 1 half here, and then 1 half here. Right. 
Good. Okay, now let's do the Jacobian. So partial x, y, and then partial u, v. Let's just go ahead and look at this and differentiate this with respect to u. So we get negative 1 half. Differentiate this with respect to v. We have positive 1 half. Look at this, this all that stuff 1 half, and look at that, this. And negative uh, 1 over 4. And then it's a uh, minus 1 over 4. So negative one half okay now this right here becomes integral integral and then we still have x squared plus y squared let's see we need the absolute value of negative one half and then du dv yeah yeah put du dv so hold on hold on What's x squared plus y squared? We also have to change that. Man. <sighs> okay. So I square this, square that, I square this, I square that. x squared plus y squared. I open this. I will have 1 over 4. Everybody will have 1 over 4, so just open that. So it's u squared plus 2 uv plus v squared. And then this right here will be u squared minus 2 uv plus v squared. Yeah, and then we see this and that can cancel. And uh, is two of them, two of them, so it will be one half. One half. <sighs> U square plus B square. Okay, so X square plus Y square is that, which is one half. Plus B square. Double check. Yes. So we have that, and this is the DA portion. Okay, and I put DU first. So U will be going from where to where? I say U is Y minus X. So it will be going from negative one to one. So this will be going from negative one to one. And then I put DV. DV is this, which is negative one to one as well. Okay, so that's the change of variable. And now let's just go ahead and integrate. So this is one half times that, which is one over four. And then we have negative one to one integrating in with respect to u first. So we get one over three u to the third power. And this right here will give us v squared times u. And we go from negative one to one. You can also use the property but no let me just do this like this okay so one over four put one in here we get one third okay one third and then put one in here we get v square okay minus put negative one in there we get negative one third. Put negative one here, we get minus v squared. Let me not put the parentheses right here. Let's just have the dv here. Good. Okay, so this right here is one over four. Combined, this is negative one to one. Two third plus two v square dv, and uh, this is let me just put down there like that. Okay, one over four, and then 
2 third v plus 2 over 3 v to the third power and we go from negative 1 to 1 okay 1 over 4 all the way in the front put naked put 1 first let's just double it but later on 2 over 3 plus 2 over 3 minus negative 2 over 3 and then minus 2 over 3 and uh, that's 4 over 3 double that is 8 over 3 yeah, 8 over 3 so it's 1 over 4 times 8 over 3 is 2 over 3 Jacobian is 2 over 3 I got it right okay just a couple more questions okay that's number 93 and the problem with this is that the region that we had earlier was a square like that and really you, if you want you can you don't need to do you don't really need to do the Jacobian yeah, because this is still pretty manageable but now let's take a look what if we have a unit circle instead that's exactly number 94 So we still have the same function x squared plus y squared and then dA and the R, the region, is the unit circle with the center at 0, 0. So we're looking at this right here. Let me just put it down right here. Our beloved unit circle. Let's say it's 1. Now, if you want to do Mm. dx dy then you will have to write the equation for this bottom circle and also the top circle and then do it um, good luck I don't know how bad the integration will be but let me show you how we can do this with the polar coordinate so here is the deal right here uh, I'm just going to put this in blue again x equals r cosine theta y equals r sine theta and then we also need to know x squared plus y squared equals r squared and as I told you before I'll just tell you dy dx is equal to r dr d theta <laughs> so pull the coordinate is the way to go and I will just write this down as the integral integral and uh, actually I'll put it down right here it's going to be the integral integral this thing is r square and dA is going to be this which is r dr d theta don't need to worry about it absolute value okay so r how do we do it origin one yeah so it's from zero to one r is going from zero to one uh, r is going from zero to one theta zero all the way so two pi so theta going from zero to two pi much easier so now let's just go ahead and integrate and in fact let's break this apart because it's just like nice numbers now so i'm going to look at the integral from zero to two pi and uh I have d theta and then let's multiply this with from 0 to 1 r to the third power dr so for this right here it's just going to be 2 pi and for this right here it's going to be 1 over 4 so all together we get pi over 4 done so that's that okay
All right, number 95, integral, integral, and then r. And first we have x plus y squared. And then sine of, I mean sine squared, x minus y dA. So what's a? a is a square with the vertices 0, 1, 1, 2. Two one and uh, one zero. Oh, okay. So this right here, the picture will be like this: zero one is right here, one two, and then one zero, and then two one. So it's still like a diamond. <laughs> Like that. Okay, you know it. We'll do it by change of variable, and for this one, you can see we have the x plus y, y minus uh, x minus x minus x plus y, x minus y. So we should seriously come with like these things. So let's see what this equation is. Yeah. So this equation will be y equals the slope is one because we go from one up and then to the right one so one which is x and you can also trace back so this right here will give you negative one for the y-intercept okay so this right here is negative one for the slope and if you go up uh, this is two already so you go up one more right so you get three so this is plus three and then this right here is y equals x plus 1. And this right here is y equals negative x plus 1. Cool. Now, because we have this and that, so we have to make sure we do the things carefully. Let's put on the x plus y first. So right here, I have, I can just move this to the other side. So x plus y equals 1. And then right here, we know x plus y equals 3. Mm. For this right here, I will move the... Let's do this right here. For this right here, I will put this down in red. In, no, in blue to make it more clear. For this one right here, I will move the y to the other side and put the x to... to put the 1 to the other side. So x minus y equals negative 1. And then same thing here put this no put this right here and put the one there so it's x minus y equals one okay so let's put u to be x plus y and then v to be x minus y so this is what we have and from here it's actually just a like property earlier but be careful Subtract, no, add, so x equals, we have 2x two, two is equal to this and that, so it's 1 half u plus 1 half v, and then subtract, we get the y, and we get u minus v, and then divided by 2, so 1 half u minus 1 half v. And now let's do the Jacobian real quick. Let's put it down. I don't need anything else. Yeah, so I can do the Jacobian right here. Jacobian. Partial x with respect to v is 1 half. With, with respect to u is 1 half. With respect to v is 1 half. Do this, we get 1 half. Do this, we get negative 1 half. This is negative 1 over 4. Then negative 1 over 4, minus 1 over 4, you know it, it's the same as earlier. We get negative 1 half, right? Okay, so all the ingredients ready. So we get integral, integral. This thing is u. So we have u square, and then we have sine square of v. And then the a, I will just take the absolute value right here already. So it's one half 
and then we have d u d v and uh, u goes from where's my u u is this so it goes from one to three so one two three and then v goes from negative one to one okay and now this is pretty good we can separate them not so bad so again let's just separate them so i will do the the v first so the v is from negative one to one v is that so i will do sine square v yeah d v and then the other part let's multiply this by u goes from one to three and then we have then we also need one half huh? so let's put a one half here d u okay what's this guy it's one half one minus cosine of two v right and what integrate that and then i'm just going to double it and then we integrate it from zero so we have the two here and then zero to one and uh, we will get because it's an even function and this and that cancel very nicely so integrate this we get v integrate this we get minus one half sine of two v and then we go from zero to one Whew. so put the one in here we have one minus and we have one half sine of two zero is just zero so this is good put a one times the integral of this is one over six u to the third power and then we go from one to three no that, let's put it here let's put it here one over six u to the third power and we go from one to three All right, so that's 27 over six is nine over two, yeah? No, let's do this. Twenty-seven over six minus one over six, so twenty-six over six, which is thirteen over three. Okay. Now, so this right here we get thirteen over three, the blue one, and then for that. I'm supposed to get 2 minus sine 2. So something's wrong. This is one half there. Yeah, that's that. And I have this one half. I pair the out with this. I have that. I'm supposed to have an extra factor of 2 right there. Where did it go? Did I copy down the question wrong? I don't think so. And then... Oh no, I did not. I did not. This is actually correct. 1 minus 1 over 2. Sine of 2. This is actually correct. Wow. I'm kind of impressed by myself that I was able to do this. I put on 13 over 6 on my answer key. 
but right here I simplified it to 13 over 3 so if you want you can factor out one half so eh, it's the same thing I'm just going to leave that to you guys it's, it's, it's the same thing multiply yeah okay just a few more questions and yes So for the last few questions, I think I will just set up the integrals for you guys and then you guys can try on your with all the computations and all that stuff. So 96, here is the integral that we have. We have integral integral r ln x squared plus y squared plus 1 dA. A is the unit circle. Circle center it at zero zero. So you know this right here is just going to be a classic. Um, what's that called? Polar coordinate question. So this right here is a unit circle. So we know it already. Integral, integral, and then we have ln. This two together is r square and then plus one, and dA. You know it, it's going to be r dr d theta. r, because it's the unit circle, so it just go from 0 to 1. This is for r. And then for theta, this is going to be from 0 to 2 pi. A. OK. And then you can do use up and then integration by parts and all the stuff. And if you work this out, you will somehow end up and you will end up like this is crazy negative pi times cosine 2 no, 2 pi ln 2 minus pi <laughs> right, try it on your own okay, number 97 so here we have integral integral r and then we have sine of square root of x squared plus y squared. This time it's not unit circle, it's not the whole thing. Um, it's just a quarter unit circle. Qu how do I spell quarter? How do I spell quarter? Oh yeah, quarter unit circle uh, centered at zero zero. Just in the first quadrant, in the first quadrant. All right. So it's just this part. Just that. It's the same thing, same thing, right? Same thing. So I will still go ahead and integrate, integrate, and then we have sine, and the square root is nice. You have r square, and then dA is r dr d theta. Okay, r goes from 0 to 1 because again, it's a quarter unit circle. Quarter. Ooh, no, sorry. It's a quarter circle with r equals 2, sorry, so this right here is meant to be 2, sorry it's right here, you can take a look so r will be going from 0 to 2 so this is for r so that's just a small change r will be going from 0 to 2 and then for d theta uh, theta will just be going from 0 to pi over 2 I almost wanted to write pi over 4. That's wrong. I could have written tau over 4, but no. We are using pi. Yeah, so it's this region here. 0 to 2, and then 0 to pi over 2. And you can work this out. 
intercalation by parts. Yeah, you stop intercalation by parts over there. For this one, you end up with negative pi, cosine two, and uh, plus pi over two. And then we have sine of two. So series is not so bad with um, with this because you can just integrate the r and then multiply by two pi and all that stuff. So multiply by yeah, do this integral and then do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next one is another one that we do the change of variable. So again, I'll just set it up for you guys and then you guys can try it. All right, number 98, <sighs> almost done, almost done. All right, integral, integral, and uh, we have, oh, that's a horrible integral sign. We have y sine xy, and then we have dA. So, R is the region bounded by the following curves. So R is x, y equals 1, x, y equals 4, and then y equals 1 and y equals 4. What kind of region is this? Oh yeah, it's a hyperbola region again, so let's see. So this right here, we can divide the, uh, divide the x on both sides, so we get this right here. And this right here is uh, it's like that. And then one, let's say one is right here, so it looks like this. And then, uh, yeah, and then what I say is right here, so it's like that. So it's this region. Hmm, do we really need to use change of variable? No, we don't have to. Notice that, yes, if you do a vertical slice, then you have to break down into two integrals, two double integrals, that's really bad. But if you do horizontal slice, it's not bad at all. So let's do horizontal. So for this one, I'm just going to write this as integral, integral, and then the function is y sine of x, y, and then let's do it from left to right. So it's dx first, and then dy. For dx though, this one is what? I will have to divide the y on both sides. So we get y equal, I mean x equals one over y. So that's the bottom function for this. And then for the top one is this one, which is x equals four over y, four over y. And then for dy, just go from one to four. Ah. Very nice. Integrate this whichever way. You can do a u sub and then this and that y will cancel. It's pretty good. You can go ahead and try that. And I will tell you the answer is three times cosine one minus cosine four. You might look like it, it, it might look like it might look like this is a negative number, right? But it's not. It's actually about three point five eight one eight. Yeah. All right, number 99. Here, integral, integral. And for number 99, number 100, again, I'll just set it up for you guys and I'll tell you guys the answer because I actually have a double integral battle video coming up. So I don't want to ruin that video. So I want to just give you guys the answer for that. But anyways, 
square root of 1 plus y square and then the region R we have is the following it's a triangle not not trick triangle is the triangle with the vertices 0 0 0 1 and uh, 1 1 so for this let's see the triangle 0 0 0 1 and then 1 1 so it's this triangle here yeah so for this right here you can hmm, we don't need the change of variable I think it's pretty straightforward hmm. You don't want to do the y first though, because integrating square root of 1 plus y square, you will have to use the like, trick sub and you end up with secant. Now that's an ideal. So perhaps that's integrated with respect to x first. It's easier that way. So if it's x first, then let's see this right here. Uh, x first, uh, x first, x first. So I want this to be. Uh, we'll put a one in black first. Yeah, I want x first, and then y. I, I, I mean, you do it first so it's inside. Square root of one plus y square. All right. X first means from left to right, so it's zero to y. Yeah, and then y zero to one. Huh? Just like that, and work this out. I will tell you the answer. Oh, I forgot to put this down. On the test, don't ever write this down on the test and then just tell the answer. No, show all the work. Do all this, you get one third. Two, square root of two minus one. Yeah, this is better. If you have the Y, it's okay too, but no. Ladies and gentlemen, number 100. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, it's been a crazy evening, eight hours and 33 minutes. Yeah. What am I doing for Christmas? I'm going to have, I'm going to make tamaha steak at home with my girlfriend. So yeah. But today we'll work first. <laughs> we'll see. I was supposed to do this a few days ago, but. I just wanted to practice more. <sighs> Number 100. Very similar, but we have the integral, integral, and we have square root of x squared plus y squared, and we have dA. This time the r is the region bounded by y is equal to x and y equals x squared. So what's the region that we are talking about? y equals x is this y equals x squared it's the parabola I haven't seen that for a while okay so the bottom portion is y equals x squared and then the top one is y equals x so for this one depending on how much you like of like um, to do tricks up or whatnot because we both have x squared and also y squared inside of the square root so regardless if you put x first or y first you have to go through a trick side if you want to do all the integral and all that, right? For this one, if you do this, it's much easier. Because you will just have y times square root of 1 plus y square, and then you can just do your sub after that. It's much easier. But for this right here, just for fun, I'll show you guys how to set up polar coordinate. Even though this right here is not circular, but it still works. So let's see. That's the region. I want to deal with polar. This is how. This is how. All right. So we have integral, integral, and then we have square root. X squared plus y squared is r squared. Good. 
dA polar is just R dR d theta. Good. Now, R goes from what to what? I will tell you. Zero, good, but to what though? R goes from here to here. And you can see that we have to look at the this equation, y equals x squared. And I want to figure out what r is. Let me show you. Right here, I will just write it as the following. We know that y equals r sine theta. And that's equal to x squared. And x is equal to r cosine theta squared. So we just have to solve for r from this equation. And we can see this is r sine theta equals r squared cosine squared theta. I'm going to divide the r here, divide the cosine squared here, so we get r equals sine theta over cosine squared theta. We can split it. In fact, this is really cool. r is actually just the derivative tangent theta, aka secant theta tangent theta. It works. R goes from 0 to secant theta tangent theta. Is it easier though? I will argue so because I came up with this question. <laughs> but yeah, it's up to you though. You let me know. And then for theta, it's 0. This is the 45 degree diagonal line. So it's pi over 4. So theta goes from 0 to pi over 4. Work this out. We will end up with 2 over 45. 1 plus square root of 2. And then we're done. Yes. 100 questions. How long did this take? Let's see. 8 hours and 37 minutes. Whew. But you know it. You know it. If you have seen my videos before, you know it. There's always that 101. So one more question before we go. This one is extremely special. No more double integral though. This is the one that I got from the Berkeley Math Tournament where I was a guest this year, about like six weeks ago in November on Berkeley campus uh, for the integration B for with high school students. So Berkeley Math Tournament people, if you guys are watching, this is for you guys and also all the participants. You guys are awesome. So here's the one. Integral going from zero to two. And uh, we have x times the square root it's a big square root. It's an infinite square root. It keeps on going on forever. And then we have x to the ln x power. And then inside here we have cube root. And again, this right here keeps on going forever. And we have x, not to the ln x power though, but rather ln second power x. So it means ln x squared. And then let's do it again. Fourth root x to the ln third power x and so on so on so on the next one will be the fifth root but we see the pattern already so this is it and we have the dx this is the question shout out to the one who came up with this question and shout out to all the berkeley map to number people and also shout out to all the instagram shout out to all my instagram followers and jen and um, Ming for sending me your solution. And here is perhaps I will say the cleanest solution for this question. Anyway, let's clean up this expression. If it's infinite, you will know it's something about infinite series. So we are looking at the integral going from 0 to 2. This is x to the first. Yeah? Next, I'm going to look at this as x. This is ln x instead of the square root, which is the one half power. So we can look at this as ln x 
over 2 times the next one it's x this is ln second power x over 3 for the cube root but then over 2 for the square root and you multiply so it's over 3 times 2 and you kind of see the pattern it's not so bad huh multiply x and then ln 3x third power technically and then fourth root right so like this and so on so on so on and then dx all right so how do we deal with this let's put this down in the summation form so this right here is the integral going from 0 to 2 x is x and i'm going to write this as the summation let me use n going from uh let me use n equals 1 to infinity and uh, we see that here we have ln x but this right here does not have any ln right so it's technically n minus 1 power over this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 2 3 2 1 technically 4 3 2 1 aka factorial so this right here is the same as n factorial yeah and then we have the dx here so now the question is how do we simplify this hmm i will tell you we should know that when we have the series as n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the nth power over n factorial this right here gives us nicely the nice e to the x function and this works for any x value right this works for all x value so they are quite similar except for here we have l and x and this is x also this start with one this is always zero so let's fix this a little bit if you want to start with one it's okay you can write it out the first term of this is just one and then this is you plug in when n is equal to zero and then the remaining is the summation n goes from 1 to infinity of x to the nth power over n factorial this is equal to e to the x put this to the other side we see the summation n goes from 1 to infinity let me still use the red x here x to the nth power over n factorial it's equal to e to the x minus 1 that's okay okay and then how should we deal with the minus one though let me show you right here i can write this as the integral going from zero to two x and then this is the same as saying this one over ln x times because here it's in the end world right here you can put the x on the outside I know this has the n, but that's ln. Yeah. n goes from 1 to infinity, and then this is ln x. And we can put the n right here over n factorial. And then we have the dx. So, how does this help? This is the integral going from 0 to 2. x. Here we have 1 over ln x. And this thing here is when x being equal to ln x so we can just have the following summation n goes from 1 to infinity ln x raised to the n over n factorial this right here is just what e to the ln x power minus 1 aka x minus 1 so this thing here is just x minus 1 Ah, good but it doesn't look any better right it does trust me right here for the x we can do the following we can write this as integral going from 0 to 2 look at the x as e to the ln x power ah very cool huh and then we take this raised to the power of that namely we have the over ln x here and then the top here is x minus 1 and then we have the dx so now what the ln x and the ln x cancel so in fact this is actually just asking you to 
integrate from 0 to 2 and we have e to the x minus 1 dx how do we integrate e to the x minus 1 it's just e to the x minus 1 and we go from 0 to 2 and now let's do this in our head put 2 in here we get e to the first put 0 we get minus 1 for the power and it's minus so it's e to the negative 1 and that is 1 over e and then we are done <laughs> oh, how many hours did this take? Wow, 8 hours and 46 minutes. I have no idea how long this is going to uh, take for the video to be uploaded. But anyway, what time is it? It's only 2.37. It's not so bad because I started early. So yeah. So here you guys have it. 100 integrals part 2. Another 100 integrals. <laughs> Hayden Jones. <laughs> yeah, this is for you guys, and then this is for you, and um, yeah, to all my subscribers, thanks to the 1 million subscribers. My life goal is to reach 10 million subscribers, and let's see uh, maybe when I reach 60 years old. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> and you guys know it. What I have is the my Marisol medal. How can I not have my Marisol medal, right? So, my first LA Marisol medal. Yeah. Whew. Okay. Hopefully, you guys all enjoyed this right here. Took me very. It, this took me a very, 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 very long time to prepare and and yeah, and film. Okay. Wish you guys the best luck. Merry Christmas. Have a wonderful new year. I love you guys all. Thank you guys so much. And as always, that's it.